seven days dry fasting for breakthrough in every area of your life hallelujah thank you jesus it's gonna be an awesome fast and very powerful so be expected and god will come through for you it's gonna be a lot of powerful encounters this is a supernatural ministry so there will be a lot of supernatural things happening. Supernatural encounters. Hallelujah. A lot of deliverance in the spirit. A lot of healing. A lot of things happening. So just be expected. And God will exceed your expectations. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So Father Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for putting this fast together suddenly. There has to be a reason because you never put things together for no reason. And Father, we are obedient and that's why we accepted to do this fast, even though we were not ready for it. Well, your time is always the best time. Father, even as we fast, strengthen us to complete, oh God. Do not allow us to fall into temptation. In the name of Jesus. And everyone who is meant to be with us fasting, Father, draw them here in the name of Jesus. I soak all of you in the blood of Jesus, including myself and the network. In the name of Jesus. Father, you say this fasting is for breakthrough in every area of our lives. Let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Let there be breakthrough starting from today. 
and let there be lots of testimonies in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done. There shall be no death in this ministry. Untimely death, no. I speak long life over you that is watching me and your family in the name of Jesus. That spirit of death, I cancel it. I command it to go back to hell where it belongs in the name of Jesus. I speak healing over your body, over you, in the name of Jesus. That headache that wants to prevent you from fasting, I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of distraction, every spirit of wandering thoughts, I command them to go now in the name of Jesus. You will complete this fast and you will receive your reward from heaven. In the name of Jesus, a para ashume kale and a sumananas, makani and a shubre a katusia, and a mahania. But I let souls be saved. Let a lot of people come here and repent, even as we fast. In the name of Jesus, let there be forgiveness, let there be reconciliation, let there be elevation. Father, everything you promised in this month of July, let it take place even as we fast in the name of Jesus. Father, speak through me. Use me mightily as you always do. In the name of Jesus, let me not be the one speaking to your children. I know you sit in me. Father, take over my mouth. In the name of Jesus, let me flow like never before. And so your children can be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for putting this fast together. We are excited to do it. We will never grudge. We will never grudgingly do an assignment. We are excited to do this. We are joyful about this assignment. You gave it to us, and we are glad that you picked us to fast. And we know we will complete. Thank you, Father, for all you do for us. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, all the adoration. You are Yahweh. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. But I thank you for using me to do your work. There are many people out there, but you chose me. Yaro otime alani kaskuma anahi anaha. Thank you for picking me, Lord. It's such an honor. It's such a privilege. Thank you for strengthening me to do your work. Thank you for putting that special strength, grace, and anointing in me to stay long hours. Because that's what keeps us going while we fast. I preach for long hours. No food. But you always strengthen me. And thank you for giving me people who are willing to listen for as long as I preach. We give you all the glory, Lord. We can't take credit for this. You are the one who's doing this. Thank you for all you do in this ministry. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Take over, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just before I came on here, I was thanking God in the closet for picking me for this work. Because there are many people out there. But he chose me. Anointed me, strengthened me to do like difficult assignments, difficult fasting. Like dry fasting is not easy and be talking for 12 hours, 20 something hours without food. And then you guys sitting to listen to me to speak that long. It's not just me that God gave that grace and strength. It's you too. So thank you, Father. Even this fasting, we didn't plan it. It came like two days ago. We just got the announcement on, I think Sunday, while I was on an audio preaching. I, I didn't know we were gonna fast today. Cause today is my mom's birthday, July 27th. And I was actually planning to enjoy with her. And my siblings, we plan to get a cake and all that. I even told you guys. So coming on a day of my mom's birthday was unexpected. But God knows why God does what he does. 
And I respect whatever decision he makes, whatever he plans to do, because I don't know what he saw. I don't know what he's trying to do. I do not know. But I obey him whenever he tells me to do something. And even my mother, she's so excited about this fasting. She told my sister not to bring any cake till the third day that we break. Because we're going to do three days, no food. And on the third day at six, we'll break. She said, it's okay, birthday comes all the time. But this is God. We got to deal with this assignment. I was shocked when she told me that. I said, wow, I thought she was going to bring the cake midnight. She said, no, on day three when we break, we can cut cake there. I was like, wow, praise the Lord. That's even better. So even her, she understands and she knows how I am with assignments. I remember when God gave me an assignment on Father's Day. I told my father he understood. I didn't go out with them to eat as we normally do every year. I went to do the fellowship for God. And God rewarded me mightily. So God knows why he picked today. All of you will need breakthrough in your life. Running from one man of God to another is not going to cut it now. You've tried that for many years. It's not working. <laughs> it's time for you to put in effort, put in work. It's time for you to carry your own your own load, that be your own weight. It's time for you to, to fast like everybody else. It's time for you to go without food. It's time for you to read Bible. It's time for you to pray. It's time for you to seek God for yourself. Time for you to have your own encounter. All these people we are running to for prayer. They too, they have to do these things. So it's time for us to do our own. That's right. And that's why I love this ministry. God is raising people. God is raising people that will have a relationship with him. Not people that will have relationship with their papa or their mama. Their spiritual father or mother. No. People that will have relationship with God. People that will look up to God for help. Because our help comes from God. People that will rely on God to deliver them. Yeah. And that's what I've been teaching here in this ministry. We need to seek God for ourselves. And this fasting is an example of that. Even my son is fasting. My kid... <laughs> he's 13 but I try to involve him in fasting because the enemy does not just attack the adults he attacks even children even unborn children so yeah I would need to start training him up like this so that when he's older he will get used to this and then when he has children too in future he will train his kids too if I had somebody training me like this when I was younger I probably would have been saved a long time ago. So if you have kids here, they're in summer holiday. So if they're still in summer holiday, talk to them about it. You don't have to force them, but talk to them about it. Kids can do six to 12, six to three, six to six. They don't have to stay without food all day if they don't want to. Some of them will insist. If they do, allow them. But otherwise, six to 12, six to three six to six is not bad and god will, will honor their fasting they can watch the videos too sometimes you would think only you the adult is learning mm. it's a lie children can even learn more than some of you they'll be acting like they don't know what's happening they see everything they know and the holy spirit will touch them too we have kids that speak in tongues we have kids that have powerful dreams and powerful encounter in fact one of you even sent me one of you even sent me a dream that her daughter had and she said her daughter barely dreams or remembers her dream but this one she remembers and she wanted her to share it with me like in this ministry eh, we got a lot of kids that are participating in this ministry we got a lot of young adults teenagers too this is a supernatural ministry i don't really do anything for anyone god does everything i'm just here to sit down and open my mouth for him to speak i want to show that video that one of you sent that her daughter had a dream and she remembers a dream so she wanted her to share with you they just sent it to me today 
Hello everyone from Princess Ministry, Ministry, the School of Power. Hello our Apostle, God bless you. This is my little girl. She have a dream on Friday. And she would like to share the school with, and the dream with School of Power. I like to do the video to send it to a woman like God. So she herself will not say the dream. They, they, they don't get anytime as I say Friday. She can still remember the dream. And she not has somebody that can dream. Ain't you know for her to remember the dream. But if dream yet, she still remember the dream. So she would like to share the dream. Hi, woman of God. My name is Emerina. And I had a dream. In my dream, you said that something powerful was going to happen. And then when I went outside, the sun was going down really fast. And then I woke up from my sleep. Thank you, woman of God. God bless you. Bye. Bye, everyone. When I watched it, I was like, oh, she's so cute. She said, I said in her dream, which is God. That's God that was talking to her. That something powerful was going to happen. And when she looked outside the window, she saw the sun coming down real fast. And she woke up. Who knows what that means? Who can tell me what that means? Come on now. All the dream. Dream. <laughs> The dream interpreters in this ministry. Come on now. Come on, use your gift. What does that mean? <laughs> I just got this one oh, today. I'm trying to tell you how even your children, God is showing them things. God is anointing them. God is touching them. God is healing them. They too can join the fast. Truly. Don't make it all about you. In this ministry, everyone is welcome. It means something is about to happen. The sun was going down fast. Hmm. Sounds like judgment to me. <laughs> Sounds like some people are about to be dealt with. That's that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Number is it all our enemies? All our enemies are coming down. <laughs> Do you know what breakthrough in every area of your life means? Breakthrough means deliverance. Something was blocking something. Something was blocking your finances. Something was blocking your, your spiritual life. Something was blocking your being married. Something was blocking your health. Something. So now you need breakthrough. Meaning you need to break through. You need to, you need to come out of that cage, that trap, that thing that, that is causing that blockage. So pretty much we're talking deliverance. Hmm. <laughs> That's what this fast is really about. You're about to be free. You're about to be delivered from that thing that is causing stagnation, that is causing lack or, or sickness. You understand? That's what breakthrough in every area of your life. Something that is making you not to go forward, something that is causing so much attack. God is about to give you breakthrough in that area. And that's why this fast is really for everyone. Because a lot of people need breakthrough in one way or the other. Now, all of you type one part of your life where you believe you need breakthrough. Some people will say in their finances. Some people will say in marriage. Some people will say in their health. Like every believer, even unbelievers, need breakthrough somehow. Yeah. Even me too. There's a place I need breakthrough. <laughs> no one got it on me yeah maybe you're always getting sick or maybe you can't get a job maybe 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 something every look at this somebody say in my career somebody say finances that's right y'all be listing it no problem somebody say in job somebody say in my family and my dream life financial you see 
That's why you got to fight, sweetie. You got to put in that effort. Got to put in that effort. That's right. A bunch of people said finances. Maybe there's a spirit of poverty in your family. And God wants to give you breakthrough in that area. But everyone has an area in their life where they need a breakthrough and god knows like i don't really know because we have a lot of people like right now we have almost 700 people logged on already before the next one hour i don't know how many more but i can't really know what everybody needs help with but god knows and god told me before i came on here that i should tell you guys to really pay attention in this fast to the videos to the preaching so even if you miss a part because you have to work or sleep when you wake up you have to catch up because he said some of you it's while you are sleep watching you may just doze off and you will see yourself getting delivered that's what God told me he said while you are watching you may just doze off and him himself will appear to you. He said, you have to make sure you pay attention. So if you are that person that does not like to watch the videos, if you are that person that you do not like to, to catch up even where you miss, you might miss it. Because God has his angels that are going to be monitoring, monitoring you guys, checking to see who is paying attention and who is serious and who is not serious so please i don't want you to miss this because you know how you have suffered you know how things are with you and you need a breakthrough and some of you actually love god it's not like you don't love god some of you are even living a holy life but you just don't understand why you can't have a breakthrough in this particular area in your life so this fast is an opportunity to be free from that part that the enemy has blocked. Do you understand? So God said, you gotta pay attention. You gotta watch the videos. It is while you are watching that he, God, will touch you. Woman of God is not going to do one-on-one -on, -one on everyone. It's a lot of people. But God is a spirit. God is everywhere at the same time. You could be paying so much attention. You could just believe so much and boom, you receive your own touch. Boom, you get your phone call. Boom, you see what I'm saying? And that's how it's been happening in this ministry. It's just like I could be in a hall, preaching in a big crowd. Like you see how Katrin Coleman, Benny Hinn, they do it. They're just on the stage, they're doing stuff. And people are getting up wheelchair. People are getting testimonies coming up. That's how School of Power is. I'm in front of the people on the pulpit and god is touching people in their houses in the audience god is giving instructions god is telling people what to do god is delivering people god is healing people i don't even know this is happening i'm just here talking so please i don't want you to miss out i want you to receive all that god has for you Pay attention, focus, and God will touch you. I want to show, like, I'm going to show two videos. One, God came in her dream and told her to do something. And hers was not even like a dream. I think she said she was watching me, and suddenly it was a vision that she had, right? Because it's gonna happen a lot to many of you here. I don't care what country you are in, but in this particular fast, there's gonna be a lot of encounters like that. You just be watching, some of you may doze off and sleep. Some of you, you may not even be sleeping. You will just see something happen like that. Because God is the one who will do the deliverance. He's always the one doing it anyway. It's just, I need you guys to have faith. Do not wait for me to call you on my video. God said he has a lot of angels assigned for this fast. They will be monitoring and checking people to see who is focused and who is not. And when you don't put your mind on the problem 
and you focus on what's coming out of my mouth, you just focus, you will be touched. You will have an encounter that will change your life. You will have a visitation. So please pay attention. Let me show one of this one first and then I'll show another one. She actually, um, and I'm going to explain that one when I finish showing it. I actually made her do a video while I was online yesterday. But I couldn't show it yesterday because the video came when I got off already. Hello, Lord of God. God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm very sorry. Um, I was just about to go underground when um, I, I sent the seed. Um, I only found out later that I needed to send um, an actual video to you. So um, just a quick one. So what happened was um, I got up quite early this morning, uh, just before 5 a.m. or so. And the first thing I did was to go on Facebook to, to check if you were live. And um, I saw you probably about six minutes into your video and I, I joined in. But I was still quite groggy and um, I must have kind of slipped up or something like that. I'm not really sure because I didn't even think I dreamt either. I think it was just one of those visions. Um, and I saw you um, like preparing for a conference, you know. And um, there were like two sections. Some, some were, were, were in the very innermost um, room with you and there were loads of people out like at the back with um there was a door demarcating the two sections and those with you doing planning the program were probably literally less than 20 not even up to 20 you know but you were there talking about the choir they're gonna sing and, and then as you were talking you mentioned that there was going to be a seven day fast and the seven day fast i could perceive that it was a very very important fast because the way you were going on about this fast you know and just as you were talking, a man, I saw a man in a wheelchair, rolling the wheelchair with his hands, and he, he rolled himself, he stared the wheelchair towards me. And it was almost as if I recognized this man, but I actually can't recognize his face, but from the voice, it was as if it's not the first time he's spoken to me. So he came to me and he said, um, I hope you're one of those who have sown your $300 seed. And it was almost as if you had made an announcement that we should sow seeds well as he said that i had so many reasons so many excuses to give for why i hadn't done it but the words just couldn't come out because nothing i could say could could be the right excuse because god said do this so why haven't you done it so, so i said i hope you're one of those who have sold your 300 dollar seed so um, nothing came out of my mouth and then just then you know said you know with this chair went sideways and it was about to leave and he said so your 300 dollar seat to um to Belema and see and you will see you know and then he wheeled his chair away and he came towards you and I'm not sure what he was conversing with you he actually said a few things to me which I can't remember either and then he came to you and he was saying some things to you and then um that was kind of the wrap up but while I was in the in the revelation um it was as if um people were asked to sow this seat and a lot of people were cheating like they, they 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 didn't do as they were told to do you know and that's why i came to me i said i hope you have done it you know so um and i got out of, uh, of the revelation and uh, that was the bit i just remember um i prayed about it and um, i got the confirmation that yes god wanted me to do that and as i was on the ground i kept remembering how you would get a message and instantly you would do it so i said what's your excuse are you gonna wait till later in the evening to send this and just do it and I, and I kept saying, oh my God, where am I going to get this money? I have so many things I need to do. But then I kept remembering the very fat woman how she gave her last seed. And I kept remembering how you would sow your seed instantly as God tells you. And also remember that when God asks you to do something, he makes a provision. So if he asks you to sow a seed, he is going to make the provision. So maybe this is my own test to test God and say, okay, even out of that nothing, give it and see what God is going to do. And why not do it? Because I'm only obeying God. If I don't obey God, I can't say that I love God or I'm doing his will. You know, I must be able to overstretch myself and make myself uncomfortable to make God happy. So the moment I just sent it, I just felt that relief. And I'm so glad it's done. It's done. It's, it's gone. And I'm great. I'm happy. So that was what I received. God bless you. This fasting coming is a, is a great one. I, I, I could feel it. And it would be advisable if no one cheats. We all have reasons why we won't want to fast. But look, it's all worth it. When God asks us to fast, it means he wants to bless us. So I will encourage everyone to take part in this fast. God bless you. I love you. 
Praise the Lord. So she was watching me yesterday and she said she didn't even sleep. She was just watching and she said she believed it's a vision and all that happened while she was watching me. I'm showing this because it's going to happen to a lot of you within the seven days. And a man came. She said the man, it seemed like he's, she knows his voice. That was God. God can appear anywhere in your dream. He can appear as me, a woman of God, coming up in your dream. He can appear as a young person. He can appear even as a beggar. He can appear anyhow, just like Jesus can come in form of anyone in real life or angels can come in form of anyone in real life. And he told her about this fasting that is coming up. Mm -hmm. Told her about the seven days fasting and told her about the $300 seed that I had talked about that Ashley was supposed to sow that you guys gave for her. And I gave her $3,000, remember? Funny enough, I didn't know how important that thing was because before I came on yesterday, God told me to tell my mom to sow that seed. And that was a day before our birthday. And I don't even know why. But when I heard this lady's dream, I said, wow, Father, this must be important. A man came in a dream and told her, sow it and you will see. So God is going to appear to a lot of you during this time that we're fasting. And give you all specific instructions. Or God will appear and give you your own breakthrough. Some of you might receive money. Some of you might see yourself coming out of a cage. But it's why you're watching. You know, it will be like maybe you doze up. Or some of you, you will not even remember yourself sleeping. <laughs> That's what we call visions. You will just be watching, but then you can't explain how it happened. It will be quick, but it will be like it lasted for five minutes. How many of you have had visions before? Some of you are only used to dreaming. Well, this fast, get ready. You'll be watching me and suddenly, yeah, but you have to be focused. God will be checking on people who are focused and they will have an encounter with him. Even for your offering, some of you, God will even tell you how much to give, which is normally what happens here anyway. If you are that, that God will say, sow a seed, the way he met her in her dream and told her, during this fast, it will happen. And it's not always going to be in your dream. It will be while you are watching me. Some of you, God will even appear and tell you your papers have been approved. And you come out of it, you got to hold on tight to it. You got to believe. So God is about to take you to another level during this fasting. So how many of you are expectant? <laughs> how many of you are expectant? The key here is to be focused. And if you miss any of the videos, you got to go catch up. Because I understand that some people have to work. Some people, you know, have to sleep because of time difference. But once you get up, you got to catch up. Do not say, oh, I, I know what happened. No, 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 no. You got to catch up. You got to catch up. Got to catch up. You got to catch up. You got to catch up. Because the messages are like food. The videos are like food. Spiritual food. Yeah. You have to eat it. You have to feed on it. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. Somebody said, I'm very expectant. And for the man to talk about the fasting in her dream means God is, a, is confirming that this fasting announcement is from him. You know, and you guys have been following me for a while. You know how we roll here. It's all supernatural. Hallelujah. Right. Thank you, Jesus. And then another lady had a dream. Hers was more like seeing me doing like deliverance, raising up my hand, and things were happening. And that's just actually confirming what God had done 
when he gave me that anointing on Sunday, when we ended the last fasting we did, not the Sunday that passed, the one before, right? I want to show her her own, um, her own um, encounter that she had because she also got a deliverance and hers came about after she had sold into Ashley's breakthrough. And after that, she didn't even realize it was because of that. After that, that's when she had such a powerful deliverance in her dream. Hallelujah. So I'll show that one as well. So when God gives instructions during this fast, please obey so that you don't miss out. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Good morning, Apostle. Good morning, PBM family, School of Power. This is Martha. I am here to share a dream I had this morning. Thank you, Apostle, for giving me the opportunity to share my dream once again. Hallelujah. So in this dream, I found myself in Ghana. An apostle was having a big program like a crusade in Ghana. And I was at the program. And she was almost done in the evening session. Then there was this man in a coffin, a man I don't know. And as he was laying in the coffin, he has a mask on his face and then covered again with a plastic, clear plastic bag. And then the whole coffin itself has a, a big clear plastic bag covering it again. And we all know that when somebody is in a coffin, the person is already dead. But somehow on my mind and um, from the things of what people were saying, it looks like he was going to do in a competition in a sea. It was kind of strange. Then Apostle located him. I don't know how, but she got so angry and screamed. This is how they have killed all the other people. You would die as soon as you enter the sea. But to me, the man is already dead in a coffin. Anyway, Apostle raised up her right hand and she did not even open her mouth. And all the things that was tangling or covering the man started removing. So he got up from the coffin and quickly rushed to the scene where the program was going on, bowed down on apostle feet. An apostle prayed for him and come and see. I don't know how people got to know. Already the program, people were rushing and running to attend that program. So upon hearing the news again, many people, many people were attending the same program. And I saw Apostle making an announcement at the end of the evening session. That means I wasn't there during the afternoon session. And the announcement was, was about $4 that you have to pay $4 if you want me to pray for you. And I was like, no, apostle doesn't charge when she prays for people. And I said, oh, okay, I don't know why. But the program, even service ended. And people started going home. And I wanted to go home with a lady who was with me. I even told her that now everybody has gone. Let us also go. But I said, no, I have to find out something. I want to ask Apostle a question about the $4 because I wasn't there in the afternoon section. 
But this is not something I told the lady with me. I was just waiting to see Apostle so that I can ask my question. And I got the chance to approach her. And I did not even ask the question I had wanted to ask. She smiled at me and raised up the same right hand on me. And what happened to me in the dream, I have never seen it in my life before. Nor from the deliverances that we do in the video, I have never seen it before. Her hand was on me and it's like where she was led to put her hand, she put and I was so weak. I couldn't do anything. I was weak on the floor. I believe I was receiving my deliverance. I was so weak and I was hearing voices speaking. And if I know the person, I can identify the voice that was speaking. I heard a voice of my sister and I heard a voice of my cousin. For my sister, she was saying something. It is not true. They were saying something about the man or something. That part I didn't remember well. But she came to look at it and realize some parts, what they were saying wasn't true about the about apostle or the man. I don't I didn't get that part well. But for my cousin, I heard him saying, he is getting a taxi home. And because the program was done, and I was fortunate to get prayed for, I said, I called my sister to tell him that I want to join him, go home. And... I got strength in me, so I got up to approach where he's picking the taxi. And as I got to him, suddenly he also became so weak and started vomiting, vomiting. And it's like I tried to hold him and he slipped from my hand, almost fell into a hole which I don't know where the hole came from. But God helped me and I managed to pull him out with one hand. And after that, he was so weak that he could not walk, he could not do anything, and the vomiting keeps coming out. So I took him on my hand and wanted to see Apostle again. And on, in my mind, I was saying, oh, she just prayed for me and look how she's tired. Would she even mind me as I am approaching her again with another issue? But I didn't let that bother me. I said, I will go. And I took him to Apostle's residence where she was lodging. And I saw her assistant. And as soon as she saw me, it's like, oh, again? And I said, I am not leaving. I must see Apostle. My brother is dying. And I was crying in the dream. So Apostle overheard it and she came out herself and laid her hands on him. And as she started praying, she shook her head and laughed. And she said something in pigeon. She said, this boy here is shining fine, fine. That is why they want to kill him. Then Apostle prayed as she was laughing and like she was smiling and shaking her head. And then she covered her, like she used her hand to wrap her and try, try to cover her like this. That is where I woke up. And when I woke up from the dream, I was thinking about the whole dream and the four dollars kept coming to me and I was asking myself that no but our apostle doesn't charge and this dream, dream too was so real that she lifted her hand to pray for a dead body came out from a coffin and I started to I went to her page to send her the message 
I didn't want to do a video right away until she tells me to do a video. So as I was typing the dream and I got to the $4 part, then I remembered that yesterday I sold into Ashley's dream that Apostle had concerning her when we were to help her sow her seed for deliverance. And all those who are doing to be delivered, God will deliver us. I sold. And the amount I sold was close to, almost to four. When I put in the four, it exceeds the amount that Apostle saw in the dream. So I removed it a bit from it. And it was close to that amount. I don't want to mention the whole money. That is why I used the four. <laughs> and I got the amount and sent it only for me to dream and had a massive deliverance. Hallelujah. Our God is wonderful. To God be the glory. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you for your teachings. All that you've been teaching us and has been coming through. And I thank you. I had deliverance, my own deliverance, and I believe that of my family. To God be the glory. Bless you. Praise the Lord. So you can see that those of you that sold towards Ashley's breakthrough, people have already started dreaming and getting deliverance. She, not just for herself, but also her family. And this particular fasting we are doing, it's going to be like that. I don't need to call you on the video, but you need to have faith. You need to pay attention. To what I'm saying. And maybe God will just put you to sleep. Or maybe you will not need to sleep. Maybe an angel will just touch you while you're listening. I don't know. But God told me to tell them to pay attention. And this fasting. That's what he told me before I came on here. You see, I'm still stressing it. Because even starting from now, things will begin to happen. Because <laughs> there are many people that are going to be doing this fasting with us. And only me can I really touch all of you. But God will touch all of you. I want to read some um, some passages in the Bible. First one will be John chapter 14. Let's go to John 14. Eh, sorry, Acts chapter 14. Acts 14. We're going to read from verse 8. The New Living Translation. Acts 14 from verse 8. The New Living Translation. If I give you any scripture, I need you to add it to your Bible reading. You add the whole chapter, the whole of Acts chapter 14 if you want to. Because I may preach a message and you may not get everything you need to get from it. But when you go on your own to study it, and a lot of you are already like doing the six month Bible reading. And that's why all these fasting that we've been having, God has not been specifically giving like, big assignments because you're already reading the bible in six months so you're already busy with that right but if i if i give a scripture or a story i encourage you to still go back and read it when you are on your own so maybe god can give you a deeper revelation on it or something so acts chapter 14 from verse 8 it says while they were at lystra paul and Barnabas came upon a man with crippled feet, meaning he couldn't walk, right? He had been that way from birth, meaning he's been crippled since he was born. So he had never walked. He was sitting and listening as Paul preached. Somebody type this, listening, listening. He was not distracted on his phone trying to comment on something. He was not, he was listening as Paul preached, meaning despite the crippled condition, he was paying attention to the man of God, listening to every word that was coming out of his mouth, forgot about his crippled problem or crippled feet. He was listening. God says, I need to tell you guys 
to listen to everything that comes out of my mouth in this fast. In fact, that's really your breakthrough during this fast. That could be easy for a lot of people, but could be hard for some people because some people, when they watch, they're not listening. They are watching, but they're not really paying attention. It is when you least expect while you are listening that your breakthrough will come. I don't know how God's going to do this, but that's what God told me. Every fast is different. And this one, God needs your full attention. It says, so he he was he was sitting and listening as Paul preached. Paul was not doing miracle or healing. Paul was just preaching like Apostle Princess Belemdi preaches all the time, right? Then looking straight at him, Paul noticing that this guy was really paying attention to him. He looked straight at the guy. Looking straight at him, Paul realized that he had faith to be healed. Hey, can I look at you and realize that you have faith to be healed? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So while he was listening, paying attention to the word of God, he was having faith. Yeah, and now it was time for him to receive his healing. So there are some people that they don't like to listen to the word of God. They don't like to listen to the servant of God. They just come into the video and type, I need healing. Man of God, I need healing. Man of God, I need healing. You understand? Man of God, please. I need healing. Man of God, I need healing. Man of God, I need healing. Man of God, woman of God. And they will comment it over and over, grieving the spirit of God. But you need to have faith. And how do you hear? How do you have faith? You got to hear the word of God. You got to pay attention. And that will help your faith. Otherwise, you're not going to know how these things work. And even when you say, man of God, I need healing. And I speak a word. For some people that have been watching me, they know when I speak a word, they run with it. Because they have been watching. They have been listening. They have been learning. So they know that the word of God, the word from a servant of God is powerful. But the one that has not listened yet, the one that has not learned yet, they think you only have to invite them on the video to shout and shout before they get healed. But those who are now like knowledgeable on how it works, one word from you, oh my God, they know it's done. So God is going to require a lot of paying attention and listening. So that you can receive your breakthrough during this fasting. Because God is going to speak through me a lot. Everything will be for learning, for, for growth, for healing, for deliverance. Even the words that come out of my mouth. Yeah. So we said that. He was sitting and listening as Paul preached. Looking straight at him, I'm still, this is verse 9. Looking straight at him, Paul realized that he had faith to be healed. Somebody, you're going to type this. I need faith, I need faith to receive my breakthrough. I need faith. To receive my breakthrough. You're speaking it over yourself. I need faith. To receive my breakthrough. Because faith will help you. Without faith. It's impossible to, to please God. Without faith you can't even receive. I need faith. You're telling yourself. I Belema, I need faith. To receive my breakthrough. For this breakthrough that I'm fasting for. I really need faith. Yeah, just like some of you will have a vision, God will tell you all your problems are taken care of. Yeah, you're going to need faith to believe that, even though because when you wake up, you probably still have the problem when you wake up or when you come back to yourself. But faith will, faith will make it easy for you to say, hey, it is done. To make, it will make it easy for you to get up rejoicing, even though you have not really seen the breakthrough physically. But God has told you, you, you had an encounter and God said it. You just believe. And that's how you receive it. I need faith 
to receive my breakthrough. Walk on my faith, oh Lord. Because sometimes we say we have faith. But sometimes we have some little doubts here and there because it's like it's taking longer than you expected. Or maybe you hear you are healed, but your belly is still hurting you. Or, you know, like, so sometimes some people have, have really, you know, gone in between faith and doubt. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you really need faith. This breakthrough that God is saying we will have in all areas of our life, we need faith to activate that breakthrough, to receive that breakthrough. So this thing you just spoke over your life, Father, honor it. Give them faith, help their faith, strengthen their faith so they don't miss it, so they can receive their breakthroughs in the Sorry, my internet broke. So this thing I'm saying affects a lot of people because sometimes they want to believe but then maybe God, you wake up from a powerful dream or vision and you saw God handing you your papers and once you wake up, you get a phone call saying they have denied your, your application. But you just got up from a dream where God himself handed you your papers. Man, that's a little hard, right? To believe. Yeah. Because you're expecting a phone call saying you have received to confirm that you really had the dream. But God's ways are not our ways. God does not do things the way we want him to. God is full of surprises. God is not predictable. He doesn't like us to predict what he's about to do. Sometimes the denial could be a test of your faith. To see if you really believe in the encounter you just had. Because now, if you still believe that that encounter is real, even after you got that phone call, you say, whose report will I believe? God's report. God has told me I will get it. Father, I thank you because I know my papers will come. I don't know how, but it's going to come. Guess what? Two days later, you may get another call saying, Oh, sorry, we made a mistake. That call was not supposed to be for you. Your paper is approved. When can you come pick it up? These things happen. These things happen. Maybe that denial or that declining was for somebody else, but they mistakenly called you. And God wants you to believe what he showed you. Yeah, God wants you to hold on tight to what he told you. Even when the doctor or whoever is giving you a, a different report. And that's how you really receive. But the moment you begin to doubt because of somebody's call or a report that was not so positive, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. So you're going to need faith to receive your breakthrough during the seven days of fasting. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, work on my faith. Oh, Lord, work on my faith. One man was telling Jesus, Lord, help my home believe. Help me to believe. Help. The guy had to cry out to Jesus. He said, please help my own belief. The guy had to accept that truly he didn't, his faith was shaky. So you too, you need to cry out to God, oh Lord, help my faith. Help my unbelief, please. Don't let the devil play tricks on me this time. I really want to believe. That's right. So if I have an encounter where God touches me and I wake up, even if I wake up with the pain, I believe that God has touched me and my healing is permanent. Even though I don't feel the healing right now, I will receive that encounter and believe and just wait for the manifestation in the physical, right? So, oh Lord, work on my faith, please. And it's possible for anyone 
even servants of God, sometimes our faith can be shaky too. So it's not just you. Don't feel bad. It happens to everyone. All right? When I teach you, I'm not trying to tell you that you are the worst person or you're the one that... No, 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 no. I'm just telling you what's happening with everyone. <laughs> even teachers of God's word. Like, yeah, it happens to us too. Sometimes things can happen and we're like, oh my God, this is not what God told me. What's going on? And the devil is playing tricks with our mind. You know, we're not perfect too. Oh Lord, work on my faith. Oh Lord, work on my faith. Yes, please strengthen my faith. I really want to believe. Yes. I don't want to miss it, Lord. I want to take your word for it. Whatever you say, that's what I will hold on to. Even though it doesn't look good around me, things are shaky around me. What you say, that's what it is. Hmm. God loves it when we have faith. Yes. God loves it when we have faith. God loves it when we have faith. Yeah. Look at that lady that, the lady that I just showed her video. She got healing. Somebody else in her family got healing. She probably woke up feeling the same way she was feeling before she slept. But she woke up excited that a major deliverance has taken place in her life. Even though when she woke up, it felt normal, like nothing happened. Oh, Father, I love you so much. God just flashed Solomon to me in the Bible, King Solomon. He received wisdom in the dream and God promised him many other things. Riches. Yeah, he told him he will make him wealthy. Yeah, many other things that God promised him. When he woke up, it seemed like it was just a dream. But people started to observe him. And they started to notice that this man is very wise. Do you see what I'm saying? So sometimes when God does things for us, or when we have some of these encounters in visions or dreams, when we wake up, it seems like nothing happened. It seems like nothing happened. It could take weeks or months before we start to notice anything. So we may wake up and be become drained and say, well, nothing happened. It was just a dream. Or we may just wake up and begin to give thanksgiving or <laughs> dancing, believing that something has happened. It felt like it was just a dream, but that man was so wise. Yeah. And very rich. And powerful too. That's right. Hallelujah. This is all encouraging you that something major will happen in your life. And it may take some weeks, some days, or whatever to manifest, but you will receive. And you have to hold on tight to it. Hallelujah. So he said, he was sitting and listening as Paul preached, looking straight to him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, stand up. This guy was not expecting that. He was just watching the man of God preaching. Suddenly, the man of God is saying, you stand up. And the man was like, me? His mind was not on it. His mind was not on it. But hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. For making it possible to receive that copy of indication book this one for my wife 
This, this is my copy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Jesus. This is the story of the woman of God as told by God Himself. Hallelujah. Can anyone stand against the word of God? This is the vindication of the servant of God. The story as told by God Himself. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yahweh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Father. Thank you, Yahweh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Madam God. God bless you. More power, more anointing, more grace. I heard the anointing, the grace upon your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So people are still getting their vindication, but I saw something. I had to do something real quick. Hallelujah. All right, so let's continue. He said, when the apostles learned of it, they fled. Oh, sorry. I went to another part. He said, and listening as Paul preached, looking straight at him, Paul realized he had faith to be healed. So Paul called to him in a loud voice, stand up. Stand up. Now that was Paul calling to him, but during this fasting, it will be God calling you. Look up. Huh? Get up. It's not me or me, I'll still be preaching. But you're gonna have encounters like that. Stand up. And the man jumped to his feet and started walking. Wow. The man got to his feet just like that and he started to walk. A man that has been crippled since he was born. Wow. A man that has never walked before. All he did was listen to the message of Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul took him unawares and shouted, Stand up! Without thinking, he said, Huh? He got up. And he just started walking. Because he was so lost in the message that he did not even realize that he couldn't walk before. He just obeyed the stand up instruction, got up and started walking. Because the message was so good that he forgot that he was even crippled. <laughs> Can you be so lost in listening to me that you will forget that you have a problem? No, no, I'm just saying. Like this man does not walk, but he didn't focus on that. He came to be blessed. And he got a major breakthrough while he was listening to the servant of God. And this is worse than a lot of your condition because a lot of you walk. This guy never walked since he was born. This was like a major deliverance, a major healing. It's not pain in your back kind of healing. It's not headache kind of healing. It's crippled feet. It didn't take big deliverance. It didn't take out, uh, come out. Uh, it just says stand up. That's it. Do you see how God works? Sometimes we are the ones who make these things like so like dramatic. We make these things so um such a big deal. Like people expect so much for healing. They expect 30 minutes prayer before they can be healed. This crippled man got healed with just one word. Stand up. And he didn't come asking for healing or deliverance he just came listening to the word of god so i need you to come getting lost in this in this place listening in the presence of god come get lo getting lost in the presence of god and just listen to me listen to me and god will tell you to stand up god will give you your own breakthrough this is what god told me i'm just saying so please 
pay attention. Don't be distracted because that minute you are distracted might be the time that you your stand up is supposed to come. That minute you're distracted might be the time that God is about to heal you, that God is about to show you your own breakthrough. I don't know. I just love the word of God. And that's why me, I don't really want people to get used to one-on-one -on -one if I don't call you on the video and shout and shout and shout. I could just say, get up. But you have to have faith. Otherwise, if I say, get up, you say, I can't get up. Oh, man, oh, God, I can't get up. I don't walk. I have not walked all my life. My life, the guy just got up and that was it. He was lost in the message. So I need all of you to pay attention so you can receive. It doesn't matter how long the situation. It doesn't matter how long the situation has been. It doesn't matter how bad. It doesn't matter what they have said about it. If this man that was crippled from birth could be healed just like that, it can happen to you too. I want also post this scripture, Romans 10 verse 17. The King James Version, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The New Living Translation says, So faith comes from hearing, listening to me, paying attention. That is hearing the good news about Christ. That's what will build your faith. The NIV translation, right? The NIV translation says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. I don't know why God is focusing so much about paying attention in this fasting. But I know my father, when my father says something and those who listen, obey him, things begin to happen. It's not as hard as you think. Look at what I just read in this scripture. This man that had like probably the worst case in the whole audience, God healed just like that because he was listening to the word of God and it built up his faith and boom, he received. Something that some people would travel far. Some people would need 10 men of God to pray fast. It just took a stand up, that was it. So your situation is not worse. Yours is nothing compared to that. There's no problem that is too big for God. I don't care how many years you have suffered. Nothing is too difficult for God. But God says he wants you to pay attention. Listen. So your faith can be strengthened. And boom. It will happen. When you least expect you will receive your touch. You will receive your stand up. You will see your own vision. You will see that dream of deliverance, breakthrough. But just pay attention. I want to read another story. And this one is about Jesus. Luke chapter 13. Let's well, um, read the NLT translation. Luke 13 from verse 10. Hallelujah. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. What was Jesus doing? He was teaching in a synagogue. He was teaching, just like Apostle Paul was teaching. As he was teaching, meaning this woman was among those listening to his teaching. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? He was teaching, and while he was teaching, that's when 
he saw this woman. If this woman was not there listening to him, he would not see her. If she was busy distracting him, he would probably not be focused on his teaching. If she was not in that hall, there is no way she would have been noticed by Jesus. So you got to stay connected too for you to have your own encounter. He said he was teaching in a synagogue. He saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years. We're talking about years of hardship, of affliction. The other one was since he was born. This woman was 18 years. He got his breakthrough just from listening to the word of God. This woman is about to get her breakthrough too. Hallelujah. <laughs> she had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. Do you know what bent double means? One time I preached this message, I think I was in my studio when I did it, and I was able to call out some people to act it out. She She's bent like this. If somebody can find me a picture on Google of somebody that is bent over, so I can flash it on here, so you guys can know what this woman had suffered for 18 years. And she needed a breakthrough. But guess what? She just heard that Jesus was around. And she went to go listen to him. And even while she was listening to him, she was bent over listening. Meaning she can't even stand up straight. She can't even look at him. She was like this, listening to him. Meaning her case was kind of urgent. But she rather listened to him anyway. Believing that God was going to touch her. Wow. Some people say it's like hunch. Hunchback. Okay, some of you know what hunchback is, right? But that thing can be very uncomfortable just by looking at them. Like, it's not something that anybody wants to be going through. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. Some of you have sent me pictures. God bless you all. Oh my God. Some people are sending me the most wicked picture. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> you guys are so quick to get in picture there. Try. Oh, my God. I'm going to show like one or two, right? Wow. Thank you, ladies. I got enough. This ministry, eh? you guys are helping me a lot. The moment I ask for something, I get a lot. And as you are sending me, may God reward you. That's enough, guys. It's so much. <laughs> it's a lot. It's okay. <laughs> you don't do. <laughs> it's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Love you, guys. Great job, everyone. <laughs> They're not stopped, you know. People say we must receive. We must receive in this fast. Woman of God, we must receive. <laughs> oh my God. This is breakthrough in every area of your life. And God is teaching you how to receive by listening. By listening. By hearing. Wow, there's actually a lot of people that have this thing. I'm just, I'm, go, I'm going to show a few pictures, okay? Okay, ladies, thank you so much. Great job, ladies. You guys are so fast. The way you find things, I don't even understand how you do it. Wow. This is not good. I'm trying to encourage a lot of you. So when you look at these things, you will, you will know that your own condition will be taken care of easily. You will not worry about it while we're fasting. You will just pay attention to the messages and believe that God got you covered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. All right. Let me show... A few that I selected. 
Wow, this thing is bad though. Bent over. The other one was crippled. But this one was bent over. Try. People have suffered though. In the Bible, read Bible, you will see that many things that people are suffering today has been happening since. It didn't just start today. And a lot of them got their healing. Got their deliverance. And that same power is available today. The power of God. Hallelujah. That's right. So some people sent me this picture. This one looked like the extreme one. Oh. Don't you guys think this one is extreme? Like this one looks like extreme, extreme. I don't even know how this one will take a shower. But I think this one is like the worst case scenario, right? Just imagine living like that for 18 years. When you see that case, you're like, oh my God, I, I don't have a problem. And then look at this one. Imagine walking like this. Everybody, look at this. This is how that lady that I'm talking about in the Bible was. Imagine bending like this, walking like this for 18 years. Is your condition worse than this? I'm trying to strengthen your faith right now. Look at this. Look at grandpa. Walking like this for 18 years. That's the story we are reading right now. 18 years of this. Some of you, what you're, what you're fasting about is not even up to one year. Okay, look at grandma. Walking like this. She can't even stand up to see what's, who's in front of her. It's like she's just bent. God is talking about you. Telling you to relax. Your situation will be taken care of. They are worse situation than yours. And they got their healing from listening. And then some people sent me this picture. This is like Jesus and the lady. They just did a picture of what happened then. Imagine that kind of person with such a problem paying attention to Jesus' teaching. Did not come and say, please, I need my case is urgent, please. No, he was the one who noticed her. She didn't, she didn't make noise and try to disrupt the service. She was just bending. She couldn't even lift her face to look at Jesus. That's another one. Bent like that. So he saw all these people listening to him in the synagogue. And amongst them was a lady that was bent. But she too was listening. That thing moved the anointing. It's like, wow. So this woman would have come up to me begging me for prayers. But she would rather be listening to my message. Uh -huh. Somebody said she wasn't desperate, so she received. She believed that the word that she would listen to will help her. She even forgot she had a problem. She just wanted to enjoy the presence of God. And guess what will happen? Let's read. I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. He said he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. So that thing, it was a demon that caused it. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. She was unable to stand up straight like we saw in the picture. They couldn't stand up straight. All the people I showed, right? When Jesus saw her, remember, Apostle Paul saw that man that he had faith to be healed. And Jesus spotted this woman because he's preaching. And in the audience, just like I'm going to be preaching or talking. And God is seeing everybody in their house and how attentive they are paying attention to my message. Maybe some of them are just sitting. Don't distract me. Woman of God is talking. And God knows that person has stomach ulcer, but they are willing to fast and listen to his daughter. Man, I'm telling you, you just suddenly start to feel fire in your belly. Like nobody prayed for you. It would just happen. So God said he's going to be going around because he has angels that will go around checking on people that are paying attention and they will be receiving their breakthrough. Some of them will have visions, dreams while they are watching. 
So something is about to happen within the seven days. That's right. Some of you will come up with pain or something or movement in your head, but you are just watching and suddenly a voice will tell you, check your head. You check. I don't feel it again. It's gone. Hey, I don't feel it. Oh my God. <laughs> You'll be asking, hello? Is anyone there? <laughs> Moving objects, are you there? <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Says I'm reading all these serious cases to make you to relax. This fasting is for breakthrough, right? In every area of our life. But some of your breakthrough that you need is not as bad as these people. Their own is very bad. But they were still able to listen. I know you guys were going to laugh, right? <laughs> You're checking on the moving object. Are you there? <laughs> knock, knock. It's gone. And you don't even know how it happened. Because you were focused on the message, the video. That's how God wants it. You're like, wow. Wow. God is very powerful. It's people that underestimate the power of God. And they want the hard way when there are easy ways. Like, the way you did not know when that thing started, it's the same way you will not know when it will go. Some of you just woke up feeling a certain way. It's the same way you probably just wake up or you will just be watching and you won't feel it again because you didn't know when it came so you're not going to know when it goes but if you dwell on it it's going to take away from you from even getting blessed or enjoying the service and God wants you to enjoy the service this ministry is so much fun even the way I do deliverance is with so much ease I'm, I'm laughing, I'm joking but I'm kicking out demons that's how Jesus did ministry with so much grace and ease he was not stressing, not sweating to kick out a demon. Because he knew it was not him doing it. It was God doing it. The Holy Spirit, the anointing. That's right. So let's continue. So when Jesus saw her, he called her over. When he saw her, he said, Woman, you that is bent overcome. So she took her stick. He was the one who called her to come. Because he couldn't believe it. How can a woman so afflicted be paying so much attention to him without asking for prayer? What? How can a woman that desperately needs healing not asking for healing, listening to him Wow, I need to heal this woman. Wow. When Jesus saw her, he called out over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Just like that. You are healed. Apostle Paul, he told the man, stand up. And he got up. This one, he told her, come, you are healed. Me, of all the people here, you picked me? Yeah. Because despite your condition, uncomfortable condition, that you suffer for 18 years, you still want to listen to my message. So you are healed. In Jesus' name. That's it. You are healed of your sickness. Some of you will be watching me. You will hear. You are healed in your ear. You'll be looking around. You will even hear it in my voice. So. Yeah. And God is going to do it. You will hear it in my voice. But that's not what I'm saying on the screen. I'm saying something else. You are healed. I may not even believe what I'm saying. Because you know when I say these things, they happen, right? I can be laughing, but I'm 
I'm telling you what's going to happen. How many of you believe what I'm saying? My words are powerful. Because I'm not even the one saying these things. I, I believe this is God speaking. Yeah, you got to believe, sweetie, so you can receive. You got to believe you have nothing to lose but so much to gain. That's right. You will just hear, you are healed. Because the same Jesus that did this will be the one touching you guys. Hallelujah. Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. And then he touched her. And instantly, she could stand straight. How she praised God. Instantly, she got up. She could stand straight. And she was praising God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I came here just wanting to listen to the message. And look at this. Now I have received my breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are encouraged by listening to these messages that I just preached? And being encouraged means you are now expectant that the way God touched these people, God will touch you as you pay attention to the woman of God during this fasting. You remove distraction. Hey, you remove distraction and focus. You have to catch up with the videos. Even if they are very long, it's to keep you going. The longer it is, the better for you. Because these videos, they make time go by quick. Before you know, it's time to break. Because we're, we're not going to eat for three days. On the third day, we're going to eat after six o'clock. Or you can drink water. In fact, right now, I want to bless water for everyone. I want that water for cleansing. So everybody get water. So you can drink water during the fast. Even right now, so I want to bless water. You can get as much water that you want to bless. That you will drink during the time that you're fasting. It's no food, but you can drink water. And even if you can't do the dry, you can always do as your body can take. Because some of you, maybe you can't fast. Or maybe you're pregnant. You can still just watch the videos and you will still receive. Because there are some people that don't fast. But they receive. Because maybe they are pregnant. They cannot fast. Or maybe there's a reason. But they watch the videos. And God still touches them. So get water. I want to bless water for cleansing. And in case this is your first time coming on. This is the first day of our seven days dry fasting. And it's for breakthrough in every area of your life. And the scripture that I put on here for the fasting is the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. That's Psalm 34, 17. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. We are believing God to deliver us out of all our troubles as we fast. And now this scripture says the righteous so for you to be qualified as the righteous, you have to repent. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You have to leave your old life, your old ways, your old ways of sin, and come to the light. Yeah, you have to become a new person. Because there's no way we'll be praying to God, fasting, listening to his message, and still living in darkness. We need to repent so that we don't be the reason or that we don't be the one blocking our breakthrough because God is holy. Some of you will have visitations from God. You don't want sin to be the blockage. You don't want sin to be the blockage. So if you are ready to repent, you will have to say the salvation with me. Anyone, anyone who has been fasting with me since 2016 that I started this ministry will know that we always have to repent 
before we start any fasting. Always have to make peace with God. We don't want to be the reason why we don't receive. So everyone, even those who have repented before, but they are not sure right now about their relationship with God. Maybe, maybe you have done something that you're not proud of. God is a merciful God. He will forgive you. So take one minute out before I bless the water. Take one minute out to confess all your sins. Make peace with God. Yes. And this is not just because of this fasting. This is the right thing to do so you can make heaven. Jesus Christ came to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. So basically, if you don't accept him, you don't have life. You are dead. That's right. You are living in darkness. Even though you are looking like you are alive, you're really not alive. You're dead. Because if anything happens to you now, you're going to hell. You're not going to heaven. So take one minute. Confess your sins. Lord, I am sorry. Please forgive me. Doesn't matter what you've done. God is merciful. God will forgive you. It says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So guess what? God is ready to forgive and to give you a big hug to accept you back so that this fasting will be a smooth ride between you and God and you will have many encounters with him. So now, now I want you to say this prayer after me, all of you who are ready to repent. I even encourage everyone because you just never know. There could be something. Yeah? Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So raise up your two hands, close your eyes and say this prayer after me. Say, Father Lord, I come into your presence as a sinner. I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I didn't know any better. I promise not to go back to my old ways. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me on the cross of Calvary so that my sins can be wiped away. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord over my life. I promise to serve you forever and ever in the name of Jesus. Now put your right hand on your chest. Tell yourself, I am saved. I am saved. God is so pleased with you right now. Oh my God, God is clapping for you. There's a big celebration in heaven. Heaven is rejoicing right now because you are saved. Do not go back to your old way. Sin no more. This is not a game. This is serious. Now that you are saved, sin no more cut off from anything that will cause you to sin that's right God has great plans for you God will use you mightily welcome to, to the light do not go back to darkness it is well with you now everybody get your water in this ministry we have lots of testimonies from water that I pray for we have a popular three minutes water prayer video that I have on YouTube on Facebook just type three minutes water prayer and put my name Princess Belemzi thousands of people have used it there's always testimonies people download it and some people get sick and just by drinking the water God heals them it's just so powerful like a lot of miracles and healings so in case you're new and this is your first time, do not be wondering what the water is about. The fasting, we can't eat, but we can drink water. And normally, sometimes I'm led to bless water for cleansing. So some of you, even as you drink this, you might find yourself yawning, burping, coughing, even rushing to the bathroom to pee or poop. Yeah. It will just cleanse you and whatever junk is there. But you got to believe. 
So yeah, so if you have, maybe say you want to drink like three bottles of water during the fast or two bottles or I don't encourage you to drink a lot of water during the fast because water can also make you hungry. Only drink when you're thirsty and even when you drink, do not drink too much because fasting is supposed to be you staying away from all of that. But then your throat may be dry and you want to just wet it a little bit. So for me, I have this right here. And if you miss this section or if you need water blessed, you can always look for my three minutes or four minutes prayer water. Or you can come back to this video, rewind to the part where I bless water. And you can have your water blessed. And if you have anybody sick in your house, you know, I just talk about faith, right? Just give it to them to drink. And if they believe, they will be healed. So open it up. You can even dress your uh, bless your water fountain in your house. Some people do that. You know how you guys have the fountain? Bless that one so that the whole family gets to drink blessed water. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless your water now. Father, Lord, I command everybody's water, including mine, to turn into the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. I anoint it in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I release the fire, the grace, the power, the anointing upon my life. The new dimension anointing upon my life into your water, into mine. In the name of Jesus, as you drink it. As you drink it, may deliverance begin to take place. Healing begin to take place. Cleansing, breakthrough begin to take place in the name of Jesus. As you drink it, may you be filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. May you receive a fresh fire, fresh anointing and power in the name of Jesus. As you drink it, everything that has been blocked in your life, may it be unblocked in the name of Jesus. As you drink it, may angels begin to touch you in the name of Jesus. As you drink it, may evil deposit be flushed out of your system in the name of Jesus. This is not ordinary water. Even moving objects, as you drink it, may they all come out of you and never come back in the name of Jesus. Drink it and begin to testify. This is now miracle water. This is now anointed water. This is now the blood of Jesus. Drink it and begin to testify in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, as I was blessing this water, a strong anointing came over me. It's like God was waiting for me to do this. So drink it and you will see some of you will begin to yawn, burp, cough, rush to the bathroom. Poop, sneeze, fart, pee. <laughs> Tell us how you feel once you drink it. There are some of you, when you drink it, you probably are not expecting anything. And before you know it, boom, something's happening. Some of you will bop some loud bops. Oh, my God. Ah. Uh. Something is happening. This is cleansing. Some of you will feel light after drinking it. Because a lot of you had eaten so much because of the fasting coming up. When you drink this water, you will feel so light. Like something was cleansed out. Hallelujah. I just know how I felt when I started blessing it. See, somebody said she was yawning and burping as I was praying. It's like something just came over me. God wanted me to bless it. And if you had a lot blessed, as you get thirsty during the fast, you can drink it too. Wow. Somebody said they could feel the anointing. They were even yawning. A lot of people were yawning while I was praying. And they haven't even drank the water yet. My God, this is powerful. Father. <laughs> Somebody yawning, rushing to the bathroom. Look at this. Wow. Ooh. Somebody say her daughter just rushed to the bathroom. What had a My God, look at this. Oh my God. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Wow. People were yawning while I was praying. You could feel something came on me, right? It's like whenever I just started speaking it about because it just came. That's how I know. The Lord is about to do something in this place. I'm just putting your comments on the screen. Look at that, yawning. 
Wow, burp it. Yawn it. Somebody said they have. What is that? Thirteen large bobs already. <laughs> oh my God! Things are running out of you coming out. <laughs> and we just started this fast, you know, and it's already happening. My God, power <laughs> Oh, somebody said the Lord had told her to get water thirty minutes ago. God was preparing you for this. Wow. <laughs> Oh my God. Father, thank you so much for the anointing. Wow. 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 Look at this. Somebody said, I felt a shock run through my body. Wow. This is always amazing to see. Wow. Somebody said, She even used the water to wash her face. My God. Wow, look at this. Wow, thank you, Jesus. Wow. You know me, I'm always shouting, wow, 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 wow. You know how I am? Wow. God is so amazing. God is so powerful, you know. You would think it's ordinary water. No, it's the anointing upon my life transferred into the water. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Even someone that doesn't have water with her right now, she's still yawning and burping. Yawning, yawning, yawning. Somebody coughing. <laughs> Somebody say, our son has gas. <laughs> Something jumped out. Some of you might even want to sprinkle that around your house. I woke up from sleep some hours ago and I blessed water and told my son to sprinkle it all over the house. For all those monitoring spirits to get out. That's right. So if you have extra, sprinkle some. Sprinkle some in the house. Yeah. To remove the bad spirit. This is deliverance right here. Wow. And your faith is high too. You got faith, man. Wow. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know some people will be like, somebody, even your ear is like, something is coming out of your ear. Like, you could feel like something is crawling out of your ear. Something is crawling, like, like something is leaving your ear or something. Like something is leaving. The fire is too much. <laughs> they have to jump out. Wow. Wow, look at this. So many people. I'm trying to put as many comments as I can. Even somebody's mouth feels hot inside. Wow. 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 Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. This worship that is playing, God had told me to play it when I come on. So I'm going to show this worship so we can worship God for a few minutes. God loves when we worship. Some of you, as this worship is playing, I want you to speak in tongues. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. All righty.
Shoto Nanama, Hebre de Boshia, Haniamakana, the most in the Mahanana, Nakunimana Haniana, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh.
Thank you for dying for us, Jesus. No one could have done this for us but you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. How wonderful. How beautiful is your name. You know, yeah. How excellent is your name. How excellent, how excellent, how excellent is your name. In all the earth, how excellent is your name. Oh Lord, my God, how wonderful is your name. Father, in all the earth, how wonderful is your name. There is no one like you, Jesus. No one can compare to you, oh God. You are Yahweh, you are King of kings, you are Lord of lords. You are the first and the last. You are the beginning and the end. You are Jehovah. Oh, brave emotion, and the We live to worship you, Jesus. We were created to worship you, Jesus. Forgive us of all our sins, Father. We didn't know any better. I Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for bringing us together, Lord. Thank you for all you do for us, oh God. Oh Lord. My God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. Oh, Father, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. 
You alone are worthy to be praised, Jesus. I will worship you forever. Father, you know I have never stopped loving you since I came back to you. I will always make you proud, Lord. I will always make you proud, Jesus. Lord, 
God loves it when we worship him. Yes, hallelujah. So God wants me to talk about something. Pay attention, everybody. Yesterday, somebody sent this. She sent $700 and she said, I promise God that when I have a job, I will give him half of my salary. Thank you, Jesus. She said she made a promise to God like nobody told her. That was a promise that she made God herself. That once she gets a job, she will give him half of her salary. So yesterday, I saw this in PayPal. I get a lot of people that send this kind of offerings once in a while, right? That they made God a promise. and So while I was here showing this worship, God wanted me to talk about promise. He said that some people, the reason why they don't have breakthrough or why they are stagnant or why they are stuck or why things are not working for them is... They made God promises and they didn't keep to their promise. They acted like they didn't make a promise or they acted like they forgot about it and now they are suffering from it. Now this lady, she says she made God a promise that when she gets a job and she got a job and she fulfilled her promise. No servant of God told her to make the promise. She gave, she made the promise herself. And even though the money is, is a lot, she still kept to her promise. There are some people, they will promise God many things because they are desperate. And then once they get that thing, they now like, it's too much. God will understand. And they don't keep to the promise. They'll say, well, let me just give 200 but that's not half of your paycheck. That's not what you said you will do. Oh, I need to buy things. I need to buy work supplies. I need to buy gas. I need to pay my rent. I haven't worked in years. I really need this money. It's so easy for people to fall into this trap. All of you, I need you to think, has there been any time that you open your own mouth to make God a promise? Even as I'm talking, God will remind some of you there are some promises that you made him. I'm not even talking about promises you made to people. You made to God that, oh, when you start working, you will pay your tithe faithfully. You started working, you pay tithe the first month, two months. That's it. And now your finances are tight. You're looking for a breakthrough in finances. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm just saying, is there any promise you have made God, maybe out of excitement or out of when you thought you could and... Or I don't know that once in a while it flashes to you. You have sinned. And that's probably why you are suffering in that area. It's better for you not to make a promise than to make a promise and not to keep it. It's just because, uh -huh, some people are saying me, me. Okay, good. It's good when people identify themselves. It's easier for me to put this on the screen so that way we can see that there are people because this is this deliverance is for breakthrough right in every area of your life i'm not just talking money it could be your service it could be you saying you want to go to church more when god does something for you and then maybe he did that thing and you're not even going to church <laughs> you see what i'm saying it could be many things but God wants to deliver you from that because that's probably why you're getting blockage in that particular area. I don't know. It's a lot of people, you know. Uh -huh. Somebody say, have mercy. You're talking to me, all right? So God is touching different parts in this fast so people can be free. Because sometimes it is your own promise or your own mouth that puts you in that situation. That you're in right now and that's why with prayer and everything you're still there it's not it's not it's not fixing anything and god is locating you so god is using this example of this lady to teach 
Like, I don't know when she made the promise. Ah, she didn't make no promise to me. I just saw that she sent $700 saying, I promised God that when I get a job, I will give him half of my paycheck. So no matter how tempting the money was, she knew half of her paycheck was not her money. It was for God. When Anna wanted a child, she told God that if he gives her a son, she would give the son back to him. And when he gave her Samuel, she brought the boy back to God. And he stayed with Eli until when he was grown up, he began to, you know, do the work of God, became God's servant. And God blessed her after she had given back this child. God blessed her with more children. There are some people, they may go to God and out of desperacy or desperation of not having kids, will promise God that, you know, if he gives them a child, they will give the child back to him. And when this child comes, this child will be so cute, like so cute. They're like, man, I can't, no, this child, nah, this like, no, 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 no. In fact, they will forget. And God will be watching them like this. God will be watching them like this. Mm, okay. All right. Oh, when I get money, Father, if you give me money, I will build an orphanage. I will build a church. I will do this. Money comes. No orphanage. No church. No, I will help the poor. I will do all it. And God says, okay. God gives it to you. Now you don't keep your own promise. This fasting is for you. God gave me a scripture to read. And I'm going to read it in different translations. Right? Hallelujah. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I'm going to start from verse 1. From verse 1, the New Living Translation. It says, As you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth open short <laughs> today i was just telling you guys to listen a lot right pay attention to me <laughs> when i was reading the script i was laughing i don't know i laugh a lot i just like to laugh because life and eh? life no day that difficult life is easy enjoy life he said as you enter the house of god keep your ears open and your mouth shut meaning don't go to god's house and be talking anyhow because <laughs> you might say something that is just too much for you he said keep your ears open and your mouth shut hallelujah as you enter the house of god keep your ears open and your mouth shut it is evil to make mindless offerings to god hallelujah now i want to read that same verse one in another translation, um, easy translation says, be careful about anything that you do in the temple. Listen well when you worship God. Listen well, which is something I say today. Listen, pay attention. It says, listen well when you worship God. Some fools go to the temple and they give sacrifices to God but they do it for the wrong reasons hey my god it says some fools go to the temple right and they offer sacrifices to god but they do it for the wrong reasons they do not know what they do not know that they have done a wrong thing wow have you been a fool before have you been a fool that go to church and you give sacrifice to God or an offering just to show off or to be known as somebody who's always giving. Or I don't know, but it says for the wrong reason. And they do not know that they have done a wrong thing. Wow. How does this scripture make you guys feel? I'm still reading. I'm not done. <laughs> it said, be careful about anything that you do in the house of God. Listen well when you worship God. Some fools will go to the house of God and they give sacrifices to God, but they do it for the wrong reasons. 
They do not know that they have done a wrong thing. Wow. Yes, yeah, somebody say, what is my motive? Wow. That's right. I had a dream recently. I had a dream recently. And this was like maybe a week ago or two weeks. I gave a man of God $500,000. And then in the same dream, I wanted to give this same man of God another $500,000. But then in my head, I was like, I wonder how he's going to report this in his taxes if I give him a million dollars total. And then another thing in my head is like, but you're not giving this from your heart. So why are you giving? So when I woke up, I was like, huh, Father, you know, I ain't giving nobody $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> I said this guy in dream, eh? <laughs> this is kind of dream. You gotta dream one million times. <laughs> ah, you gotta dream it one million times for confirmation. Eh? This one, eh? <laughs> from your heart so I contacted the man of God that I saw in the dream I said man of God um I understand I was trying to give you one million dollars in my dream and the man of God said wow that he's actually working on a project and the amount that he needs for the project is a million dollars I said well I don't know why that thing came to my dream because I ain't giving you no one million dollars. <laughs> I say, well, I say, well, uh, I don't know why God put it in my dream, but I heard a voice tell me, you know, you're not giving it from your heart. And the voice is right because it's not coming from my heart. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but I was shocked that this servant of God was already praying to God for a project he's working on that will cost a million dollars. But the voice told me, you know you're not giving it from your heart. I said, that's right. Because it's not coming from my heart. Because I don't even have that kind of money to give anybody. <laughs> so as I'm saying this thing, eh? As I'm reading this scripture, the dream just flashed to me. You understand? I know we are laughing. <laughs> but it's not every dream you see that you quick and do. You got to know. Well, if you have one million, you can give now. But do you know what one million? You know what the one million dollars is? Eh? Eh? I can, you know how many programs I can do with one million? Hey. Man, I'll probably do like, hmm. I go to many countries, eh? And many souls will be saved. That's right. So that, that dream just flashed to me as I'm saying this. Sometimes, even in your dream, God can rebuke you and say, but you're not giving it from your heart. Like I heard it clearly. I even told this man when I messaged him saying I saw this kind of dream. I say in the dream, God was saying that you know you're not giving it from your heart. Right? I said, but I don't even know why that dream is coming up anyway. One million dollars, that's a lot of money. But there are people who have money. I remember watching a man of God on, on TBN once. I think it was Pastor Robert or something. I was watching one of his, his sermons and he said there was a time that God told him to give everything they had. And him and his wife, they gave everything. You know, and God had told him that he will see what will happen. I don't know if anybody has watched 
that episode. And But this one, God told it himself. It's not like somebody came and told it to him. In this ministry, I like the way God tells you guys something because it's even more comfortable when God himself tells you than when people are manipulating you to collect all your money, right? He said after he gave everything, like a few days later, a man called him and he said that, oh, Pastor Robert, God told me to give you um, one of my private jets and to also make sure that I have, um, that I have, uh, what's it called? To make sure that I have, um, I pay for the service of it and pay for the pilots and pay for everything. You don't have to pay, just go in and it will take you wherever you go. So let me know where, when, where you want me to send the keys to or something like that. He said he couldn't believe it. He's like, huh, what? And that, I don't know how much a private jet will cost, but I think that's a lot of money. And he said that miraculously, things started happening. And his ministry went into another level. So what I was saying is, even though one million sounds a lot right now to me, but there are people who can actually buy private jets for people, or even houses, or even build a big church, mega church for somebody. God will only lead you to do something like that if god knows that you are you can do it and you will be gladly doing it because you can afford it they are billionaires they are millionaires you know one million to them is nothing or something but they will do it from their heart hallelujah so if you're here and god is telling you to do something or you promise god that you're gonna give something you have to give him or you have to do it and then you will have breakthrough in that area that God has promised you. This, this one is not just about fasting. It's about keeping to the promise that you made God. So let's continue reading. Verse 2. It said, don't make rash promises. Let me read verse 1 again. I'm reading the New Living Translation. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Verse 1. I want to read it again. The New Living Translation. It says, as, as you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't make rash promises. Don't be in a, in a hurry to make promises. That's what it means. Don't be in a hurry to make a vow. You know? He said, don't make rash promises. He said, and don't be nasty. Don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. Don't make rash promises. And don't be hasty in bringing matters to God before God. After all, God is in heaven and you are here on earth. So let your words be few, meaning don't speak too much. Don't talk too much. Let's read that in the easy translation. Verse 2, it says, you should think before you speak. How many of you think before you speak? Sometimes... In the moment when you're so excited, you just speak, right? That could get you in trouble with God. He said, you should think before you speak. This is the easy translation. You should think before you promise something to God. Hey, my God. He said, you should think before you promise something to God. Like this woman that I just showed you that gave half of her first paycheck to God. She should think before making such promises so when she gets the job, she will actually be able to do it. You should think before you promise something to God. God is in heaven and he knows you well. You are here on the earth and you do not see as much as God sees. Do not say to God more than you have to say. Wow. Do not say to God more than you have to say. You see how God is coming back to listening, listening. It's like God wants us to listen more, pay more attention than to be talkative, even in the house of God. Because we may go and use our own mouth to put ourselves in trouble and we don't understand why things are so hard for us. 
not knowing we have made some promises or we have said some things and now it's just affecting us. Things are hard for us. You see what I'm saying? And it's not even a curse. It's not somebody that cursed us. It's just because we talk too much and we've said some things and now we are stuck. So let's continue verse 3. The New Living Translation. It says too much activity gives you restless dreams. Too many words make you a fool. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Too many words make you a fool. Hey. Too many words make you a fool. How many of you like to talk too much? <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> they say too much activity gives you restless dream. Too many words make you a fool. Wow. I know some people in this ministry that talk like that. Hopefully God will deliver you during this fast. Yeah. And then the easy translation of verse 3, it says, if you think about your troubles too much, you will dream about bad things. Oh, I like the way they, they put this translation here. Easy translation. It says, if you think about your troubles too much, you will dream about bad things. Oh my God. If you think about your troubles too much, you're going to have bad dreams. Did you, did you know that before? If you think about your problems too much, you're going to have bad dreams. If you talk too much, you will say silly things. Meaning, uh -huh, somebody say parrot spirit. If you have parrot spirit, it says you are going to say a lot of silly things. You're going to say things that will trap you too. All right, let's continue to verse 4. Verse 4 says, when you make a promise, I'm reading the NLT now. I like different translations so we can understand it better, right? He said, when you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Hey, my God. He said, when you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. Don't delay in keeping to the promise. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. Hey. God is trying to help somebody during this fast. Somebody that has made promises to God. And has been delaying to keep them. Bible says you are a fool. And God takes no pleasure in fools. It says, keep all the promises you make to God. Wow, this message is really touching a lot of people. How many of you are being affected by this scripture I'm reading? No wonder God said he wants you guys to pay attention in this fact. Because it looks like God is going to address a lot of things. He said, don't delay in following through. I'm not just talking about tithes, offering seed. No, there's a lot of things. Maybe it's even an assignment that you promised God to do and you haven't done it. I don't know. It's just a lot of things. It's just a lot of things. Uh huh. Some people say they are feeling guilty about this message. Your deliverance is here, sweetie. God is talking to you right now. That's your breakthrough right there. We want breakthrough in every area of our lives. And this right here, your breakthrough has started already. Some of you are even crying right now. Father, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, God. I really want to keep to my promise. I don't know what's happening to me. I don't know what's happening to me. Wow, look at all these people. Are you seeing this? Wow. Somebody said me. I delay. Wow. Wow. And that's why we have the word of God to guide us. To help us. To do the right thing. Because sometimes we don't know why we are suffering from something. And God is pointing it out to us right now. To help us. So we can be free. Hallelujah. 
Nobody is judging you right now. You know, we don't come here to judge nobody. We're coming to help people. Because even as you are, as I'm preaching, your spirit is bearing witness to what I'm saying. Like conviction in your heart. This is you she's talking about. This is you. And then God will be flashing the promises that you've made to you so you can do something about it, so you can fix it. And that's where your breakthrough will come from. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Even as I'm saying it now, begin to get to work. If it's something you are, you are able to do right away, get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. And you will feel a release. It's like something left you. You will feel good. And if you've forgotten, God is going to remind you right now, Father, bring it to their remembrance. That promise, if they have forgotten, so they can fix it in the name of Jesus. Because sometimes the enemy can make you forget so that you can be trapped, so that you can be seen as a fool. So right now, even as I'm preaching, God will bring it to your remembrance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wow, it's more people than I thought. No wonder God wanted me to... Wow, this is a lot of you guys. Wow. Wow, this is your day one, guys. And look at what's happening. I believe there's going to be a lot of testimonies in this fast. So God is addressing things. Wow. I'm still clicking on. Do you know there's still a lot of you? <laughs> oh, my God. Delay is dangerous. Procrastination is bad too. Wow, I'm tired of clicking. So let's continue. Wow. Oh my God, look at this. Wow. Wow. Okay, so now, let me read verse four again. It said, when you make a promise to God, do not delay in following through, for God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. Hallelujah. And this is not, it doesn't matter if you're a servant of God or you're a believer. This applies to everyone. That's why it's better you don't make any promise than make a promise and you don't fulfill it. Because now you put yourself in a box, you're like in a trap or in a cage. And you're thinking it's the queen or the coast or the demons that did it. No, you did this to yourself. So this is your deliverance, right? Hallelujah. See? Somebody said, this word is for me this morning. I promise God to go back to church. Now, in this ministry, we spell God with a capital G. For all of you that are new, we have almost a thousand people watching now. So some new people are here. Whenever we address God, the G is capital when we say Jesus, the J is capital J. When we say he, if it's God, we're referring to the H is capital. When we say you, if it's God, we are referring to like, thank you, Jesus. The U is capital Y. All right. So you guys learn so that we can address God with a capital letter in the first letter, right? You say this word is for me this morning. I promised God to go back to church after the COVID and I have not been in church. See, everybody has made God a promise one way or the other. God bless you, sweetie. She corrected herself. God, that's right. You're, we're all learning, right? We always have new people here that they don't know. So we got to teach them. Hallelujah. So now let's continue. Um, verse 5. It said, we'll make sure, verse 4 said, keep all the promises you make to him. Now, let's go to verse 5. The New Living Translation, it says, It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. It's better you don't make a promise at all. Meaning it's better to... Because then you didn't, you didn't say nothing. You didn't promise nothing. And this thing we're talking about God, but we should also relate this to people. Let's not promise people things we can't do, right? So let's not just end it here with God. Let's also relate it to maybe our husbands, our family. I don't know your friends. Stop promising them big, big things that you can't do. 
it's not good it will make you not to um to seem trustworthy okay um easy translation the first one that i read was the nlt translation right it says it is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not to keep it now i want to read it in the easy translation it said do not promise to do something easy um, easy transition said do not promise to do something that you might not do it will be better not to promise anything it will be better not to promise anything do not promise to do something that you might not do it will be better not to promise anything so pretty much don't let your mouth make you to sin don't let your mouth put you in a cage learn to talk less listen more right listen more speak less hallelujah and then verse 6 says don't let your mouth make you sin i didn't even know that was the next thing that was coming up <laughs> and i just said it right verse 6 the nlt version it says don't let your mouth make you sin and don't defend yourself hey my god i like this part he said don't let your mouth make you sin and don't defend he said don't defend yourself by telling by telling the temple messenger that the promise you made was a mistake oh my god <laughs> <laughs> if they don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger or the man of God or the woman of God that the promise you made was a mistake he said that will make God angry wow and he might wipe out everything you have received oh my God it turns to a curse by going to say woman of God the promise I made was a mistake god will be so angry and the bible said he might wipe out everything you have achieved how can you say it was a mistake when you promised it yourself do you want to lose everything you got this thing is deep wow somebody said i promised 50k to a local church years back in aid of buying church land but i have never been able to give you need to go back to them and tell them that you're not running or avoiding them it's because you never had it at least you talk to them but don't run and hide wow let's read that again verse 6 the new living translation ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6 it says don't let your mouth make you sin and don't defend yourself well i made a mistake i didn't plan to say it they made me say it you know like don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger meaning by telling the man of god woman of god that the promise that you made was a mistake I did. I, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh. Uh. He said that will make God angry, and He might wipe out everything you have achieved. Wow. So this fasting that we're fasting for breakthrough in every area of our life. Some people, they are probably suffering because of verse 6 they let their mouth make them sin and now everything has been wiped out wow let's post that in the easy translation verse 6 it said only say things that are true you should not say to the priest the promise that i made was a mistake that will make god angry god might destroy the things that you have worked for so because of one foolish thing i did i might lose everything i got 
Oh my God, this is serious. I'd rather not make any promise. I'd rather not say anything. Please, I don't want to lose what I got. <laughs> you know that? I'd rather keep quiet. If I can't do it, then I, I can't say it. I'm not going to be so desperate that I'll be running my mouth. You understand? I'm not going to be so desperate that I'll be running my mouth, making promises. Woman of God, if you pray for me and I get my job, oh, I have a lady. I have a lady that once messaged me to pray for her to get a job. I think she hadn't worked for years. She said that woman of God, when, when God gave me this job, my first fee check, I will give it to him. Like she's the one just saying all this. She's typing all this. I didn't ask her to give. Normally when they ask for prayer, I just type a prayer and that's it. But some of them will talk. If, if God do this thing for me, I, I will give him my first fee check. I will pay tithes every month or every week as I get paid. Like they will just be tight. They will just be talking. <laughs> so now guess what? I didn't even know this lady got a job. Like months later, she messaged me, woman of God, the time you had prayed for me, I, I got the job. And now, um, I'm sorry I didn't test it. I didn't come back to give you a testimony. But um, now I'm, I'm about to get in trouble. They're lying against me at the job and they're about to fire me. Please pray for me. So I now scrolled up to the conversation that I had with her. And I saw how she had made some promises. I said, um, so you got the job. You said you were going to give God your first paycheck. Did you do that? She said, no, woman of God, I had a lot of things, you know, like I hadn't worked for years. So when I got my first paycheck, I needed to buy um, new work clothes. I needed to do, you know, like it's like all of a sudden she had to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> but I'm looking at your message from your chat that you chat. Like I didn't ask you to make these promises. You made these promises on your own. She said, I needed to buy new work clothes and I needed to do, and this is normal. Normally when you work, you're going to buy clothes for work because you have not worked in a while. You're going to probably need money for gas in your car to drive to work. You're going to need money for lunch money. Yeah, all these things, you're going to need money for them, but you were the one that made this promise. So now you are, you are, you are thinking, should I, should I give it or should I just take care of this? It's a big test though, you know? I said, okay, how about tithes? Have you been paying? And she said, no, woman of God, I had so much debt. You know, so when I started working, I just wanted to clear all my debt. I'm so sorry. I said, that's why you're already getting in trouble at your job. This is God dealing with you. God gave you months to fulfill what you had said and you did not. She said, I'm so sorry. Please pray for me. I promise if this job, if they don't fire me. I said, um, you're still promising again. Like this lady keeps promising. Like why you keep promising stuff? The last promise you made, you haven't even fulfilled it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So sometimes people don't even remember their promise until they get in trouble. Or until they're about to lose something. And then they will come back and come back to their senses. He said that will make God angry. God might destroy the things that you have worked for. And then the verse 7 it says, Talk is cheap, like daydreams and other useless activities. Fear God instead. Talk is cheap. The easy translation, it says, it is silly to dream all the time. Remember that it is also silly to talk all the time. But you should obey God because he's a great God. So this message is for somebody that owes God something that they use their own mouth to promise God. Now, because I am anointed, and because God gave me this message to help you, if you are here and you know you made a promise and at that time you could keep it, but right now you can't and you want to be free from that promise, type me. I want to pray for you to free you from that vow that you made, from that promise. 
so that God can have mercy on you. Because maybe you promised to give a um, thousand dollars, I don't know. And at that time, you had the money, but right now, <laughs> you don't have a thousand. And even if you have to save money, it will take a while to get it. And sincerely, you don't have it. I want to pray for you so that God can have mercy on you. And we can dissolve the vow. And you will learn from this. That will be your breakthrough. And Father will visit you and tell you you are forgiven. Hallelujah. Wow, look at all these people. So you guys made a lot of promises at that time. And now you don't have it. Wow. And you want to start afresh with God. You want to start afresh with God. And this time you will be very careful. Hallelujah. So your deliverance is about to take place right now. Wow, look at all these people. Oh my God. And if it's somebody that you can still talk to, even after I pray for you, you can go tell them that I'm sorry I wasn't avoiding you or I was avoiding you, but you know, God brought this up to me and God has forgiven me. I'm sorry I couldn't keep to it. At that time I had, but I didn't do it. And now I don't have it. Please forgive me. You can still talk to the person. Because some people probably made plans based on the promise. I'm talking if there was like a pastor or something. They probably made arrangement based on what you promised. And they're probably still thinking you will bring it. But you can go tell them the truth. Hey, it is what it is. Father, I love you so much. Wow. So this is deliverance for hundreds of people. Wow. Maybe that's why your finances just got tight like this. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. You're about to be free. It's like something heavy will just leave you right now. Yes. Oh, my God. It's a lot of people, though. Are you guys seeing the screen? I'm trying to click as many names as possible. You see our God is so loving. And our God knows. And somebody here, I'm hearing that this thing has been bothering you. Like you're not really a wicked person. You really want to keep to this promise. But you don't have it. And every time you think about it, it's been bothering you. You cry about it sometimes too. And God has heard you. That's why God brought this message. So that you can be free from that trap, that cage. And you can receive your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Even as I'm saying this, I'm just tingling all over my body. It's like God is just wanting to help you out. For your own mess up. And God wants to help you out. Father, we love you so much. We love you. Oh, we will love the Lord. Amen. I'm going to go to the studio later today. I'm going to do some worship. So after this video, I'll go back. I'll go to the studio later. So we can worship God. Hallelujah. I'm trying to put all of you on the screen. You know, God told me he has a lot of angels watching you guys, monitoring your activity during this fast. So as I'm putting your name on the screen, do you know it's showing on, like, on the screen in heaven? <laughs> God is watching your name. God, that's see as I'm clicking it. Because some people, because of pride, they won't speak up, but they need to be free. Wow, this is a lot of you. My God. Oh my God. No wonder. <laughs> you guys seen it. Both the ones on YouTube, on Facebook, we're on, well, live on Instagram too. Princess Belemzi. Wow, wow, wow. Somebody said me times 100. <laughs> Are you serious? It is well. Thank you, Father. That's why you have to watch all the videos. Because say you were not on this and we are doing this, you will not know that something major like this is being taken care of and you will miss out of it. But if you go back and you watch it, you can take part in this. I want all of you to stand up. I want to pray for you. Those of you that that as typing me, 
that for some reason you can't fulfill that vow you're not in the position to do it so you want god to have mercy on you and cancel the vow so you can start afresh with him because now you know better you didn't know it was a sin before to do this just stand up and take one minute and talk to god father thank you for this word i was ignorant when i made this vow i did not know i'm sorry please forgive me just talk to god take one minute out and then i'll pray for you and that demon will go the demon that is tormenting you because of this will leave you god wants to free you hallelujah just take one minute pray to god sincerely if you have to cry to him you cry to him god knows your heart Maybe he reminded you when you had and you didn't do it. Just ask for mercy. Our father is so loving and merciful. He will forgive you because he brought this message because of you. Look at the number of people. I'm still clicking names. So as you can see, you're not the only one. It's a lot of people. Wow. Oh my God. So it's, like, it's going to be like a weight will be lifted off of you. Take your time. Pray. When you're done, I will now pray for you, all of you. Mass prayer. Thank you, Father. Wow. This is a lot. You made a vow to God. You made a promise to God. And you didn't keep it. And now you're in no position to keep to it. And you just want God to forgive you so you can start afresh with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's why I tell you, listen to me when I preach. Because the word of God itself is deliverance. You get to learn things you didn't know before. And now you know better. Now you will be careful when you're in the presence of God. And it's not just for God. It's also for, for friendship, for anyone. You're not just going to keep promising them things that you can't do. Because they're going to make plans based on what you promise. And now you're going to disappoint them. And it's not going to be good for you. All right. I want to pray for everybody. And when I pray this prayer, a lot of you will find yourself yawning. That's a release. That means something is leaving. Something is leaving. You will even sleep well today. It will be like something heavy just left you. Because that's a sign that God has forgiven you. And that vow, that promise has been canceled. And if it's somebody close to you, you still need to talk to them. Just talk to them. All right? Hallelujah. So close your eyes. Put your right hand on your forehead. That's how you tap. That's how I know you are connected. And I'm going to send an angel to stand beside everyone. So as I pray, they will touch you. Father, thank you for giving us this message. Thank you for the rebuke. Thank you for the, for the learning, the training, for the message. Because a lot of your children were not aware of this. Father, for everyone that is standing with their hand on their head, that has promised or made a vow to you but could not fulfill it, Father, now they know better have mercy on them forgive them bring them out of that cage that their mouth has put them in in the name of jesus you with your hand on your forehead i release you from that vow i free you from that promise that you made god that you're not able to fulfill from now on you are free from it you are released from it you don't have to do it anymore from now on you are starting afresh with god in the name of jesus and now you demon that has put them in that cage, in that body, that has put chains on them because of this. I command you to release them now. Out of them, the name of Jesus, back to hell where you belong. And whatever it is that you have taken from them as a result of this mistake or as a result of this act, I command total restoration. In the name of Jesus, I release your finances. I speak breakthrough over your life and over every area of your life that needs breakthrough, receive it now in the name of Jesus. May the love of God fill your heart. Father, show them that you have forgiven them. Everybody, God say, begin to pray. For those who speak in tongues, speak in tongues. Something is going to happen. Some of you will feel like electric shock coming through your body. Some of you will be feeling chills. Is God showing you that you are forgiven, you are loved. 
you are forgiven you are loved pray in the holy ghost pray in english whichever way you know how to pray pray in your language god is pouring out his love in your heart right now you have suffered enough for that mistake that you made and now god is restoring you god is giving you a hug god is showing that he has forgiven you. Rande bagazute pre e kondio anaha repelehe. I see angels touching people. Rapanti na makas kele groto. I see somebody you are shaking like shaking. I see somebody you are sweating like your forehead. You are sweating. Makaria and tore pre e kadusa. Imari andia andahara bosha. Chains have been broken. <laughs> Chains have been broken. Ha. <laughs> people have come out of cages. These are cages that you put yourself in and you did not know but because of the word of god today you have learned and god has forgiven you god has released you from that vow from that promise you are free in the name of jesus and you are not just free you are restored you have received breakthrough and all that you have lost god is giving it back to you receive peace freedom in jesus name amen Oh my God, I feel the strong presence of God. Oh my God, some people are just crying and praying. It's like they can't help it. God is pouring out his love. Like you will feel so loved in your heart. You will feel like you just got a hug from God. God has taught you the right way today. And God has forgiven you. And you will not make that mistake again ever. And if you have friends who always make promises or vows, to God without thinking because of this message you will teach them the right way you will quote the scripture hallelujah oh my god I feel so good <laughs> oh my god tell us how you feel I saw somebody shaking a lot somebody said there's heat everywhere I saw somebody you were just shaking like shaking shaking wow wow and then somebody, your promise was you're going to go, you're going to be feeding orphans or you're going to go and God has forgiven you. Ah, my God. See, somebody said, thank you, Apostle. I was shaking seriously. I could see somebody shaking a lot. Hallelujah. Because you are free. Wow. Somebody say, I feel light. Oh, my God. Baba. Baba. I share. It means thank you, Lord. That's right. Yes, Lord. I just want to say thank you. People are yawning, shaking. Look at deliverance. Oh. Father will visit you guys. Eh? <laughs> uh, oh, look at that. Look at that. I want to say you. Baba. Oh.
You would feel so like somebody says she saw a vision. Chains were broken, cages were open. This worship the Lord. And some people were giving money. Oh my God. This worship, they do things to me. Wow, look at that. People are even seeing visions. Hey, Father. This is just day one. And God is addressing you. Everybody just pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody he had a ton at the enemy, and a man. He had a friend to the Bazoot Tarabosia. Rator and Padia Tarababa Baba Baba. He had a Bosia. He had a Bosia. He had a Bosia. A Cardia no Bosia. Hey, a Cotara Prata Prata Prata. Hey, God, we love you. Somebody said she felt something moving in her head, like something was moving in her head. That means there was really something that was blocking you, and it's gone right now. Hey, my God. Right. I don't I want you to speak in tongue wherever you are. behind the line and God was showing me that this prayer that we just did that I did for you guys I suddenly saw people crossing the line like coming like there was this long line like this people were here but after this prayer that I prayed for you guys people were crossing the line but I saw some people that were still left behind and he said those are people that have refused to I don't know if they have refused to accept their wrong or that that don't believe. I don't know, but I saw a lot of people. There, it's like there was this line. You know how they have this um, 
Oh my God, you know how they have the borders like from Mexico and United States? There's like a, I saw people, they were able to cross, they were able to, to now walk past it, but I saw some people that didn't. So if this message, maybe you came on late, you did not know what the message was about, you need to go back and listen, or maybe you didn't think it applied to you. Maybe God is saying it applies to you because I saw some people that did not pass the line. They were still standing back there, meaning there are some people that the curse is not broken yet. Maybe they were not paying attention. I don't know. So please, when I'm done, rewind back and tap into the prayer or listen to what the message was before you tap into the prayer. So you, because I saw a bunch of people pass the line, but I saw some people still standing there. They didn't go. And you don't want to be that person. It's like you, you crossed the border. It's like you, you crossed it. You are now free to move. It's like you were just standing there before, but now you can move. Do you see what I'm saying? Wow. This is amazing. Wow, and I'm suddenly so hot, like sweating, like I don't know. It's like something powerful, powerful anointing. My God, sweating seriously. Oh my God. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. God is amazing. Something has happened. I think this is a major breakthrough for a lot of people. And now you don't have to worry about that vow again because God himself has lifted it off of you. Right? You are free. You are free. You are free. Yeah, you are free. You are free. Yeah, you are dance like a winner money. I'm dancing like a winner money. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, shout hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, what are my dance videos there? Let me show you. And you're not even sure or maybe you didn't tap into the prayer I don't know well please go and do it when I'm done rewind and go back to it wow this is a major breakthrough major in fact I think we should dance come on now let's dance let's dance let's dance hallelujah 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 shout hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Hey!
Praise the Lord. That's like a winama. One of you sent me a message. He said, my promise was to this ministry, Apostle. And I heard clearly that it's okay for now. So I told her to send a video. So I believe during the prayer, God told her it's okay for now. So I don't know what the promise was, but I told her to send a video. So God spoke to a lot of you guys and you feel that release, you feel free. And I did see people passing over a line that is like a demarcation, but now they were free to go. Wow, powerful, powerful, hallelujah. So some of you will begin to experience breakthrough, open doors, hallelujah. And God is going to touch many other things, right? He's going to touch many other things as we go. This is just day one. Just pay attention. I'm led by the Spirit. I hear from God. So as God tells me, I will speak up. Meanwhile, today is my mother's birthday. And I believe Juliet did this because she's the one that does these things. Princess Belemdi Ministry News, right? Is it happy birthday, prophetess? Deborah, Princess Belendi Ministry School of Power, celebrate Prophetess Deborah of Billy's birthday. Happy birthday. Somebody wish my mom happy birthday. I was planning to really have fun with my family, my mom, my siblings, you know, enjoy her cake today. Not knowing that two days ago, God was going to announce. <laughs> and you know, God was going to announce. A fasting and me being obedient to my father and my mom is fine with it she's okay she's okay that's right is a happy birthday mama mommy i don't know where you are she's fasting with us too are you watching or are you sleeping my mom has been so supportive of me and you know she's like from day one of this ministry she's been my biggest um cheerleader She's been the one helping me share my videos up to now. Even that group that you guys see, that um, Holy Ghost Fellowship with um, Apostle Princess Belinda, she created that group. She was telling me, she's God is telling her to create a group. I said, no, no, no. She said, please, I, I have to create this group. Then later, when the group started growing, I, I started to like the group. <laughs> so my mom has been helping me a lot in this ministry. She's been there with me. From day one, if you are led to bless her, because some of you are asking for information. I did make a post and I put her information. If, you, if you're led to give her a gift, don't send it to me, please. Give it directly to her. Her cash app is a dollar sign, braid, B-R-A-I-D. And her PayPal is paypal.me slash Deborah a Billy. And I already give her my gift. Some of you already sent things to her. She's so happy. My mom is very humble and simple. She doesn't really, she doesn't want too much. She's, she doesn't even like all this celebration. She would rather be, I'm the one that is always, my mother, my dad, they don't even want to be noticed. Even in my program, they like to sit in the back somewhere. <laughs> you guys saw that. And this one we just did on Sunday. My mom and dad were sitting all the way in the back. Yeah, they were sitting all the way in the back. Before God now um, brought them out. And we started talking about, you know, how they met and everything. And God made me appreciate them. And I blessed them with money. And God made me do that. That was necessary, I believe. You guys watch it, right? How many of you watch that? You guys watched that it was touching and then at some point i was crying and my mom was crying my dad was crying i actually have a picture where my mom was wiping my tears oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we're gonna post the picture soon guys <laughs> i like that picture i even hugged her oh man this is so cute oh man I was crying like a cry baby. And she was she was wiping my tears. Chai. I hugged her. Oh.
These people are very, very wonderful. My parents, mm. they make this work easy for me. I'm telling you, you know, easy. This work, you see, I'm telling you, guys, ministry is not easy. Oh. When you now have a supportive family, it makes it even better. You can't do this alone. Mm. Ministry, no easy at all. I'm telling you now. I'm going to try to show some pictures. Baba, Baba, I should. Oh my God, I like this song. Eh? I was in the studio now. Now, worship. I want to show some pictures. Some pictures from, we have a lot of pictures from that program. You guys look so good because I paid somebody to. To smoothing our faces. You know what I'm saying? I paid somebody to smoothen our face because my workers, they don't know how to use Photoshop to smoothen. So I told Tokwe, I said, well, if the voodoo priest can have Photoshop and smoothen his face, how about me? Who's we'll have the real God? We need some Photoshop in this place. <laughs> I said, I said, me, who's we'll serving the real God? Me will have money to do this. Man, I need to hire somebody to make these pictures nice. <laughs> I think you guys are lying. <laughs> if the false prophets know how to brush up their picture and look all, all cute with their fake with their fake queen of co co coast eyes and everything, how about me? We all need to do something. <laughs> I have to pay somebody. So the person made all of you look so good. I'm telling you, these pictures are so nice. Don't worry, we're gonna post it. <laughs> I think you were lying. I beg, we need quality for for this ministry. So the pictures came out like, wow, they look so good. I said, I'm not a false prophet, and I should be able to to spend some money on this stuff. Try. It. When I look at some of these pictures, I say, try. It. I need to get back to juicing. I don't fat, oh my God. I have gained weight. <laughs> oh my God. I said, wow, Father, what is going on? <laughs> you guys, one thing about me, is I play too much. I make fun of myself. So if you try to make fun of me, it's not going to work because I already made fun of myself. That's how life is. Make fun of yourself. Nobody can use anything against you because you already make you already made fun of yourself. So what is there? <laughs> oh my god! So let me show some of the pictures here, right? I want to show some of the pictures here. This is the one with me, my mommy, my daddy, and my son, Michael. Wow, look at that. And this is me and my parents, my dad and my mom. Don't you guys see how the white looks so good? We look so good in white now. That's why I just love the white. Oh, look at me and my mother. Wow, this is so cute. My mom looks so young. She's actually, who can guess her age? She doesn't like hiding her age. She likes to say her real age. Who can guess how old my mother is? Huh? Don't you see how we look fresh? Look at that picture now. She's 64 years old. Yay! And I'll be 41 in September. And she just turned 64. So I guess she was 23 when she had me. This was when I was crying that time. And, you know, I made all of them get so emotional and everything. I got that, that time was a nice segment. And then after the whole crying thing, we started laughing and everything. That was a good moment. Though. Don't you see how I'm looking fresh? And I'm hugging them. I just know how to bring my parents, bring fun to this family. I'm telling you. I'm the life of this party, man. And me and my mom hugging. Oh, man. Oh, mommy, mommy. <laughs> ah! Oh, my God. Eh? 
mother and daughter hugging. This is where I saw. I say, wow, I don't fat. Oh, I need to lose weight. My God, Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> How can I even be bigger than my own mother? This was when I was crying. And my mom was looking at me like, it's okay, it's okay, my daughter, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay, don't cry. Oh, she was wiping, oh, I like this one. Don't you guys like this one? Mother wiping her daughter's tears. Wow, look at that, look at that one. I really like this picture. The mother is wiping her daughter. Because before you became a woman of God, you were her daughter, right? And me coming to my dad crying. You guys watched that. That was a very touchy moment. It was a powerful, powerful segment. And then back to our hugging again. So today is her. She's always been supportive. And it's really helped me. So today is her birthday. Even though I planned that I was going to enjoy time with her, God wanted the fast to start on her birthday. And when God tells me to do something, I don't think twice about it. You know? So she's even getting more gifts today because people have been sending her birthday gifts since morning. Because everybody, a lot of people are fasting with us. So. And when she told me and she said that, she told my younger sister not to bring the cake today. That she should buy the cake on um, on our third day of our fast. Today is what? Tuesday, right? So our third day will be Tuesday, Wednesday, th Thursday. When we break at 6 o'clock, she said that's when she would like to cut her cake. Because I was thinking she would want to do it at midnight or something. Because we could eat till, before, uh, till 6 o'clock, right? But she said, no, that birthday will always come. But this is God. We have to obey God. I was like, that is my mama right there. So for those of you doing ministry that your parents are not really supportive, may God touch their heart so they can begin to support you because it will be easier. Ministry is not, ministry is not easy. It's harder when you don't even have support from family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is anybody here in ministry? It's harder when you don't get support from family. Sometimes you feel like quitting. But when you have your support, like your mom, dad, brother, sister, family supporting, it's easier because people out there are already persecuting you, calling you fake and all that. It's better if the family members at least support you. <laughs> so for me, my mom has been very supportive. And she deserves to be celebrated. So may God give our long life good health, favor, and breakthrough in every area of our life. In the name of Jesus, God is going to do many things for her. And that's why he told me to tell her to sow that $300 seed a day before her birthday. And guess what? Thank God she sowed that seed. Because that evening when she went out, she said she was just driving and a guy on bicycle that looked like homeless guy or so, with phone, he was on the cell phone. He he hit her car, it, like he scratched her car. The new car I got her. You guys remember? I got a car for myself and a car for her. He scratched the car, and she said the guy was like, "Sorry, coming to us." She said she didn't come out of the car. <laughs> Meanwhile, God had told her not to take the normal road she takes. She took a different road. So maybe the enemy was planning accident or something. I don't know. So maybe she so, so she shouldn't see her 64th birthday. We don't know, but my mom didn't come out of her car. She drove her. <laughs> she said she was going to pay to fix it. That what can the man do for her? He was trying to say, sorry, ma'am, sir. She said, no, she's not coming out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So God saved that from whatever it was. And talking about car, let me show that car video again so people can tap into the prayer for the car because some people, when they tap, they come back with testimony. God told me um, some months ago to get myself a car and also get one for my mom because this woman of God did not have a car. 
and I'm busy buying cars and buying things for people. And my mom's car was 20 years old. But God told me, go ahead, get one for you and for herself. And guess what? It was paid off in full. Hey, Father. Before we used to pay monthly for car, but God blessed us. We got double, two cars in one day. Paid off. I I paid for the two. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Don't hate. Don't believe and tap. Let God do it for you. Hallelujah. So let me show it. Hello, everyone. God bless you. This is uh, the woman of God. Evangelist Princess Belemzi, yay! So God told me it's time for me to get myself a car. As you guys know, I've been blessing everyone, blessing people, you know, paying rent for people, giving people money, but I have never bought anything for myself. So God says I should get one car for myself and one for my mother. And here you go. This is mine. Come on now. The Toyota 4Runner 2021. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 <laughs> and this is my mom's a Toyota with the Highlander 2021. Hey. Learning some features <laughs> this car before I drive up. It's yes. so cute. Oh, so cute, so cute, so cute. Praise the Lord. All right, Hallelujah. let's let's look. At, you wanna? We've already we already have the inside of it. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's look inside. And this is my. Come on now, come take a look inside. This is my ride, my nice ride. We are in the VIP area because you know we are VIP. When you're in Christ, you are VIP. Very cute, very nice. Brand new, just how many miles? Like seven miles. Seven miles only. So it's just fresh. Fresh. Enough space for when we're traveling, like on a road trip. We're gonna have a lot of space for our trip. It's a leather. I think leather interior, right? Yes, very Beautiful. nice. Leather. Yes, yes, so this woman of God, this woman, this woman of God deserves it because this woman of God works so hard, always online preaching, but God said from now on I'm going to be on the go, and I don't have a car for on the go, so yay, praise the Lord, for all of you that are praying to God for a car, tap from this one, receive your car in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't hate. Don't hate. Appreciate God. When you work for God, God has a way of blessing you. Seek here first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he will give you everything you need. At the right time, if it's a car, you will get it. If it's a house, you will get it. If it's a husband, at the right time, in due time, these things shall be added unto you. Right? I hope you tapped into that prayer. Let me show you some more videos of the car that my worker Alexis did. And at the back, Thomas, you don't have trunk. There's no trunk sign. Yeah, I don't have trunk. So we can open. Yeah, so my own trunk is bigger than your own. Mommy, open this thing now. Hey, open that. Hey, hey. <laughs> Automatic. <laughs> so she had it right now. Oh, oh, no, this is not enough for you. This is what we are talking about. Wait, wait. wait. But for grocery shopping, you have to put the seat down. Yeah, no problem. I, I'm, I'm handling this down. Do you, want, do, you want, do you want us to teach you how to put it down? I know how to put it down, but I know you want to put it down. Your trunk, you always go shopping. Yeah, I know what I know how to put it down. I know my other part. They can help you now. That I know. Anybody where they help me, but I will not break anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't break anything. No, you don't break anything. Make sure you don't break anything. Daddy, you know she shops for 
Sorry, Alexis. This is good. Yes, yes. I prefer this. Because yes. nobody's going to sit on this with glass. Nobody now. That isn't this better. Even in my car, nobody. How many of us? So if we're traveling, that's eh? enough. Wait, so if we're traveling, that's enough. Wait, 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 that's enough. Are you taking oh, you have the card? You have the card? No. Our student is not far from the road. Daddy, so you're gonna be sitting down. Oh, hey, I want I won't mess up my dad. the true nature of God is no dryness at all. No dryness with God. And with God, even when you have the money, you're not in a rush to get it. It was It's even God that will tell you it's time to get one. Because I could have gotten a car since I started preaching in 2016. I didn't have a car. I gave my car to God in 2016. I didn't have a car that I got for myself till 2020. But I had the money to get one. I waited for the right time. Hallelujah. And people who have tapped into it, a lot of testimonies. Let me show some videos. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexia Ferguson. And I just want to say to God be all the glory. I thank God for this ministry. I thank God for placing me in this ministry. And I also thank God for our great Apostle Belema Abili, I love you, mommy. I thank God for your life. More grace, more power, more anointing to you. Thank you so much for all that you do for us here. I love you so much. And I love you, PBM family. Um, so I tapped into mommy, Ab 
Apostle Valema Abili's car when she received it. And God has gifted me a car. Yes, guys, a car. Here it is for my birthday. A car that I did not buy. I did not come up with a dime for this car. And I do not have any car payments for this car. Yes, guys. Hallelujah. God has gifted me this beautiful, beautiful car for my birthday. I thank God. I give God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. God is truly here in this ministry. I put that on the back, guys, so my plate's not showing, but this is the car, guys. To God be all the glory. I thank God for all that he's doing for us. Believe, guys. Tap, believe, and you shall receive in Jesus' name. Beautiful car. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. God is truly here in this ministry. To God be all the glory, guys, in Jesus' name. Love you, Apostle. Hello, woman of God. My name is Ndambo Asan. I use uh, Leo Homes on Facebook. I have a big testimony. The Lord has done it again. The devil thought he was going to, to cripple us. For the past eight months, we have been driving the same car to work, using Uber sometimes. The Lord has blessed us with the double portion. Come on, come with me, come with me. Okay. Here is the car. I have a Lexus. That's the the, the ball panel. This is the front seat. And uh, we had a uh, five seaters. But now this is the second row. And then we have the third row. That's eight seaters. From a five seater car to an eight seater car. We give God all the glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We have a TV over here on the both sides. The Lord has done it again. We give God all the glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, hello, woman of God. I'm Chimps Edofaya. I've been watching you since 2018. From the time I've been watching you, God has blessed my life. My life has changed. And my spiritual life also changed, woman of God. I want to be grateful to Almighty God I have for testimony. I was so excited yesterday when I saw it. So excited, woman of God. Uh, when you did your, your testimony, where you show your car and your motor car, and you say that we should tap in it, anyone that is looking for a car should tap in it, and I tap into that blessing with faith, and God answered my prayer. 
Yesterday, my husband bought me a car, a 2019 Nisa. I'm so excited. So that's why I'm doing this video, this testimony video. This is in the car, show the car. This is the car. This is in the car, woman of God. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's so beautiful, woman of God. Let me show outside the car. I love it, woman of God, I love it. I want to bless God. I want to give God a glory. I want to tell you, thank you, woman God, for what you're doing into our life. If you get changes into our life, I want to be thankful to the Almighty God for that. God bless me. Bless my life. That's why I'm making this video. I want to tell you, Almighty God, thank you. And those of us that are washing you, we should wash you with faith. We should have faith and wash you. We should just wash you because we are washing you. I want to bless God. So this is my video, my testimony video. Oh my God, this is the car. And I want you to say a word to bless my car. I know when you say a word, my car will be blessed by the oh God. I say thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for all you do for the kingdom of God. I truly appreciate it. I just want to tell God, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I glorify your name. I just want to be grateful to God. This is my testimony. And I will be back with more testimony. Stay connected and be blessed in this blessed ministry. This ministry belongs to God. And we are a moving tree in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, woman of God. Hello, everybody. My name is Nelly. I'm from Maryland. I just want to say thank you to Jesus. Thank you also to you, woman of God, for your prayers, your teachings. I would like to testify to the goodness of the Lord in our lives. The Lord has blessed us with a family car that we were able to pay for in full glory be to his name thank you jesus thank you woman of god god bless you more grace more anointing in jesus name thank you woman of god thank you thank you thank you amen when you see me down
excited. I'm so excited today. I'm dancing like a winner, man. I got my car, guys. I'm so excited. So we got a sound room. We got a lot of seats. We got all the bells and whistles. And to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Learning to trust God. Learning to be obedient. And I'm just so thankful to God. So thankful for all my prayer warriors. I'm so thankful for the Prince of Belinda ministry. Pouring into us. Teaching us how to love God. Teaching us how to trust God. I am just so thankful. Praise the Lord. You know, God was just giving me names of people that have testified about cars. And I was just showing them. And God said, this is going to be a breakthrough for some of you. Some of you, you've been believing God for a car. And this is your breakthrough. So receive your own car in the name of Jesus. I don't know how it's going to happen. But as you were watching, I hope you were tapping. Because some families on here that are watching, they really need cars. They need a car. Or some people really need a car. They've been believing God for one. And as you were watching, God is just showing that if he can do it for them, he can do it for you. So I'm not the only one that God has blessed. There are many other people in the ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So expect your car. Some, some people got theirs without paying a dime. Some people paid in full. But either way, yours is coming. Remember, the fast is breakthrough in every area of your life. And so some people, all they need is a car right now. So you've received. So meanwhile, while I'm here, one of you sent me... Um, one of you sent me a man that came to the studio during the time of the three days dry fasting that we did last week right the holy ghost encounter he came with his wife on one of the days and actually when they were picking they had left but somebody said she was going to pick for the wife so i don't even remember like picking for the guy but i saw this man <laughs> I saw this man send me a picture just now with one of the dresses that they picked for the wife. Because one of the ladies, the lady that came with her son, promised to get the dresses for the wife and she'll mail it to her. They'll pick it up. So I forgot totally that I was going to give the man two so we would have picked two for the man. But we didn't. But guess what? The husband sent me a picture of him wearing one of the dresses. I said, LOL, isn't that for your wife? He said, well, we have one white and the colored one. I just chose the colored. <laughs> we got it yesterday, so I put it on the first day of the fasting. So are you guys ready to see how he looks with the colored one? <laughs> That's supposed to be for his wife, but he took one. He said, no, I'm not missing out. Even though the woman I got forgot about me. This man sent me this picture just now. <laughs> <laughs> the, man, the man said she took the white I took the color <laughs> it looked like your man don't care no more he said that's what he's wearing for the first day of his fast man <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I said women you guys we got a problem guys are beginning to to like our long dresses now <laughs> <laughs> he's he's rocking his dress right there. <laughs> so before we thought it was just for women, right? But now the men are like, oh, you you guys want to get everything by yourself? No, we're ready to get out. Ah! Oh, and then the guys are taking over. <laughs> you see where it was too she had to keep the white i kept the colored one don't worry i owe you i owe you two dresses we're supposed to give you guys four because you know in the studio we gave guys i even have some pictures here <laughs> but guys we gave guys two but I, I felt so bad now when he showed me this picture because we were supposed to get two for him and two for her but we only got two for her but the man said well we 
wife, we gotta share this. I saw pictures for the guys with that the way they were holding it. As it is, men, eh? The few men in the studio, they got it. I'm gonna show you guys. It's a mantle. They believe in the anointing. They believe in the anointing. I told you guys. The first place I really gave guys um, shirts was in um, London. And dresses were in London. And these men, they, they put it around their neck. They were so happy. And a bunch of them are still with the ministry, though. A bunch of them are still watching. When, when you get a mantle from a servant of God, keep it. Save it. Don't use it anyhow. Use it when you need it. But some of you, I think you wear it every day. The thing will get old, though. Don't worry, I'll keep giving. I don't have a problem giving. So I'm going to show you guys pictures <laughs> of some of the guys because we have to make them take pictures of the, the dresses. We didn't have much people in the studio because, you know, we were selected. But they, they took pictures. You guys remember Sherwin, right? He took one white and one color. We saw him with picture. Sharon actually sent a picture. You guys remember Sharon sent a picture of him wearing the white? This was just like a few days ago. Let me see. I'm going to show that picture. And then we invited him on the video, right? <laughs> so this white that he has on his shoulder, he said he wore it to sleep. Oh, God. God is bringing a lot of men to this ministry. I'm telling you. You guys will soon see something will happen. Very soon in programs, women will not see dress to take again. That's Sherwin in his white dress, the one that was on his shoulder. Somebody clap for this man. That's right. He said, when he wore the dress, man, he, he slept well. He was feeling the presence of God and everything. My God. Because he believes. And then that's the second guy that God, he got um a, a white and a colored one. That's the one that came with his um with his mother. This this is serial, so God is up to something. <laughs> God is doing something. Oh my god. God is doing something, guys. I still have one more. One more man that came. Because I made sure the men all got two dresses. That's why I feel bad for this man. That shared the one with his his wife, because he should have gotten his own by himself. And this other man got too, right? You guys remember this man? He came with his wife. That's the one that encouraged his wife to come and speak up about the false prophet. See how they are happy receiving their mantle from the woman of God. How many of you guys are watching that you cannot wait to get yours? And then this was when I first gave dresses in my program in London. This was in two thousand and. I think this is 2019 or two, yeah, yes. Look at the men; they put it around their neck. It's a mantle. It could have been an handkerchief. It could have been a dress. Yeah. And the other day, I was showing you guys a bunch of dresses. I haven't removed them from here. They are still here. I showed you some of the new ones I got. Right. They are still in this room. I didn't remove them yet. I will show you guys some new dresses. Some new dresses. They are all here. I didn't remove them yet. I bought. I ordered some more for when I have another program. Maybe my birthday. Or I don't know. But I want one of the days everybody will wear long dresses. Even the white. One of the days everybody will wear long dresses white that look like the one that I have. So we'll all look like angels. So I'm going to order some more white. I actually have a bunch of white. I think there was a time I, I made a video showing you guys that I ordered 500 white dresses. Where is that video? Where do I have that video? I had made a video saying that I ordered 500 white dresses. Does anyone remember? Wow. I still have a bunch. I still have a bunch. You know me, I'm generous, right? I am generous because God has blessed me. When God blesses you, you bless people. Stop being stingy. The more you bless, the more God gives you. I'm looking for it. 
I know I had this video when I received. Oh man, I can't find it. I can't find it. But I have some, but I'll order some more so that everybody will just wear the long white that I wear. So it will all be like a bunch of angels. Holy. I love white program. Some people say that's our uniform in this ministry. <laughs> oh my God. I just like white. I like white. I just like white. Like, look at this one where we took the picture with the vindication book. Don't you guys see how they all look? This was the last fast thing we did. All looking good, pure white, like angels. Look at that. Look at that. And they all have their vindication book. If you want yours, go get it at vindicationbook.com. Get your book if you're going to be a part of this ministry so you understand what this woman of God went through and how God saved her. And it's so powerful. We always read it. We, we read it once in a while when I'm talking. I might refer to it. The hardcover is $19.99. And the paperback is just $13.99. So you need to get a copy as well. So now I want to go to the next thing. I want to show this video. And then I'll explain this to you guys. Hello. Good afternoon, Apostle. Good afternoon, PBM School of Power. I just want to testify during yesterday what God did for me through the prayer of Apostle Princess Belen, Apostle Billy Bellerman, our mom in Lord. So, yesterday when she was online, she finished preaching. So, uh, a, a video popped up to my Facebook page and I had a strong leading to send it to her. It was concerning what maybe Apostle was asking God for confirmation. I don't know, but I knew it was a message for me to pass across. So I obeyed and I sent the video to her. And so the link God took over me, started speaking through, speaking through my mouth. And it was just like Apostle Nas said, it was a confirmation for me. So because of I obey, she prayed for me. And I know that prayer she prayed for me was not just ordinary prayer. I knew it was coming from my heart when she prayed that prayer for me. So I received it with open heart. So why that same yesterday, towards in the evening, there's a lady in our ministry that God used to bring message to me. Then she came, she called me and said, God wants me to come online to speak in tongues for just one hour. And other, she told me other assignment God also gave to me to do. So he said, but I should do that one first. first. So I obey. I came online yesterday night and I obeyed speaking tongues for just one hour. Then I woke up, I went to sleep. I woke up, I saw message, woman of God, Juliet, blessed me with $64.37. So I was amazed. So I was amazed. I knew all the prayer was coming from the blessing was coming from obeying the apostle and the prayer the apostle prayed for me and I'm during that also prayer during when apostle said we should sow for woman of god ashley for deliverances to set her free and her family i also sowed a seed towards it so i just want to give god all the glory for this thank you jesus Thank you, Apostle, for your prayer. I know that prayer you prayed for me was genuinely from your heart because the presence of God I felt when I, you typed that message for me. I knew that prayer was coming from your heart. I just want to give God all the glory. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, man of God, Julie. I give you all the glory. So you God be all the glory. Shalom. Praise the Lord. So yesterday, the moment I got offline, he sent me a video. I was talking to my mom and he sent me a video. And, you know, and around that time, God was talking to me about, you know, these false prophets. Because yesterday, God had given me a message to preach yesterday. I don't know if you guys remember where he had said that people need to separate themselves from evil people. That that was the final warning. I don't know if you guys remember that. False prophets and all of that. So he sent me a video that I had watched before. A Nigerian movie. And he, he told me. He said woman of God. 
let me see i'm gonna read it so i don't say it another way he said that it's a good afternoon apostle more grace ma i don't mean to disturb you ma or offend you i saw this video on my facebook page i watched it and it's similar to what you went through and about fake pastor and i have a strong feeling and leading to send it to you i don't know why maybe god is trying to pass a message to you that's why i'm just sending it to you even as i'm sending it to you now i'm i'm shaking because i don't want to grieve your spirit so i said god bless you so i had watched the movie before but i wanted to watch that particular part he cropped apparently that part is where a pastor was trying to refer this man to another man so-called bishop or something but this pastor is a, a holy man of god so when he saw that bishop he saw the demon that he's serving and he started running and that fake bishop tried to do some voodoo to him so that he could get into accident and everything and he did get into an accident but god saved him there was no scratch and these people were celebrating thinking he was dead and then it's just about what i've been talking about with false prophet judgment time kind of thing praise the lord he said repent before it is too late because what judgment is at hand the word judgment is at hand it's a message god can use even a mess a, a movie to pass on a message <laughs> for youtube folks youtube folks are not watch the movie because this movie i think it has like copyright or something so for that reason they stopped it but god wanted me to show it for a reason it's passing on a message so we're gonna we're gonna upload the video later on youtube let's see okay You see how this this YouTube people there? <laughs> they remove the video, so everybody has to probably come on Facebook to watch. But God wanted me to show that because right after He sent me that video, right after He sent me that video, we received a phone call. Somebody said we received a phone call. Like a few minutes after I watched that video, a phone call came. And it was when I told him what happened that we got a phone call. That was when he started speaking in tongues. And I told him that for obeying God to send me that video, that God will do something for him or something. And that's when he said he got the assignment and he got blessed because God told him to send me the video and he did that video is exactly what I had been doing exposing false prophets if you see the way that man attacked the way that man attacked that man and caused an accident now you know how I have been getting a lot of attacks because I was obeying God, exposing false prophets. In fact, somebody on YouTube, before the video went blank, she said, oh my God, I watched that yesterday and I also wanted to send it to you, mama. I was even led to send you a seed to thank you again. 
I screenshotted this comment. She said she watched the video and she wanted to send it to me like she had a leading to send it to me too. And she was even led to send me a seat to thank me again. Why is she thanking me again? Because now she understands the job that I was doing for over a year, exposing false prophet. This man had not even exposed that false bishop. This man just saw that this was evil. And just from seeing, look how, look how they, they attacked him. Look how they attacked him. Look how they attacked him. I told you guys, every time I was on here, talking about the false prophet and exposing it, I had something moving on my head. I had a lot of attacks because these people are voodoo priests. These people are not of God. You see how they were conjuring? That's their own prayer. That's their own fasting. So why me I'm here? They are not just attacking me. They are also attacking my members. They are attacking you guys. And we did it for over a year. Did you guys see that God saved us? God saved me. Somebody said she was led to send me a thank, thank you offering. This man has not even started exposing them. They're already wanting to kill him. But I was coming here every day for one year plus. We were mocking them. Somebody said that's why. Somebody said that's why in vindication. It says no one can survive them unless God is with them. This is a clear example. <laughs> and this is just one man. Not to talk of us that we were exposing a whole lot of people. Not just one man. We were exposing a whole lot of people. Not just one. It says judgment time. And yesterday, God made me come online. He made me come online to come and tell people to separate themselves from darkness. That that was the final warning. God said, "This is the final warning." You guys remember? And I said there was a man of a man of God that his spiritual father in Nigeria is evil, and this spiritual father has other spiritual sons. And this particular man of God, God said that. Unless he disconnects himself from that evil spiritual father, he will go down with him. I came online yesterday and I was saying this. I preached this message. I even read a scripture for you guys. The moment I finished watching that video, talked about it with my mom, she went upstairs. In the next few minutes, less than five minutes, she ran down coming back, telling me, because God said, disconnect from these false prophets. Disconnect. My mom got a call that a man that goes to the false prophet's church, the voodoo priest church, that is from our part of town in Nigeria, that they just called her to tell him that he's dead. That he was even in church on Sunday. I said, what? All I could think of was the message 
of disconnecting this video I just watched. I couldn't believe it. And that man is the man is the, is 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 the head of men department in that church. In fact, the only man in that church that is stable. Like I knew that man before because we're from the same place. But apparently he didn't believe in me because while I was exposing the false prophet, he was still there, probably supporting him. But this thing just, I was like, what? My mom said, hey. They said this man is dead though. That he was even in church yesterday. Because this was. I said, oh my God. He was not sick. Nothing. It was later my mom came back and said that. They say a spider beat him. He got a spider bite while he was at work. I say, what? I say, Father, God has been wanting people to disconnect. And that false prophet is currently fasting. Every time that man does a fast, somebody dies. The last fasting he did, his mother died. Now he's doing another day, 14 days back. And he's all the way out of Houston. He's in New York. <laughs> it, 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 it just sounds like a sacrifice. The last fasting, it was his mom. Now this fast that they are doing, the head of men department, the only responsible man in that church. In fact, the only man in that church, really. And he's not in town so that it will be like he was not around when it happened. And I told this guy that sent me the video, I said, oh my God, we just got a call. I was shaking and the boy himself was shaking. He said, woman of God, as you're telling me this, I'm, I'm just shaking. I said, it's good that you obey God and you send me that video. God has used that video to pass on a message did you hear the message i preached yesterday disconnect from them this is the final warning and when i'm told him that we just got a call right after i watched this video you sent me i think god is up to something i don't know and boom he said he messaged me say woman of god something is happening to me he said, God spoke through my mouth and I recorded it. Let's show that part. Oh, it is where well, my son, I am message you to send you to my daughter. It is time, it is time, it is time for the false prophet all over the world. You have a two sack of what you are not ashamed, but for them to fall, I push you. I brought a video to show on your page. I give you the lady to send it to her. I have to see her because I am trying to pass a message across uh, to my daughter, Belema. I have to see her, Baba. It is well with you, my son. You have obeyed me. You have obeyed me. You are a woman, 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 Said the Lord. Did you hear that? So when I told him that we just got a call that one of our townsmen that goes to the false prophet church is dead. That's when that happened to him. Because for some reason, once he sent me that video, God said, I have to watch it. That 
That's why I didn't, I have to play it here because that's what God told me to do. God can use anything to pass a message. So how can you be fasting and anytime you fast, somebody dies. The last fasting, your mom died. Now the next fasting, the, the only man in your church that is like the leader of, he was fine. Suddenly, he just died like that. People are going to start to ask questions now. What's going on? We are fasting. Why are we losing people while we're fasting? Why are people dying? We are fasting for breakthrough for stuff. But our members dying. And you are not even around. And just yesterday, God said, this is your final warning. Disconnect from them. Separate yourself from them. We have a lot of people ask you that YouTube, sorry guys, you're going to have to come on Facebook and watch us. <laughs> Maybe God wants to bring more traffic on Facebook. I don't know. But what do you guys think? As I just finished watching that video and messaging, my mom rushed down five minutes later. Less than five minutes. Say, hey, I just got a call. We knew the guy when I was in Nigeria. My mom had sent him to see me in Nigeria when, when he visited Nigeria. But when I started exposing this man, I guess he didn't believe me. He was still there supporting him. And I remember before I started exposing the false prophet, the false prophet told me that the man always comes to tell him what people are saying about him. I don't know what he did to him, but guy's gone just like that they say he was in church on sunday he was fine it was everything see he just got bitten by a spider and that's it <sighs> but people are gonna ask question how come we fast the last time your mom died and now we're fasting and the only main guy in the church is dead. And you're not here. And he was supposed to come back from New York, but he said he missed his flight so that he won't be around. These people are evil. Huh? You guys. <laughs> people are evil. Mm. And God told that boy, you obeyed me and I will bless you. I sent you to send it to her and you did. My mother said that was a witchcraft spider. It makes no sense. It's, it's 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 a sad case but there's been a lot of warnings come out of these people come out from them come out from them you guys remember the message i preached yesterday or should i refresh your memory and the spirit of god was so heavy on me it was so heavy on me yesterday when i came live we need to we need to refresh your memory on that. God is up to something. This assignment has been for a long time and people didn't take God seriously. 
and things are beginning to happen. They're going to ask questions. If they didn't ask before now, they're going to ask after watching this video. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. And the network, Father, let your will be done. Let your children be blessed as they watch. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. I love you guys. It is well with you. So today, God wants me to come online. And be a blessing to somebody as usual. Hallelujah. Who's ready to be blessed today? He said I should call it life-changing miracle service. Meaning somebody's life will change today. Meaning there's going to be a miracle for somebody today. And who do you think it will be? Is that you? Well, I'm hopeful that it's you. <laughs> it's a life-changing miracle service. Meaning somebody's life will change today. Somebody's life will change today. God is the one who decides. And also you too, because depending on your faith and how, how much you believe in God, things can change for you overnight. You could get healed today. You could get delivered today. You could get anointed today. You could get anointed today. You could get blessed today. We don't really know. Just pray in tongue wherever you are. For like a few minutes. God is here. 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 God says people miss out a lot when they come late to church. He said people miss out a lot when they come late to church. He said because he can move even in the beginning of the service. He said those of you who go late to church, you miss out. Some people think that God will move during the time of the, the preaching. He said he can move even from the beginning of the service. So when you come late to church, you can miss out a lot. He said you need to repent and stop going to church late. You should even be there before the service starts. Unless your church is spiritually dead, then nothing happens. But if the spirit of God is in that church, there's no telling when God will move. God can move once the church opens. <laughs> can move even before the, they start even praise or worship. There's no telling when he will move. Stop going to church late. That also applies with this ministry. The moment you see that I'm gone. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the presence of God so strong today. 
I woke up from sleep and I was just feeling different. It's like, it's like I went to have an encounter with God or something. I was online earlier today. And I preached. It was an audio. And I went to sleep and woke up feeling different. Feeling like, you know, when you, you wake up feeling like you just went to receive more from God. And I just knew I was feeling different. And the moment I came on here, it's like something just activated. So you got to pay attention today so you are blessed. And so you don't miss out. God says people should stop going to church late. So if you're one of those who go to church late, you need to stop. Somebody you like waiting for when it's time for the word of God or when it's time for the prophet to prophesy. That's when you, you kind of time yourself to go around that time. You miss praise. You miss worship. You miss the announcement. You miss everything. But you wait till when it's getting close to when the man of God or the woman of God is about to speak. That's when you go. And you do it intentionally. It's not like you have things doing. You purposely wait because you feel like all the other parts of the service is boring. God is speaking to you today to stop it. Get there on time. <laughs> Get there even before the service starts. That's right. So you don't miss out. Because God can visit at any time. God can move at any time. If you're that person, this message is for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Feel free to share and invite somebody. Oh, I feel the presence of God so much. Right before I came on, when I was getting ready in the bathroom, God was speaking to me about Nigeria. He said he's about to bring some men of God down. And some of them are very high. And there's a particular one he was telling me of. He said that one has a bunch of spiritual sons that have big churches. And he spoke, he spoke particularly about one of the spiritual sons. He said that one loves him. But that one, if that one does not come out of this one, if it doesn't come out of his spiritual father, that he will go down with him. Hey, he said, it is possible that your spiritual father is not of God and you can still be of God. And he used me as an example, me and the false prophet. The false prophet works with the queen of the coast and I work for God. And God had to vindicate me and I separated myself from him. And now nobody can pair two of us together. We are not the same. So whatever happens to him, he's on his own. And God was telling me, he said that this man, this particular man that he's going to bring down soon, this one has sons that have big churches. And he said that this particular son that loves him so much for him to stay, <laughs> he has to come out from him. He has to separate himself from him. He cannot be his spiritual son anymore. God says, I am speaking to him right now. Even as I'm telling you this, I am speaking to him. <laughs> He's just thinking of how to do it, but he needs to officially announce it. He needs to remove himself from this one. Otherwise, whatever is going to happen to this one will also affect him. Thank you, Lord. And he gave me scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter six, and I'm going to read from verse 14. And this message is for everyone. You that is still attached to that person that is not of God. You that is still attached to that person that um, you find out that truly this one doesn't serve God, but because you've been announcing them as your spiritual father or as your leader, you don't know how to separate yourself. You are thinking, you know what, let me just be there because it might cause a lot of problems if I try to come out. This message is for you too. When God begins to deal with that one, you will be tied to it. You will go down with that one. So for you to be free, for you to be vindicated, for you to be separate, like not to be harmed, you have to separate. You got to remove yourself. You got to detach yourself. Because what's coming for them, if care is not taken, it will bring you down too. 
and it will be like you are supporting, like it's like you're supporting. Are you guys hearing this message? Hey, this was just yesterday, and it was when I finished this message that I got this guy sending me that video I showed you guys. Let's continue. What they are doing, even though now you know that what they're doing is not good. They are not of God. Do you understand? So now I'm going to read this from verse 14. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read it in King James and then in another translation. The King James Version says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If somebody does not serve God, if somebody serves idols or uses power from marine or snake power or any kind of power, is an unbeliever. You can't tell me you're a believer when the power that you are using is not of God. Like you can't tell me you're a believer when you get power from the marine kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying? So even though people call you a man of God, uh, papa, mama, as long as the power you are using is not from God, you are an unbeliever because you don't believe in God. You believe in that power that you're using. So it says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness and unrighteousness? Um, what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? So the one that believes in God is of light. And the ones who's using dark powers is darkness. Doesn't matter if they call you papa, mama, pastor, prophet, bishop. If you use another power in your ministry, you are darkness. Now the NLT version of verse 14, it says, don't team up. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. Let them not be your papa or your mama. You cannot team up. Now, if you don't know, it's different. But when God reveals to you, you got to get out. You got to go. You can't be together. You can't work together. You understand? It says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? Hey, my God, how can Queen of the Coast partner with the Holy Spirit? How can Lucifer partner with the Holy Spirit? Even as I'm saying this, even as I'm saying that, think about it. How can someone who uses marine, marine's powers partner with someone who is filled with the Holy Ghost? It's not going to work. One is love and one is wickedness. It says, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? We're going to crop out this part when I'm done and we're going to stream it. And you're going to watch what's going to happen. Because what I'm saying will happen. And then you will know that I said it. He said, how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? How can devil live with God? It can't work. So now let's go to verse 15. The King James Version. It says, and what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he, he that believed with an infidel? And I to say, what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? Meaning there can be no harmony. They can't, they can't work together. They can't be friends. Enemies, they're enemies. He said, what, what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? You understand, like, how can you that is full of darkness partner with me that is full of light? You're going to promote lust and sin and all that, and I'm going to be promoting holiness. So each way we're going to be offending, like we're going to be offending each other a lot. Because why you want to do lustful things, talk lustful talks, watch lustful things, I don't want to watch that. I don't want to discuss that. I don't want to, you know, do, do those kind of things. So there's not there's no harmony. We cannot we cannot like understand each other. It's not gonna work because the things you like are not the things that I like. The things you believe in 
and not the things that I believe in, the things you want to watch, and not what I want to watch. You want to watch porn, I don't want to watch that. I want to watch a movie about Jesus. So there's going to be this conflict. It's not going to work. And that's why some of you, even in your marriages, there's conflict because you love God now. Your spouse does not love God. Your spouse want to party, and you don't want to leave that life no more. So now it's like there's this conflict going on. One person still wants to enjoy the life that they used to know before this person repented. And that person is done with that life. So there's going to be bumping up heads in the house all the time. Husband wants to go party. Wife wants to fast. You see what I'm saying? So wife is light now. And husband is darkness. And there's no harmony in that marriage. It's going to be a problem. Maybe husband will start cheating. Or maybe unless the man repents, that's why you got to pray for that person. Otherwise, that relationship is not going to last. Hallelujah. Verse 16. The King James Version, he said, And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? What agreement had, as a church with a shrine? This is church. What agreement do you have with a shrine of a voodoo priest who apparently has probably buried something under his altar? or sprinkled some charms in it and you you are your own temple your own you know altar is clean pure you pray all the time fast there like these two are different this one spills blood on his altar and you you are talking holiness you respect the altar of god one believes in sleeping in church with his wife having sex when he's preaching he will go into his office and sleep with her come back on the altar preach and go and one condemns that god is holy do you understand like you can just see it's two different things it's not one will be grieved the spirit of god will definitely be grieved the other one will not like the way of holiness because that's too holy for them they don't their own way of worship is sex the devil's way of worship is sex people will worship the devil they are into sex a lot. They, that's why you see a lot of these false prophets, a lot of fake pastors. They are so into lust. They like to sleep around with their members. People, they call my daughter, like my former spiritual father says, I am a daughter, but he rapes me. He sleeps with me. How can that one work? So imagine they need to sleep with you so that they can prophesy, so that they can come on and do whatever they do. You see what I'm saying? But the other one, God doesn't want you to fornicate. God wants you to stay holy. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's somebody on another of us shook that they cut out of us. Mm. Somebody understand what I'm saying? Are you understanding what I'm saying? God says you should be holy, but the other one is saying you are his wife and he needs to sleep with you all the time. And even when you refuse, he wants to rape you. How can these two work together? One is trying to be pure. And one is trying to rape. Some of you cannot stay holy because you are attached to unbelievers you are attached to sinners people that are in darkness so holiness is a struggle for you that's why you are always struggling to stay holy because there's so much darkness around you. The people that you hang around, they're full of darkness. So while you are trying to come to the light, they keep pulling you back. They keep making you watch things you don't want to watch. They keep making you talk about things you don't want to talk about. They keep making you do things you don't want to do. That's why you lose the gifts that I've given you. I am God. That's why you lose the gift that I'm putting you. Because you are so attached to darkness. 
Some of you are so pure, but your spouse is not. It's full of darkness. So whenever you sleep with your spouse, you lose all your gifts. Whenever you mess with them, you begin to feel things, strange things happening to you. There's some of you on here, you understand what I'm saying. That's why you are never free. Because there's somebody in your life that keeps making you filthy. Even when you finish sleeping with them, I don't care if that's your husband or your wife. You know you feel different. You even begin to have some kind of dream that you haven't had in a long time. Spiritual husband, spiritual wife. Because light and darkness, there's no harmony. They cannot agree. They cannot work together. They cannot live in peace. Cannot live in peace. It cannot live in peace. It cannot live in peace. Come out from them. That's the only way. If they refuse to repent, if they refuse to change. You have to separate yourself from them. Otherwise, you will keep suffering. You will keep losing gifts. You will keep being attacked. You will keep being grieved. You will keep being sad. You may even go down with them. Because they will drag you into hell. If you are here, you are still connected to a false prophet, a false teacher, a false church, despite all the warnings that have been given. You will perish with them. All of you who do spiritual father, spiritual mother, and you know your spiritual father or mother is evil. But you keep following them. You know, I have shown you. But you keep going there. You will die with them. Because you have been warned over and over. You have not separated yourself. So whatever happens to them will affect you. Because you see darkness and you choose to follow darkness. That means you don't love God. This is a final warning. Separate yourself. from darkness because I will punish them soon very soon I will punish them some of them are already facing punishment well you see I'm very patient I'm very patient. I'm very patient. But I'm running out of my patience. Even big churches will go down because they refuse to separate themselves from their spiritual papa and mama that are witches and wizards. Okay. 
They prefer to honor them. They prefer to respect them. Celebrate them more than me, God. So I will teach them a lesson. I will publicly disgrace them. If they don't separate themselves. From darkness. I am God. Save this video. Because you will come back to this. Because my words will come to pass. You will see churches going down. Not all of them will be bad, but some of them because they refuse to disconnect. They will go down too. Because it's disobedience. When I tell people to do something, they have to obey me. I don't care how long you've known that person for. If I show you this one is not good, you have to remove yourself. Otherwise, you go down with them. It doesn't matter if I've done many miracles through you. Because you disobeyed me. And you would rather stay connected to darkness. Your church will go down. Go and tell them. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I don't remember ever saying go and tend them when God was speaking through my mouth. He said go and tell them, meaning this is not something you keep to yourself. Go and tell them. That was just yesterday. And God led Osamu to send me that video. As I finished watching it, less than five minutes, we got a phone call. So this is your final warning. Because, man, we've been warning for over a year, man. I haven't completed the assignment already. Go and tell them. He says some people will not be bad, but because they refuse to disconnect, they will go down with them because he gave them time. Sometimes people think God is so slow to act. God is patient because he doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want anyone to suddenly just die like that. Like to the point that people will be mocking us. Me, I've gotten a lot of mockery. People have tried many things to destroy me. You saw that movie. You saw how they attacked that guy. Caused accident. And when I was telling you guys the attacks I was facing, they will try to make me paralyzed again. Some of them know that these people are fake. Like they know. They've seen dreams. They even see them doing these things. They, they sleep with these ones. They know that this is wrong. But they support them. And then you wonder which God are you serving? Are you here to... Are they they will die like flies. They will die like flies. Like this. Just like that. Suddenly, you will speak to them on the phone. The next thing you will hear, they are dead. They know this one is evil. They join this one to destroy the one that is truly of God. For how long can you do that and get away with it? In that way, 
you are you are you are you are making people not to believe the real god deep down in your heart you have a conviction you know you have seen you even caught the person in an act that you know is not supposed to be but you rather stick with that one you think god is just going to keep quiet all along like We just received a call. The guy just died. He was in church on Sunday. They're going to ask questions. How come every time you are doing a fasting, somebody died? Last fasting you did, your mom died. Now, somebody in the church, the main man, the leader of the men's department is dead. And you were not around. Like, you know this is fake. You know this one is real. But you don't care. You'd rather be loyal to the fake one. Bow to their God. And try to destroy the one that is really of God. And you think you're fighting me? You're fighting God. It's not even about me. I'm just a, a, a vessel. By so doing, you block a lot of people from receiving from God. All these false prophets they worry about for money, 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 money. The false prophet mother died. He needs 14 cows to bury her. 14. And it comes on Facebook announcing that one cow is one thousand dollars. Posting who will buy cow. Is a cow ministry now? collecting 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 from people people know this is wrong but they would rather do loyalty now they're they're dropping dead one by one even some of you on here there are people you watch god has already revealed to you God has shown you something about them. But you're still there. Do you want to die? You're still promoting them. You're still celebrating them. Who are you, who are you supposed to be loyal to? God or man? It means you are wicked like them. I did not even know it was ordained as a deacon. Just like that. The man was fine. He just died. They say spider beat him and he died. And we knew him before even this false prophet came in the picture. Because he's from our place. Back home. But when I was exposed and I guess he didn't believe me. I risk my life to expose that man for over a year. People were not listening. Now they're going to be asking questions. What's going on? We're fasting. Why is, why, people, why is somebody dying? And you're a prophet. You didn't see this? What's happening? When God starts to deal with people, all those supporting that person will go down with them. Let's continue. In fact, I feel like rewinding it a little bit more. Let's hear the last part again. God says you should be holy. But the other one is saying you are his wife and he needs to sleep with you all the time. And even when you refuse, he wants to rape you. How can these two work together? One is trying to be pure and one is trying to rape. Mm -hmm. 
Some of you cannot stay holy because you are attached to unbelievers. You are attached to sinners, people that are in darkness. So holiness is a struggle for you. That's why you are always struggling to stay holy. Because there's so much darkness around you. The people that you hang around, they're full of darkness. So while you are trying to come to the light, they keep pulling you back. They keep making you watch things you don't want to watch. They keep making you talk about things you don't want to talk about. They keep making you do things you don't want to do. That's why you lose the gifts that I've given you. I am God. That's why you lose the gifts that I've put in you. Because you are so attached to darkness. Some of you are so pure, but your spouse is not. It's full of darkness. So whenever you sleep with your spouse, you lose all your gifts. Whenever you mess with them, you begin to feel things, strange things happening to you. There's some of you on here, you understand what I'm saying. That's why you are never free. Because there's somebody in your life. If you guys see this comment, Meta was in the church. So she, she, she said that the man, he didn't come to church for a while. And when he came, he testified that God saved him from a deadly accident. That ever since his ordination, it's been one problem or the other. Wow! So that ordination is initiation. Like we've been saying. Wow! She said, ever since the ordination, it's been one problem or the other. Wow! So those of you that these false prophets have ordained you, uh-huh. You know, I taught this thing for a long time. I taught this thing for a long time. So they ordained him as a deacon. Wow. And she was there when he gave this testimony. My God. Well, now you are seeing things. Let's continue. It keeps making you filthy. Even when you finish sleeping with them, I don't care if that's your husband or your wife. You know you feel different. You even begin to have some kind of dreams that you haven't had in a long time. Spiritual husband. Spiritual wife. Because light and darkness, there's no harmony. They cannot agree. They cannot work together. They cannot live in peace. 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 Live in peace. Come out from them. That's the only way. If they refuse to repent, if they refuse to change, you have to separate yourself from them. Otherwise, you will keep suffering. You will keep losing gifts. You will keep being attacked. You will keep being grieved. 
You will keep being sad. You may even go down with them. Because they will drag you into hell. If you are here, you are still connected to a false prophet, a false teacher, a false church, despite all the warnings that have been given. You will perish with them. All of you will do spiritual father, spiritual mother. And you know your spiritual father or mother is evil. But you keep following them. You know, I have shown you. But you keep going there. You will die with them. Because you have been warned over and over. You have not separated yourself. So whatever happens to them will affect you. Because you see darkness and you choose to follow darkness. That means you don't love God. This is a final warning. Separate yourself. from darkness because I will punish them soon very soon I will punish them some of them are already facing punishment well you see I'm very patient I'm very patient. I'm very patient. But I'm running out of my patience. Even big churches will go down because they refuse to separate themselves from their spiritual papa and mama that are witches and wizards. They prefer to honor them prefer to respect them celebrate them more than me God so I will teach them a lesson I will publicly disgrace them if they don't separate themselves from darkness I am God Save this video because you will come back to this because my words will come to pass. You will see churches going down. Not all of them will be bad, but some of them because they refuse to disconnect. They will go down too because it's disobedience. When I tell people to do something, they have to obey me. I don't care how long you've known that person for. If I show you this one is not good, you have to remove yourself. Otherwise, you go down with them. It doesn't matter if I've done many miracles through you. Because you disobeyed me. And you would rather stay connected to darkness. Your church will go down. Go and tell them. Thank you, Jesus. 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. So God was telling me this message while I was getting ready in the bathroom that he even gave me that scripture. And it was specifically talking about certain people in Nigeria that have big churches. He said one of them is not of God, but he has a bunch of spiritual sons. And those ones, he pointed one. He said that one is good. But if that one refused to separate himself, he will go down with that other one. All in the name of spiritual father. He will lose everything. And people will tag him with that one. But he was good. Sometimes people feel like, like you know when I was celebrating the false prophet that used to be my spiritual father, celebrating him, traveling with him. The moment God showed me that he was not of God, and God told me to go out there and announce it, that was what saved my ministry. Otherwise, I would always be seen as the same as him. Because of that assignment and the obedience to do that assignment, you cannot pair me and him together again. And you started to notice the difference. If I had refused to separate myself, to, like God said, block him, if I had refused to block him, if I had refused to warn people about him, then I, I will be seen as the same as him. And whatever God was going to do to him will affect me too. But this was how I was separated from him. I came out from him. Do you understand what I mean? So some people, they don't want to do that because they feel like that's going to cause them a lot of enemies. Well, why would you care if, if, if you have so many enemies, but you're still good with God? As long as God is still with you, God is still anointing you. God is still working with you. God is the one who called you. Even if Now, do you guys understand why it's important to obey God, even though the assignment is very risky and the assignment will cost you like a lot of hatred from people? That obedience, the one year just passed quick in a flash. And God even rewarded me with new dimension for obeying him. At that point, remember we suffered, all of you suffered, me, you guys, People blocked us. People hated us. People, But look, we are saved now. We are good. <laughs> Nobody can pair us with the false prophet church again. Nobody can say that's our spiritual father. Nobody can message us and give us prophecy. Saying, like, it's like, it's like we just, like there is just darkness and light. Like, it's clear. If we hadn't do, done this, if I hadn't taken this assignment, if I refused because, oh, I celebrated him too much, what would people say about me? I cannot go, hey! All of you would have been trapped, oh, all of you. Because this man would have messaged all of you, charmed all of you. I would not even have a ministry. It didn't make sense when we were doing it. They said, this is not the body of Christ. This is not how God works. That was my own breakthrough for my own ministry to move forward. That was my own breakthrough for this ministry to even become school of power. But it didn't make sense. Even some pastors who message me, this is not the body. Of... And those people, they are all connected to fake pastors. They know they are fake. They know they sleep around with many women. They know. But they would rather be there with them. Now, when punishment time comes, who will save them? When God himself is the one punishing you, where would you run to? Who will save you? I know what I face, but I don't care. I was blocking people anyhow. But now I'm glad because that thing was to save myself too. Not just to save people and my member, but to save me too. If not, I would have gone down too. And now people, somebody is saying, woman of God, I wanted to send you a thank you offering. So now I'm even getting people want to send me a thank, 
thank thank you offering for obeying God to expose fake, fake prophets. Can you imagine? Did you think I would get to this point where people would be thanking me? Before it seemed like I was the enemy destroying the body of Christ, but I opened people's eyes. I, I showed people things they didn't know before that I didn't know before too. And I saved myself. Now guess what? Punishment time has come. My mom sent me a message. She said, this is an update of what happened to the man. She said, latest on the man that died. Something beat him at home three days ago, not at work. It was on Monday morning. When he was getting ready to go to work that he told his wife to call for an ambulance. And by the time the ambulance came, it was too late. So yesterday morning, he said he wanted an ambulance by the time he came. And now from what Mita is saying, she said the man had testified since he was ordained. He's been attacked, accident, everything. Cause she got a call and everybody was calling and saying because you know he's from our place i just don't know why he didn't believe me to get out of that place something beat him in his house three days later I called ambulance the same witchcraft I remember one of you was doing deliverance on your live video and demon manifested saying that the false prophet needed to sacrifice somebody else, a man. Who was doing that deliverance? So said that he need, they need, he's going to be sacrificing a man soon. I don't know if you guys remember, somebody was telling me there was a deliverance they were doing on their page. They said that he's going to be sacrificing a man soon. I don't know why I'm remembering that now. And he's going to be sacrificing a man soon. Somebody said they remember. Let's continue. People leave you and run from you, call you name. That's fine. God will bring more people to you. But you will rather obey people. Because there's persecution that comes with such a decision. Some people may not want to watch anymore because they'll say, well, I was only watching you because you're connected to him. Now that you're saying you're no longer with him, no, I'm not watching. That's fine. God will rearrange everything. Will even change the way of your ministry. God will, God will save your ministry. But if you don't want to obey God because you're afraid of the kind of persecution that will come from doing that, from warning people about this one or from saying you are no longer connected to this one. You say you don't really, you're not ready for that. Maybe because you have a big church, you don't want to lose half of your members. Sweetie, eventually you're going to lose everything because you are more loyal to man than God. Even as I'm saying this, my ears are hot. My fire is coming out of my ear. This is a strong warning. This is how people are about to lose their ministries because of spiritual papa and mama that are evil. But they would rather be loyal, maybe fear of whatever. I don't know. Sorry guys, my internet. 
Let me put it back on. Traveling with him, the moment God showed me that he was not of God, and God told me to go out there and announce it, that was what saved my ministry. Otherwise, I would always be seen as the same as him. Because of that assignment and the obedience to do that assignment, you cannot pair me and him together again. And you started to notice the difference. If I had refused to separate myself, to, like God said, block him, if I had refused to block him, if I had refused to warn people about him, then I, I will be seen as the same as him. And whatever God was going to do to him will affect me too. But this was how I was separated from him. I came out from him. Do you understand what I mean? So some people, they don't want to do that because they feel like that's going to cause them a lot of enemies. Well, why would you care if, if, if you have so many enemies but you're still good with God? As long as God is still with you, God is still anointing you, God is still working with you. God is the one who called you. Even if people leave you and run from you, call you name, that's fine. God will bring more people to you. But you would rather obey people because there's persecution that comes with such a decision. Some people may not want to watch you anymore because they'll say, well, I was only watching you because you're connected to him. Now that you're saying you're no longer with him, no, I'm not watching. That's fine. God will rearrange everything. Will even change the way of your ministry. God will, God will save your ministry. But if you don't want to obey God because you're afraid of the kind of persecution that will come from doing that, from warning people about this one, or from saying you are no longer connected to this one. You say you don't re you're not ready for that, maybe because you have a big church, you don't want to lose half of your members. Sweetie, eventually you're going to lose everything because you are more loyal to man than God. Even as I'm saying this, my ears are hot. Like fire is coming out of my ear. This is a strong warning. This is how people are about to lose their ministries because of spiritual papa and mama that are evil. But they would rather be loyal, maybe fear of whatever. I don't know. The only thing that saved us is for one, your woman of God loves God, obeys God. But two, I agree to carry an assignment to expose the false prophet. Otherwise, people will still say, well, I didn't know they say. They travel together, that they work together. But now they can't say that. Yeah, that was before she found out. But when she found out, she started to expose him. So that one has, has saved me. That one has saved me. That one has saved me. You cannot say, oh, they are the same. No, she and her ministry exposing for over a year. They cannot be the same. She's the one that made us know about false prophet. She's the one that made us know things. So they cannot be the same. Do you understand? At first, it didn't make sense. Why are you doing that kind of thing? It doesn't make sense. But now it makes a lot of sense. We are We are different. We have, there's been a there's been a line. We're not we cannot be put in the same place. So while I was doing it, we got a lot of persecution and hatred. And that's fine, but God saved us, and now we are enjoying our ministry. We are living our holy life the way God wants us to live. But if I didn't do that, some of you will still be watching him, thinking it's your papa. Some of you. The things you know now, you will not know. And that's how God works. So sometimes, God just revealed something to me now. You know that video he made me show about that movie that was removed from YouTube? God said everything is all part of his plan. Hey, he said that there are many people that watch me on YouTube. Nico, 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 Demosly, that follow false prophets. Even this, our, 
our former false prophet that we know. And he said that this particular fast is either they come out to Facebook and watch us or they will have to wait till when we're off. Because I'm not going to be on Facebook and uh, YouTube till next week. So it will pull them to come and they will have to, if they, because they are fasting. Some of them, do you know, some of them are fasting. Some of them watch us, but they prefer YouTube because you can't tell that they are watching. So now, there's not going to be any YouTube for them for this fast. They must come and find us on our page, or they'll be waiting till when we're finished. They'll connect. It's time for them to come out. Yeah, many of them go to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all things eh? they work together for good like me i'm not even worried mm. see some people run from youtube they came but there are some that they don't know how they can come on facebook because you will see them watching you will know they are watching some of them they blocked us on facebook or we blocked them so now they're going to be restless because they want to know how they can connect. They need to connect. They need breakthrough in all areas of their life. <laughs> Is somebody laughing? Somebody laugh. <laughs> oh my God. He said, no, no, this is not that kind of art. You want to be collecting breakthrough, but you'll be hiding to what? They go find us for Facebook. No YouTube till next week. So go and tell them. Because they like YouTube when we come on Palm, they're on YouTube watching. But now they gotta come on Facebook and we're gonna see them. Or they'll wait till we finish. Yeah, are you laughing? Laugh. Because it's fasting, it's breakthrough. They are experiencing a lot of dryness, no breakthrough. So now you can't you can't hide no more, sweetie. You're gonna have to come out now. You're gonna have to be on Facebook. That's right. Or you wait till when we're done, you go and watch it. Mm -hmm. You can't hide anymore. People think they are smart. It don't happen. Did you see the Facebook number has gone up? <laughs> it will go up even more because they will keep finding me there. They will, they will see me. <laughs> they will not see me. They will find a way. They have to create fake profile, but they will come on Facebook. God will arrest them in that place. Mm -hmm. They do like our ministry is not important, but they are always watching me on YouTube, tapping, joining our fasting, drinking our water, everything. But they know their papa is fake. There are two of them that God revealed to one of you. Went to a pastor to pray for them, gave him money, offering. The pastor rejected their offering and refused to pray for them. So they've started seeking for prayers outside because they have realized that they are under a false prophet. You know, this ministry is supernatural. God opens our eyes to see. The man gave them their money back, refused to pray for them. Two of them in the false prophet church. They are now going looking for prayer because all their papa talks about is money, cow. You know what I mean? The person sent me the dream. The man rejected their money and refused to pray for them. It's one of you here that sent it to me. In fact, go and do a video of that dream and bring it. They are now seeking for prayers, running, thinking, God is upset. Take your money back. You're not getting prayed for. Let's continue. For God to save you, he's going to tell you to come out from them. Separate yourself. Tell people you are no longer a part of them so that your people don't keep going there thinking you are still there. No. You got to say, I'm no longer a part of this one. Depending on the assignment God gives you. But sometimes you may not have to call them false. You will just say, right now I am no longer connected to this one. So that your people will know that our papa is no longer connected. And the moment they know, they too, they will no longer be connected. But if you don't do anything, your people will still be going there, still thinking, well, that's our papa's papa. So while you are thinking, you are no longer connected. A bunch of, 90% of your members are still watching him, still calling him papa. 
So you got to come out and warn your people like God said you should disconnect. So you are no longer connected. If anybody is going on their own, that's their own, but you're not referring anybody there anymore. That's going to bring you a lot of critic, but guess what? As long as God is with you, that's all you need. That's all you need. All those people that criticize you, they'll fade out. In one year, you won't even see them again. What is one year? Three months, six months. They'll fade out like, like sand. People find it hard to do that part because they don't know, ah, what will people think of me? Oh, it's going to cause persecution. Yeah, bring it on. God is going to help me. That's right. The way God helped us here. Even in the church, you could be a choir or whatever in a church. You could be so active in a church. You could be so active in a church, doing many things in a church. Suddenly God opened your eyes to see what they are doing in that church. Open your eyes to the altar. You see blood everywhere. You see sacrifice or you see things. And maybe you are the main singer in that church and God says it's time for you to get out of there. But the pastor said, oh, we need you for this program. We're going to take you. You're going to travel with us. Are you going to follow the pastor? God has revealed who this pastor is to you. You got to run. Get out. Run. If you have members you brought there, you tell them, this is what I saw. Come out. If you stay there at your own risk. But for me, I have seen what God has shown me. I am no long, I'm not referring anybody there. If I referred you, I need to tell you what I saw. Because if you don't tell them and you live like that, they will still be there thinking, ah, oh, you referred us there after all. And then whatever happens to them, in a way they will blame you because you never warned them when you found out the truth. But if they, and they know how to lure you, they will start giving you big, big position to keep you to stay. But God is saying, get out. Wow! Did you guys hear that part? They know how to lure you. They will give you big, big position to stay. They will ordain you as deacon, as deaconess to stay. You want to go, but they will be because you are you have a title there. You. That's what happened with this man that just died. They made him a deacon to trap him. Wow. 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 And people like position, eh? They will take it and they will think, ah, we have to stay. We can't leave them. Look at that. Somebody say media crew position. Yes. It's a trap. So that way you don't go, you stay. And you have a position, you have to you have to serve. Wow! For all of you that like being ordained quick, quick, you go to a church, they say they will ordain you as this, you are happy. And now you see bad things, you can't leave because you are now responsible. You feel like you are, you are entitled to stay because of the ordination, the title. Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue. Get out. I revealed it to you for a reason because it's time for you to come out of there. I'm about to deal with them. I'm about to punish them. I'm about to destroy this church. But I don't want you in there. Get out. It doesn't matter if all the choir, the church people will stop calling you or visiting you. That's fine. Maybe God is about to change your whole set of friends anyway. God is about to change everything about you. Maybe you're not even successful because of all those people around you. So sometimes this is a reason, this is an opportunity for cleansing. So that people that are out for your success will come around. Have you not seen some people will be in a church? You know all these people, but you're not successful. Anything you want to do does not work. But you have all these people around you. Because you have so many witches around you. So sometimes all of them will just hate you. So that your life can begin to make sense. Okay. 
So I was reading 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm now on verse 16. The King James Version, it says, And what kind, what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will dwell in them, meaning God will live in them. <laughs> I saw this coming in. I said it a lot. Is it my pastor wants to make me a junior minister? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so they have senior minister and junior minister. Please, you know I laugh a lot. <laughs> this is his comment on his screen. He said, Pastor wants to make him junior minister. I said, which one be junior minister again? Senior prophet, junior prophet. <laughs> These titles in this church, I'm tired. Of what kind of thing it is? <laughs> I said, No, I gotta pause this and laugh a little bit. <laughs> is it like, oh, we're gonna do as a junior minister? <laughs> Me, a grown up man, eh? <laughs> junior minister, which one is that again? <laughs> What is that the new title? <laughs> Man, this fasting is breakthrough in every area of your life. Some of you need breakthrough from false prophet. Yeah, <laughs> from false prophet and their title and their cages. <laughs> junior prophet, senior prophet, junior minister. Oh my god, this make me laugh. Oh yeah, let's continue. Sorry, guys. I had to pause and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people the New Living Translation says and what union can there be between God's temple and idols for we are the temple of the living God as God said I will live in them and walk among them I will be their God and they will be my people Verse 17, the King James Version. Wherefore, come out from among them. Hi, Babash. It said, Wherefore, come out from among them, and ye be and be ye separate. Come out from among those idols, those fake prophets. <laughs> church working in church you feel drained they suck out all your anointing (laughs) 
I know them not really laugh, or if it's God laughing, or this thing is funny. You say, man, this is real. You <laughs> say, say, this is real. <laughs> oh, they say, come and serve. Come and serve in the house of God. They suck out all your anointing. You all be careful, though. I say, this is your own breakthrough. We are laughing, but run. Run, run, run. Let's continue. Fake papas, fake mama, unbelievers. Say, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Don't even touch things that belong to them, and then I will receive you. Don't take money from them. And I will receive you. Don't try to partner with them. And I will receive you. Otherwise, when they go down, you will go down with them. The New Living Translation. It says, therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them. Says the Lord, don't touch their filthy things. And I will welcome you. Don't touch their filthy things. And I will welcome you. And verse 18, the King James Version. It says, somebody say, this is for me. Woman of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. As you know that this is for you, go ahead and make sure you obey the voice of God. So you don't you don't get destroyed with those evil people. And verse eighteen, he said, "And and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters," saith the Lord Almighty. The New Living Translation says, "And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters," says the Lord Almighty. For this to happen, you have to. For this to happen, you have to come out from among them. You have to separate yourself from them. And you don't have to touch any of their filthy stuff. And that's when he will welcome you. And he will be your father. And you will be his sons and daughters. Otherwise, guess what? You will be seen as the same with them. People say, but is it not? Are they not one? They work together now. That's her father now. That's her son. That's her papa. The devil can use papa and mama thing to trap the righteous ones. Some of them feel like, like in Nigeria, they feel like they need a spiritual father. Sometimes before you can join those, their occultic association, they will say, who is your spiritual father? Who is your papa? Your spiritual father is God. Like, who is your, your spiritual mother? Your spiritual mother is God. Some of them, they want to make you by force. To get a spiritual father or mother, otherwise they will feel like you're not really a ministry. And by so doing, the enemy will use that to trap you and pair you with a demonic person, all in the name of that's my papa, that's my mama. And they will now come and corrupt your anointing that God has given you, corrupt your ministry, make you practice some things that you're not comfortable with. You don't really like to raise money in your church. The moment your spiritual papa visits your church, he wants to come and mess it up. He wants to tell people who wants to give this, get up. But this is not something you do. This is not something you do. But because it's your papa, you can't really say anything. You don't want to be um, um, like, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to be like, you know, so you just let papa do what papa wants to do. Who wants to, maybe you don't even use handkerchief to lay on people's head because your papa does it when he visits your church. He wants to use that his smelly handkerchief to be laying on people's head. And you don't want to say nothing because you are the daughter or you are the son and you just want to respect the papa, but you're not even comfortable with it. Your spirit is not comfortable with it. But hey, it's your papa, so hey, let's do it. So sometimes this papa and this mama, the evil ones, they corrupt the good ones and they come purposely to do terrible things in your church. 
just to initiate some of your folks. That's why sometimes you don't really need these people. Unless God is pairing you with somebody. Otherwise, sweetie, God is your spiritual father. God is your father. God is your mother. There are many great servants of God. Like Prophet T.B. Joshua did not have a spiritual father or mother or anything. God trained him. God anointed him. God is the one that raised him. That's right. So don't think you must have a spiritual father or you must have a spiritual mother before you can obey God or before God can use you mentally. No. That's, the, that's what they want you to think. And then they'll come and be making you do some things, joining some things that you're not supposed to join. Before you know you are now like them, you're now sounding like them. And God created you to sound unique. But because this one wants you to preach the way he preaches, to do the way he do, to raise money the way he raised, to do. Now they see you and it's like the one that God taught you is erasing from you. Now you are sounding like that evil man. So like I said, let me repeat this again. There's a particular man that has big churches and is a spiritual father to a bunch of others that have big churches. God is about to finish him. And anyone that is connected to him, God is saying that there's this particular one that has a big church that is connected to him. God says he has told him to disconnect from him, but he's still thinking of how to do it. That the only way he will save his church is because he will disconnect. But if he does not, Whatever happens to this one, it's going to affect him too. The thing is, some people will hear what I'm saying. They will say, wow, this is true. Yes, you are right. But they're not really practicing what I'm saying. They're just commenting. Some people are just commentators. But they don't put it to practice. There are some people that go to churches that are still false prophets. They know everything they know from false prophet. There's one of you. I saw your comment the other day. You see, you were speaking in tongues in church. Everybody was watching you because they are surprised because only the pastor speaks in church, tongue in your church. And I'm like, what are you doing in that fake church? You are following us among false prophets, but you're still going to a church where only pastor speaks in tongues. Like, seriously, what are you doing there? Church believes that only pastors should speak in tongues. Please, are you guys understanding what I'm saying? What are you doing in that place? Nobody but pastor alone speaks in tongues. That's 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 not right. Just from hearing that, I know that church is not of God. I don't even need to know anything else. I just know from what you just said. That's not a church of God. If the pastor is the only one that speaks in tongues. So these people could be hearing everything I'm saying, but they're still in a fake church. Active members. It's like they're blind, but they comment a lot. When you enter a church and you see these signs, run. You didn't come here to be loyal to any church. You didn't come here to be to be a slave to any, any false prophet. You came to do the will of God. And the will of God is to obey God all the time. Love God always. And do what he tells you. Not to go and die in a place where they don't love God. Hallelujah. I want to show a testimony. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. God told me that you see what you just listened to now? That's where some people's breakthrough will start from. When you separate yourself from the fake church, you will get your deliverance because these fake churches, they put you in a cage. Nothing works for you. They trap your finances. They break your relationship, your marriage. 
they put sickness in your body a lot of moving objects and all these things so your own deliverance is by separating yourself as we are fasting now some people are new here this is their first time joining this ministry even some of you that are not new here that have been with us you still have some fake people you watch or you're going to their church and you're wondering why there's no breakthrough and then you have a hey, kadadada she see see some of you eh? Mm -hmm. you have school of power logo on your page but you have a false prophet that you attend this church or that calls you to pray for you every day and you say i've been in this ministry three four years nothing is happening hey not my god but you're not telling us that there's also another false prophet in your life mm. there's another there's a false prophet in your life that calls you all the time you and him talking some sometimes it's even romantic mm. it's no longer about god why is a prophet calling you every day i don't understand every day in fact as you are fasting now some of them are waiting for you to receive from this fasting. Once you receive, they will call you and collect what you have received. They will say, the Lord just showed me something. I see something, disaster coming. I see this thing coming. I have to pray for you. God didn't show them nothing. They just saw that you just finished fasting and you have received. So they will collect it. Why do they have to pray for you daily? Call you every day to pray for you. Tell you to drink their oil every day. What is this? Me, the God that I serve, um, life life changes. Oh, uh, look at look at what Meta said. She said that's right. Not the God of Prince Belenzi Ministry. If you are genuinely connected there, there is no way your life won't change. Because my God is the God that we read about in the Bible. So there has to be something. Wait, how many of you? Let's tell the truth now. How many of you now? believe that you are still connected to somebody maybe it's not just a false problem maybe a teacher or maybe somebody you pray with that you suspect their spirit is not right because this fasting is for breakthrough in every area of our life so we need to find out what's wrong it, it could be a it could be a connection like an evil connection of it could even be somebody that is a sister you pray with Maybe something has been telling you that something is not right with this one. You can't place your hand on it. You know, we've addressed many things. We've addressed the one that people make promises. We've addressed faith and all of that. Now we are coming to this. A wrong connection. It could even be a friend. Yeah. It could even be family. No, I'm just saying... Remember I prayed for you guys the other day that God is going to start revealing. We're in a season of revealing. God will reveal things about people. And Prophet Shanika Baez also did a video yesterday talking about how God is about to reveal things. The Spirit of God is one. I'm going to try to show that here. So yeah, so I pray that during this time of fasting, Father will reveal to you who you think. Maybe it's not even a church. Maybe it's just somebody that once in a while you pray with or maybe someone you are still hanging with an evil connection that needs to be disconnected because it's affecting your breakthrough it's affecting your <laughs> there are some people that as long as you are with them nothing will work for you hmm. because some of you will be telling them everything innocently not knowing they are the ones blocking your things they could be witches they could be witches uh huh. It could be just one person. It could be one person, and that person could be an agent that was sent. Do you understand what I'm saying? It could be something, but God needs to reveal because during this fasting, we need to have a breakthrough. Like we need to know anything that is not right, anything that, anything that. It's not supposed to be. We need to be free from it. 
I'm just saying we have addressed a bunch of things. I told you God will be bringing up different, different things, right? Mm -hmm. So now we are here. Father, reveal. And sometimes when you begin to feel a certain way about somebody or something, most likely there's some truth to it. Some of you have really good discernment, but then you don't trust it. You're like, maybe it's just my mind. Maybe, nah, maybe. Sweetie, um, I think I need to play this prophetess Shanika Bias <coughs> video. She said something we prepared something hidden revealed and i prayed for you guys was it yesterday or two days ago for god to reveal things to you about people that are supposedly acting as good but they are not and this same this prophet that i always show a video because god showed me her in the dream and told me sometimes we'll be giving our messages that will confirm what, what i'm saying she did a short video too about the same thing and she many things that god has said through her mouth they're happening already so I believe her because God came with her face to my dream. This is God's ministry. If God is approving of somebody, I got to obey God. So maybe you guys will take me seriously. So after I show a video, I'll pray a prayer. That evil connection, maybe some of you are still connected and you don't really know that this person, you know, you're supposed to disconnect from them. Or maybe... I don't know, but we need God to reveal to help us. Because some of you are really innocent. You don't really know. Because they blinded you. You know? Yeah, that's one thing these evil people do. They blind you. You don't see in the spirit. You don't You don't even know that. You Even if somebody told you they were evil, you won't believe it. Because you, you've not seen it. But everybody around you can see it. But you're not seeing it. Because they blinded you. So today your eyes will open and you will see and you will disconnect so you can get your breakthrough. Because as long as that person is still connected to you, it's going to be hard. Even now they know you are fasting. Man, this world there, eh? this world is a wicked world. You know, you can be best friend with somebody. And this same best friend is the reason you are suffering. Like this world is wicked. You can sit on the same table with this person and eat. Sometimes sleep on the same bed. And this one is the reason behind your suffering. And they are even consoling you every day. Don't worry. Things will work out. <laughs> this is some scary stuff. <laughs> I can't understand this thing I'm like. They will look you in the face and tell you, don't worry, it will be okay. But they are the reason for that problem. <laughs> I mean, like, how do you how do you live with yourself? Like, how do you handle that? How do you fake this? This is crazy. And this fasting for breakthrough in every area of your life is breakthrough from that which breakthrough from that frenemy deliverance from that one that you trust so much that you tell everything maybe god will appear in your dream and say stop telling this one everything you may still be connected to them but god will say stop telling because maybe it's not time to disconnect from them yet but maybe god just needs you to don't tell them your plans. <laughs> Although some of you, when God reveal, <laughs> even if God says you stay connected, I don't think. <laughs> some people, some people, the moment they see, I don't know how they can say, they will say, no, Father, I'm running. And God says, no time to run. Wait, I will tell you. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's why sometimes there's some of you maybe god show you your roommate <laughs> she's half snake half human being in the dream and god said 
don't eat her food but wait i will tell you when to kick her out of the house or to remove you wake up from the dream <laughs> you are running from the house you will not even follow the instruction in the dream <laughs> because now that you've seen the their real form half human half snake you I, i know i usually know I, i can't stay in this house again but you've been staying there for four years with the <laughs> the money go repeat. He said, "No, me, I cannot do this." <laughs> oh, 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 oh my God! Oh my God! Hey, hey God, I don't be laughing. He said, ah, "No, no, no, I can't stay again." But the instruction is wait until I tell you what you must. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I know you guys are laughing, but let let's be real. If you dream that somebody that lives in the same house with you, hmm, you see them the true spirit form, half human, half snake. <laughs> somebody said, "Now, now that I know, I am gone." But what if God said, "Don't go yet"? Wait, I'm preparing a place for you. <laughs> and then when you wake up, the roommate knock on your door say, "Hey, what's up now? Come eat." Hey! 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 He said, "What are you doing? What's wrong with you?" <laughs> ah, people, people cannot handle this. <laughs> ah, oh my God! People cannot handle this, you know. Uh, Holy Ghost fire! This is somebody you've been living with for years. This person has been like this all along, man. Why can't you just be patient for another week? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but i help your children please this is yeah, this love is this love here is giving me so much strength all the food that i ate because <laughs> we are eight till almost six o'clock <laughs> all the food that left me <laughs> because this love that i'm loving is exercise to see how they go <laughs> you know <laughs> i ate until I have to repent. I say, Father, I'm sorry for overeating. <laughs> I advise them not to eat too much, <laughs> but I didn't take the advice. <laughs> I told my mother, I said, Mommy, the way I'm eating it, I can do seven days dry. I won't break because <laughs> there's no food. <laughs> so, but as I'm laughing like this, it's like everything has left me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't know what I said. The way I don't eat them, maybe seven good days of no breaking. There will be enough food in my belly. <laughs> I ate too much, but as I'm loving now, I can feel the food I left. <laughs> All right, let me show this woman a God's video. A lot of you already follow her now, so you've seen the video already. But it's the season of God revealing. So I'm going to show it. It's just for confirmation's sake. Her name is Prophetess Shanika Byers. And you can follow her on YouTube. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello, brothers. Hello, sisters in Christ. I hope that you all are well in the Lord. As always, I'm honored to be your sister in Christ. I'm happy to see you guys. And I take very seriously that you all are here with me to hear what the Lord is saying in this moment in time. So today, guys, I have a quick prophetic word where God wants to give us some insight. He wants to give us some insight concerning the heaviness, the anxiety, um, the feeling that something is coming, okay? I have gotten several emails from many of you and you've been expressing that you've been having like bouts of 
silence from God, not hearing from God. Some of you have been uh, feeling the urge to cry for no apparent reason. Um, a lot of us have been led to intercede and to pray for our country, to pray for our families, to pray to God about anyone that we are feeling led to pray for. It's just like this feeling that something is coming. And as a result, we're in a, a, a place of anxiety, if that makes sense. So guys, I got to tell you that I have also been experiencing this in my own life. And so I asked God, you know, about it. I said, Lord, you know, is there a word? Is there something that's happening that we need to know about? What do you want me to speak to your people about concerning this? And then God began to reveal to me. He said, beloved, I do have some insight that I want to share with you. And the reason why I'm going to share this information with you is because I have a concern about you. I have a concern about your life. And although it may seem small to you, although it may seem insignificant to you, I am just as concerned about your life as you are. And so guys, this insight is not going to pertain to every single thing that's happening in your life. And it's not going to pertain to everything that is happening in the world, right? But God wants to give us a little bit of insight about particular things that have been happening in our lives lately, okay, in this past season, all right? And as I said before, the reason is because God is concerned about those things that make us feel uneasy. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 41, for I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. So God wants to help us through this period of us feeling anxiety, of us feeling this burden, of this desire to cry, of this desire um, to feel like we need to figure out what in the world is going on, God. Something is getting ready to happen. Something is coming. Hallelujah. So God began to say that we as a body of Christ, we are experiencing a season of exposure. That's what God is saying. We are experiencing a season of exposure and these exposures are revealing the hidden things in the church. These exposures are revealing the hidden things in our families and these exposures are revealing the hidden thing in some of our friendships, some of our relationships. And so the Lord says, we must be prepared for something that has been hidden to be revealed because this exposure is going to happen. It has already been established in the kingdom. It is going to happen. And God says that this exposure is going to happen at any given moment, any day, God says. Okay. And God says when these exposures happen when when these things that have been hidden are revealed many of us are going to be shocked some of us are going to be disappointed some of us are going to feel intensely betrayed because we're going to be like what really are you serious not this family member not this woman of god not this man of god not my husband not my wife, not my child, my beloved daughter, my beloved son. God, this can't be. So guys, the Lord is saying that exposure is happening everywhere. Exposure is happening everywhere. And this is why we're feeling this burden. But for this particular word of insight, God is placing an emphasis on exposures that are taking place in families. Our children, not babies, but older children, teenagers, young adults, okay? Our spouses, siblings, distant relatives, and people in the church, people in ministry, people in leadership. God is placing an emphasis of insight concerning the friendships that have been acquired by us. 
And I hear the Lord saying that these are friendships that we've had for quite some time. Within the last five years or so, we've acquired these relationships. And in these relationships, in these friendships, in these connections, there are hidden agendas. God says not all of them, but at least one or two of your friends, of your connections, your so-called best buddy, okay? Your so-called person, your go-to person. God says that at least one or two of these people want to be more like you rather than to be for you. I need to say that again. God says that when this hidden thing is revealed, you're going to discover that the friend, the friend of yours, you're going to discover that they are wanting to be more like you rather than to be for you, want the best for you, want you to have those things that you desire or that God has revealed to you. God says these friends want to have what you have in small, subtle ways. God says they have been secretly envious and jealous of you. And God says, even though they smile in your faces and they tell you that they're happy for you, they really are not. And God says he's going to expose these hidden, subtle agendas. God is also saying that many of, of the leaders that we look up to in ministry, leaders that we look up to in the church, and even leaders that we look up to um, in other areas, in our jobs maybe, God says that they also will be exposed. The Lord says that in each type of relationship that we are in, whether it be a friendship, whether it be um, our children, whether it be our spouses, many of us are going to begin to see things be revealed. God says for a few of you, you need to be prepared to discover that your child your children, your son, your daughter, they have not been honest with you. They have been hiding some things from you and they know that you will disapprove of it if you find out about it. God says for a couple of you, be prepared to find out that your spouse, your sibling, or a distant relative has been hiding something from you. And for some of us, the Lord says, be prepared to find out that somebody in the house of God glory be to God, to find out that somebody in the house of God that you respected highly to be called out by another person because that person knows the truth about what they have been doing behind closed doors. God says, get prepared. God says the reason that some of you have been feeling anxious or you've been crying, you've been, you've been feeling like something is coming is because you are experiencing the burden of exposure. That is what this is. You are experiencing the burden of exposure. The Holy Spirit that is within you is bearing witness to the things that have been hidden. The Holy Spirit that is bearing witness within you, okay, is understanding that something is going to be revealed. The Holy Spirit within you is grieving because the consequences that are going to come to those that will be exposed will not be easy for them. And God is saying that the consequences that will come to them will also not be easy for you to watch because you're going to be shocked. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to feel betrayed. Glory to God. But guys, as I have already posted in the community section of this channel, I told you guys, the Lord always gives us some kind of a sign or a warning. He will convict our spirits and he will allow for us to feel like something is off. He will give us a sense of unrest to let us know that there is something that is hidden and it needs to be revealed. And the purpose of it, guys, is so that we go to God, so that we seek God in prayer, so that when he gives us the revelation of what's happening, he gives us the interpretation of the things that are happening, the signs, okay? And so God is saying this, people of God, concerning this message. 
He says, beloved, all will not be lost and do not be dismayed when this thing is revealed because it's going to happen. God says, not if, but when this hidden thing is revealed, he does not want you to be dismayed. Why? Because I saw your heart concerning these connections and I saw that you were mistaken when you trusted them like you did, says the Lord. And as a result of this, what was meant for evil, I, the Lord, your God, will turn it around for your good, says God. Take this situation and learn from it and make sure that the next time you feel like something is not right, that you come to me and seek my counsel, says the Lord. And as my word says... Do not put all your trust in man, but trust me always because I will never leave you nor forsake you, says God. I will never betray you, but I will only see to it that you are secure in me, says the Lord. So people of God, that is the word for today. God has given us some insight into the unrest that many of us have been feeling in this season. There is a hidden thing that is going to come to the light and God wants you to prepare for it. But at the same time, know that when it happens, God is going to work this thing out for your good. Don't you worry about it. You're going to pray about it and you're going to allow God to give you instructions on what you shall do next in this certain situation when it comes in your life, okay? So before I get off of here, I wanna say a quick short prayer with you. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father God, we just thank you for this word of insight. We thank you, Lord, that you love us more than we love ourselves. Father God, we thank you for walking with us and talking with us. We ask, Lord God, that you will be with us for all the rest of our days. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to use your servants to prophesy, to preach, to teach us. So that way we have all the tools that we need to stay on this straight and narrow path that is required to get into the gates of heaven. Father, we thank you for the angels that you would dispatch on our behalf to minister to us, to protect us. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are our provider, our shepherd, our Lord, our keeper. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence for all the rest of our days. Father, we give you all glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray amen and amen. So people of God, praise the Lord. I want to thank you all for subscribing to Shanika Byers United for Christ. I want to thank you all for subscribing to our second channel, United for Christ Prayer Room. If you didn't get to the comment section of the channel, I want to let you all guys know that we started another channel on a platform called Rumble. The platform is called Rumble. And so guys, I have the link to that um, in the description box of this video, as well as in the comment section under this video, it's pinned to the top. Please come on over guys and subscribe to our channel on Rumble because we're not really sure what's going on with YouTube, but we want to have a backup plan in case, you know, videos somehow get lost on the YouTube channel. Okay. Listen, if it's the Lord's will, I'll be back here sometime soon. I want you all to be blessed and I love you. Okay. Bye. Praise the Lord. So thank God for backup channel. Like we, we have Facebook, our backup. We have Instagram, we have Twitter, right? So she's getting rumble. I need to check that out too. I don't know what that is. But you see what she said? The spirit of God is one. So that's also part of the breakthrough that some of you are going to have during this, um, our fasting season that we're fasting. God will reveal people, connections, people that, apparently are not good there was a time that we did this but the season has come again i want to read daniel 2 verse 22 the king james version somebody posted it said he revealed he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him he revealed the deep and secret things meaning god revealed the deep and secret things he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him. 
the NLT version, the New Living Version. It says, He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in the darkness, though He is surrounded by light. So God is going to reveal things that um, is hidden. Easy translation says, He explains difficult problems and secret things. He knows about all things, even when they are in dark places. He himself lives in light. So some of you, me, for some reason, for like a week now, God has been revealing things to me. In fact, a few days ago, I even told you guys, God revealed about a woman of God that watches me. And God showed me her heart. Like she was trying to act like she was trying to help my members to do the business that I don't do, that I'm just a customer now. And when I announced to my members, when they came, she didn't even give them a presentation. This lady brought forms to give them to fill out and she had like four of her, of her agents and she was putting 12 each of my members underneath them. I said, are you not going to give them a presentation? She said, no, this is how they do. I said, no. I used to do presentations when I used to enroll people. You got to tell them the truth. She was not listening. I, I started shouting and I was like, make sure you guys don't sign the form. So God revealed to me that this lady pretty much wants what I have. She wants my members. She wants, yeah, and then she's going to trap them. God showed me a part of her heart and it's not good. That God showed me a heart and it's not good. Hold on, guys. Let me change my um, network. So he showed me a heart that a heart is not good. And this was like days ago before God told me he's going to start revealing God has shown me some other things and I was just, but God always shows me things. But this one is like, cause I, this is one of those ladies that I didn't expect will be thinking like that. Like somebody that wants all that you have. Right. She's gonna, she's gonna mess them up pretty much. Kind of like Cora. The way Cora's heart was. Cora wanted everything I had. And when people started watching her, she was trying to probably do some evil. They don't even understand. Telling them to bring their used pad or, or pad. Telling them to bring sand or snow. Ah, man, there's some crazy, crazy stuff. So even all of you got to be careful with the kind of people you... So that you don't bring somebody that has like evil intentions. And sometimes these people may be very nice to you. And this is something that it will be hard to believe that they are like that. Unless God reveals that part of them. What their secret motive is. Because if God doesn't reveal, sometimes we can't tell. Especially if the person is very good. If the person is very good at faking, can you guys hear me? Did it freeze? Okay. Did it freeze? I'm so hot. I've been sweating a lot. I feel a lot of presence here. It's good right now, right? Okay, I'm watching it here. It's good. So God is going to reveal, even for friendship, God is going to reveal the heart of some friends to you how they feel and even there are some friends that may be lusting after you and god is going to reveal that to you that's probably why you see them coming as spiritual husband yeah you can have a friend that every time you see this friend coming as spiritual husband maybe because this friend is always lusting after you thinking of all these lusting thoughts and you know what i mean and it's affecting you spiritually you keep seeing them come in your dream trying to sleep with you. Yeah. So God will reveal a lot of things to you. And if somebody desires to get your husband or something, God is also going to reveal.
So this person may not be all the way evil, but there could be like a, a hidden thing that they plan or they, they are desiring or they are thinking towards you and God will expose that part of them to you. And this will be your own breakthrough because now you will know how to um, how to work with them. Maybe you always used to tell them a lot and now you will withhold. You will stop telling them a lot. You will stop hanging with them more like before. Gradually, you will disconnect. There are some of you, you know what I'm saying. There are some of you, you have disconnected from people, but it was not immediate that you disconnected when you found out things about them. It was gradually before you used to call them a lot, but now you don't call them much, maybe once in a while. And gradually the friendship just kind of faded out. Does somebody understand what I'm saying? The friendship eventually faded out, but it was not like immediate disconnection. Maybe you used to visit them like twice, three times a week, but now it's once a month. Some of them are even family. Maybe your favorite aunt, you used to always go there, but when God showed you things about her, once in a while you go there, but not like before, or you used to always eat her food. Now, whenever you go, you'll say, I'm, I'm full, but you still talk to her because she's family. But there are things you know about her that she doesn't know that you know yet. And because of that, you've used wisdom to gradually remove yourself. But it's not like, immediate so there are some people that god will reveal and god will not tell you to disconnect but god will tell you to use wisdom on how you you know we're just laughing now but i'm telling you because some of them are people that will always be in your life <laughs> because maybe there will be family members or something and they're always gonna be there but god will show you how to work around them maybe stop telling them personal things or Maybe stop eating their food or maybe stop visiting them the way you used to visit them or something. But you can still talk to them when you see them. This is what, what I'm telling you. Please listen. Because it's not everyone we're going to disconnect from. But God will give us an upper hand by showing us the heart of this person. So we know how to deal with that person. If you understand, type, I understand. Because some of you, I don't know if you're understanding what I'm, you know, God saying this fast, you got to pay attention to what I'm saying. And you got to, you got to listen and understand what I'm saying. It's not everyone that once he reveals, you will run. There are some that they will still be around, but he will teach you on how to work with them. He will tell you, stop telling her everything. Stop sharing things with her. Stop wearing her clothes or stop something like that. So they will not even know why you stopped that, but they will not know God has shown you something. But you still talk to them once in a while. They are still family. You still visit them once in a while, but you are cautious because God showed you something about them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So a lot of people say they understand. So in this season, even with this fasting, God will show you. And some of you, once God shows you that, it will help you. Because all this while, you didn't know that this person was the source of your problem or this. But knowing that is your deliverance. Because now you're going to rearrange many things. Or maybe you're about to start a business with this one. And God showed you this. And now you know that you can't be their business partner. Do you understand? So that alone is a major deliverance because if you had done the business deal with them, <laughs> it would have been a disaster. So if, if that's the only thing you get from this, this whole fasting, you should be celebrating because God just saved you from a major disaster. Hallelujah. And then there are some that you will need to totally disconnect from. It will be so bad that when you get up, it's block, block, block. <laughs> it's block, block, block. <laughs> oh my God. I want to I want somebody to post Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Let's read that. 
Thank you, Lord. I love you so much. Yes, you are first let me read it in king james and i'll read it in other translations it says call unto me and i will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not the new living translation it says ask me and i will tell you remarkable secrets hey and you do not that you do not know about he said, ask me and I'll tell you remark remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. God said we should ask him and he will tell us secrets. He will show us things that we don't know about. Uh-huh. Easy translation. It says, call to me and I will answer you. This is what we're about to do now. Call to me, and I will answer you. I will tell you great, strange things that you do not know. <laughs> hey, somebody say, somebody say, heaven's heaven's phone number <laughs> down three three three. <laughs> Oh my God. He said, ask me. I will tell you remarkable secrets. My God. God is serious about this. So, <laughs> Are you guys ready to call to God? Call to me and I will answer you. It's about time we make a phone call to God. And he said, he will tell you great, strange things that you do not know. So it's revelation time. It's time for people. It's time for people to begin to know things. The ERV translation. It says, You that pray to me and I will answer you. I will tell you important secrets. You have never heard these things before. Meaning, no one has ever mentioned this. You have never even imagined this. <laughs> I'm about to shock you. I'm about to tell you things that will blow your mind. God is amazing. There are some things that can be hidden from us. No matter how we see, how we dream, how we hear. There are some things that we have never heard before. <laughs> <laughs> wow god is serious god is serious so now i want everybody to take one minute to pray to god to call to god god said we should call unto him and he will answer us and he will tell us things he will reveal things to us so you pray sincerely now everybody when i say pray you pray okay Say, Father, I'm calling on to you according to Jeremiah 33, verse 3. You say we should call you, we should ask, and you will show us things, hidden things, secrets that we don't know. Please, Lord, show me things. Show me what is causing stagnation in my life. Show me who is causing all this. Show me who has caged me. What, just ask for what you want. Ask him what you want him to reveal to you. Show me why I haven't received my papers. Show me why my marriage is not working. Show me why things are hard for me. Show me why I am being rejected. Show me why I have this particular affliction. In fact, let's take three minutes. Everybody just pray. Begin to ask God. He said, call, ask. He will answer. He will show up. So take three minutes to pray and then I'll round up that prayer for you guys.
Just worship the Lord wherever you are. him to reveal to you because only you know what you're suffering from only you know why this fasting is so important to you only you know the area you need breakthrough only you know i gave you an opportunity to ask i read scriptures for you guys to back up this prayer point if you have prayed type i have prayed because my own is just to conclude your prayer for God to open your eyes, to give you access to that realm that has been blocked, that has been closed, that you cannot see. I just need to pray that prayer, but I need to make sure that you have asked God everything. Show me about this person. You know, I, I actually prayed for you guys already about this, I think two days ago. But because we are fasting, God is bringing it up again. Because now we have some other people that were not there. I have prayed. Are you ready to see? <laughs> wow, I'm laughing. I'm not even the one laughing. I don't even know why I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm not the one laughing. I just say, are you ready to see? And I started laughing. <laughs> this is not me. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready to see are you ready to get the answer of what you prayed about yes no yes no are you ready to see because show me is open my eyes to see <laughs> I remember the last time we did Daniel 2.22. A lot of you men were disappointed. People were messaging me crying. They couldn't believe. <laughs> Nobody said, I am ready to see. <laughs> Somebody, I'm just hearing now that your former boss, where you worked, did something to you. This is not even family. This is a boss. Somewhere you worked at before. Did something to you. Like you didn't even have this person in mind. Your former boss. I just heard it now. Somebody that you worked before in their company or in their business. They did something to you. Because you know, this fasting is mostly about deliverance. And us knowing where our problem is coming from. And I just heard... That your former boss so this is not even a family it's not a friend it's an employer somebody that employed you before you see what i'm saying now these are things that if god doesn't reveal 
we can't know we may never even suspect that person we may never even think of that person but that's the one that has caged us or that has made things hard for the other that, that put that sickness in our body <laughs> Look at my work at Mavis. Mavis said, I am ready to see. I have been praying to see. And I know it's time for me to see. Mavis, are you rapping? Because <laughs> it sounds like a rap. He said, I am ready to see. I've been praying to see. And I know it's time for me to see. Remember the woman of God, Shanika Byer? She said that it's not if, it's when it happens. Some of you will be shocked. Some of you will be disappointed. She said, it's not if, because God says it will happen. Man, I love that part when she said it. It's like, this is something that is going to happen because there's time for everything. Evil people, they have their time. And when their time expires, they cannot hide anymore. So now I want to pray for you guys. My prayers are powerful. Hmm. Oh, wow. I don't know why. It's like I feel, I feel like a heavy heart trying to pray this prayer. Because I remember what happened when we did Daniel 2.22. A bunch of you messaged me crying because you didn't like what you saw. And a bunch of you, your life changed since then. Some of you have separated yourself. Some of them have even moved. Some of you are moving. It's So now it's like we're going back there again. Because a lot of you have suffered. And you are pointing your finger at the wrong place. Meanwhile, the person or the people or the thing involved is right. Some way you're not even looking. Someone that is... It's not even in the picture of suspects. And God wants to deliver you. Wow. I need one minute before I pray this prayer. My heart just became so heavy all of a sudden. Just give me a second. Just worship the Lord wherever you are. God is here. 
hand on your forehead you have already prayed my prayer is just the conclusion prayer for what you pray hallelujah close your eyes put your right hand on your forehead even children anyone connected to this line right now and, and father is telling me that it's not just dreams and visions it will also be your thoughts suddenly somebody will be coming to your thoughts and it's just he's going to reveal in many ways father thank you for today thank you for this fasting thank you for the word father you say this is a season of exposure for everyone connected that is listening to my voice Father, I command their eyes to open now in the name of Jesus. Begin to reveal things to them. Deep and secret, hidden things. You say we should call upon you. We should ask. And you will answer us. And you will show us things that we don't know that no one could ever tell us. So I am praying for your children, for you to begin to reveal the cause of their problems. The reason why they are struggling, why they are suffering, why nothing is working for them. The reason for all the miscarriages, the reason for the accident, the reason for the attacks. Reveal to them. It doesn't matter who it is. Reveal to them in the name of Jesus. And also give them guidance and strength to be able to handle whatever you show them. Give them the wisdom on how to go about it. In the name of Jesus, all of you with your hands on your forehead. I command your eyes to open now in the name of Jesus and no one will block this. You will see what God wants you to see. And even as you see it, you will get your deliverance from this thing, this person, whoever it is, whether I'm a relative, a friend, a prophet, whoever it is, may God open your eyes and show it to you. 
and may God deliver you also in the name of Jesus. And may these people confess, repent, or die. In the name of Jesus, you are free. I build a shield of protection around you and your children so that even as God shows or reveals, you will be protected. You will not be harmed in Jesus' name. Begin to see now in Jesus' name. Amen. God said it's not just see. You will also hear. You will also hear. And some of you, is somebody that will call you and tell you about something. This is something that the person probably knew all along, but suddenly now they will come and tell you. And you're like, how come you didn't tell me all this? Well, I don't know. I just don't know. But something just is pushing me today to tell you. You understand? And some of them will actually confess to you. Some of them will actually confess to you. I remember one of my workers told me that a lady that they were friends with recently, you know, they've been praying to God, asking him some questions, and God let him let them to invite her to the to the apartment. And this lady came and was just confessing many things. Like they don't know what came over her. She was just talking. And she was saying that everything that they have is what she's she's wanted. And that if she even hears that they are expecting a child, she will hate them even more. Like they said they were shocked. She was just sitting there talking these things. It's like something took over her. And she was just saying what she had been feeling about them. So there are some of you, your own revelation will come in very different ways. It could be information. I said this thing like two days ago, I think. It could be information that will be given to you. It could be something you will find out that has been in that house, but you didn't see it all along. And suddenly you're going to see it. It could be a phone call. It could be a dream. It could be a vision. It could just be caught in the act. I don't caught in the act, you know, like let's say your best friend is sleeping with your husband, you will not dream it. Maybe one day you will just catch two of them together kissing or something. I don't know. But it's going to be revealed. There's time for everything. 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 everything. And this is the time for exposure. And some of you, this season, this time of exposure is the breakthrough that you've been praying for. Because now you will know. And now you will know what to do. How do you guys feel? I've never really wanted to pray for people. And suddenly I felt like crying. This is not even for me. This is for you guys. Because I'm just working. It's like my spirit started to grieve. Because a lot of people are probably going to be disappointed. Even the woman of God. Prophet Shanika Baya said that some people will be shocked. Wow. Wow. And you have to clear your mind so that you're not manipulating yourself by thinking it's somebody that is not. Clear your mind and just have a clear mind. So this will this will expose. Everyone, best friend, children, husband, wife, pastor, co-worker, anyone, ex-worker. I just talked about an ex-boss and two people commented that they just recently saw their ex-boss that they haven't seen in years. They saw them twice in their dream or three yesterday or two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said she just had a loud bop. Say, wow, I just had a loud bop. And somebody's yawning. Wow. It is well. Sometimes you will need to know certain things for you to get to the next level. I remember when God revealed the false prophet to us, April of last year, 2020. I couldn't have entered my new dimension until I had seen that part of him. Until God had shown how evil. Yeah. That was my breakthrough for me to go into my new dimension. For me to be elevated. Does that make sense? For me to go to the next stage of my life. For me to get breakthrough in ministry. Breakthrough in. Yeah. So God had to reveal who that man was. To 
to all of us. And even though it was so disappointing, some of us were hurt, some of us, you know, cried, some of us disappointed. But look where we are now. So there are some people that this will take them to the next dimension. Because this person will need to be exposed. This group of people will need to be exposed. So you can walk into the next phase of your life. How does and how does how does everyone feel? Come on now. Look like some of you are just like. And I think some of you probably have an idea of somebody. But I don't know. I think that what God is about to show people will be mind blowing. So if it's mind blowing, it means there was no you were not suspecting before. But if it's if it's somebody you already suspect, then I don't see why it's mind blowing because you already know, right? But what we are showing here, or what we're talking about today, is things you don't know. Wow. 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 God, wow. She said immediately I placed my hand on my forehead. I started spinning around and she became so weak and she fell down. Wow. This is amazing. Say my left ear is heavy. Wow. So many things happened though. I had to pause before I prayed that prayer. Because I just started feeling like I needed to cry for people. I don't know. Wow. Somebody else said their left ear was on fire. Wow. Wow. Two people have said their left ear was on fire. This is amazing. Somebody said, I cried. I don't know why. It must be mind blowing. Somebody said, I feel so sad suddenly. Somebody said, I'm happy, but I'm somewhat worried. Well. Now you guys can see how Jesus Christ was feeling. He knew that Judas was the devil, but he still had to have Judas working for him. His heart was heavy at times, and the disciples did not understand. He knew this thing that you guys are about to find out. He knew all along. Man, Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. What you're about to find out, Jesus knew about it. Even before he took, in fact, God even gave me a message, which I'm going to preach maybe later, of how everyone has a role to play. I have preached something like that before, but this time he gave me extra things, both the good and the bad people. They all have roles to play in your life. Wow, somebody said they feel something leaving their head. Wow. Wow, people, people are actually crying. I guess that one is really close to you then. But I have to play that woman of God so you guys can see that it's a confirmation. I want to give you guys a scripture. It's one of the scriptures that I posted when I made that post earlier today, right? Proverbs 16, verse 4. The Passion Translation. Somebody post it for me, please. The TPT Translation. A lot of people say they were crying. Wow. This is amazing. God is up to something. This fasting is so important. No wonder people are dreaming about it. God telling them to make sure they fast. Because God is about to give them major breakthroughs. Wow. I want Pro Proverbs 16 verse 4. The Passion Translation. It says, The Lord works everything together to accomplish his purpose. Everything. It says, Even the wicked are included in his plans. Hmm. The first day I discovered this scripture, 
I was, I, 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 I had to take time to really, you know, digest this scripture because this scripture right here is very powerful. He said, the Lord works everything t- together to accomplish his purpose. He said, even the wicked are included in his plans. Even the ones that God is about to reveal to you or the one that you already know that hurt you in the past. He said, they are included in God's plans. He sets them aside for the day of disaster. So guess what? That person that put some voodoo on you, that person that has been plotting against you, that person that is behind your affliction, they are included in God's plans for your life. Wow. Judas Iscariot was included in the plan of God for Jesus Christ's ministry and his life. Hey! So it was not a mistake. So it's not a mistake that you got afflicted. It's not a mistake that that your friend was so wicked and she she came into your life. It's all part of God's plan. So this should calm you down. And the way I even wrote it, let me read how I wrote it. I want to read how I wrote it because I was strong. I, I, I need to preach it by itself, but let me just read what I had written. Because the way it came strong, eh? I said I had to post it. And I say, you know what? This one, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna screenshot it. So you can have it. It's gonna prepare you to understand that whatever happens, whatever God shows you, it's all part of God's plan. It's all included in God's plan for your life. You understand? You will not blame yourself wondering why you trusted this person so much. You will not blame yourself wondering why you became friends. At some point, that friendship was helpful. At some point, you know, there was great benefit. You understand? So you will not go around blaming yourself, regretting, thinking that maybe you did not have good discernment because it was all part of God's plan. Maybe God hid it from you. It was not even your fault. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? Because it's easy for us to blame ourselves and say, oh, I wish I had known. I wouldn't have done this. I would. Sweetie, God allowed the connection. Let me tell you some of the people that you are going to see. It was God that even showed you in a dream. Yeah, God showed you in a dream to become close to that person, to be connected to that person. God showed you in a dream to hire that worker. God showed you in the dream, yeah, to watch that person. Yeah. So you didn't make a mistake. Just like Jesus Christ prayed the whole night before he picked his disciples. God told him who and who to pick. So he didn't make a mistake. It was part of God's plan. God wanted it so. So don't go and blame yourself thinking you messed up, thinking you were deceived, thinking you were manipulated. No, God allowed the manipulation. All right. So this is what I wrote on all my social media platforms before I posted some of these scriptures. I said, everyone has an important role to play. Everyone has an important role to play. Not just a role, an important role to play. Whether good or bad, it's all going to be blended into God's plan. So whether the the person did good in your life or they did bad in your life, it's all going to be blended into God's plan. I say Judas Iscariot was a thief. He always used to steal from the money bag. 
and a betrayer because he betrayed Jesus. But he played a very important role in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. A thief. Yet it was him that Jesus gave the position to be holding the money back, to be the treasurer, to, to have money to pay for things. That must be a difficult role because Jesus preached every day, everywhere. So they must have a lot of money and counting money, handling money. That's a big responsibility. But it was this same, uh, this same bad guy that had that big position, like accountant or something, right? And then he was a betrayer, but he played a very important role in the life of Jesus and in ministry. Somebody needed to betray, like somebody needed to betray, somebody needed to betray Jesus, like he needed to be betrayed. Do you understand? Because this is how he was supposed to go down, like die to be crucified. Somebody had to betray him. So somebody had to do it. Of the 12, one of them had to do it. Unfortunately, it was Judas. Somebody had to be that witch in your family. Unfortunately, it was your mom or your dad, or your aunt, or your child. He said he played an important role in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. Sometimes the bad ones play the most important roles in our lives. Sometimes, pay attention to that part, sometimes the bad ones the bad ones, they play the most important roles in our lives. How? So the bad ones sometimes play the most important roles in our life. Like me, look at the false prophet that we're saying is so bad. His role seemed to be very important in my life because now I have a lot of experience i got a book out of the experience like like i have an assignment like that was important <laughs> that gave me a different like a different level in life in ministry and everything and the guy is not a good guy but the impact he made the negative impact man it's a big shift in my life, in my ministry, everything. But some of the good ones in my life, I don't really remember them anymore. They just faded out. But this guy cannot be forgotten because of what I went through. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes the bad ones play a very important role. They play the most important roles in our life, the most the bad ones let me let me give you guys an example jesus had 12 disciples actually he had more but the ones he selected to be close to him 12 of all the 12 how many of their names do you know <laughs> you that is watching me if somebody were to ask you name the 12 disciples of jesus the first one, maybe Peter, Judah. You would definitely remember Judas. It's Carol. But there are other disciples that were good. They didn't cause any problems to him. You don't have the, you don't know their names. <laughs> In fact, all of you, without cheating, mention as many disciples of Jesus that you can remember. You will see that Judas is Carol's name must be on that list. But there are some out of the 12 that if they even say that one is one of them, they say for real? Who is that one? I didn't know that one. <laughs> but they were good. But you don't remember them. 
But this Judas guy, there is no way you can forget Judas. You can you may forget Peter and John, but you can't forget Judas. That man is more famous than all of them. <laughs> okay, let's put up without cheating, guys. Let's see how many you can get. Okay, somebody was able to get five. Somebody got two, Peter and Judas. <laughs> Judas and Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god now you will know that some people don't know anyone mm -hmm. look at that uh-huh the highest i've seen here is five oh okay somebody got a little farther she was able to mention eight right but judah's name is still in that eight <laughs> oh my god Everybody, even newborn baby, know Judas. <laughs> Judas is like a celebrity. How can you not know Judas? <laughs> so that that bringing my point across. Sometimes those bad ones they play the most important roles in our lives, and who created those bad ones? God, the devil did not create that. It was God. Sometimes that bad one that you are about to see in your dream, your vision, they're actually your destiny helpers in disguise. Yeah, you get disappointed and everything, but they are the reason why maybe you get pushed to the next level. They're probably the reason why you, you change or something. I don't know, but in a weird way, they were destiny helpers. Hmm. In a weird, twisted way, they were destiny helpers. They gave you a story. The affliction gave you a story. That's your witch that kept afflicting you. It's because of all the affliction you wrote a book. They made you discover who you are. They made you run to Christ. Some this wicked people. In fact, God told me something that I wrote. Oh, Father, where did I write that? Please, oh Lord. I wrote it somewhere. I wrote it somewhere. I wrote this, I heard, if there is no problem, there will be no solution. Somebody write this down. If there is no problem, there will be no solution. If the devil did not even mess with some of you, you will not run to God for help. If there is no problem, there will be no solution. So you see the devil, you see the enemies, you see those people, those witches, all of them. <laughs> they are there as problem so there can be solution. So we can remember God. So we can come to God. So the, the, the giant in us can come up. The prayer warrior in us can come up. Actually, if, the, if you did not need breakthrough, you will not join this fast. If you do not need breakthrough, this fast will probably be one of those fasting that you're going to escape. You will not need it. It's true. You heard breakthrough in every area of your life. And you were happy because you got problem in a lot of areas in your life. So you need a breakthrough. You need deliverance. You need solution. You have a lot of Judas in every area of your life. So you need Jesus to help you. So you see why God allows all this wickedness. Because it really draws people to him. To run to him for solution. To spend time with him. To fast. To pray. To, 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 to be who God wants them to be because of a problem. Because of a witch. Because of a false prophet. Because of a Judas. So God told me that if there's no problem, 
there will be no solution. If you did not need breakthrough, you will not want to do this fast. But you need breakthrough because you need a solution. You need deliverance. So these evil people, they have a role to play in our lives. They actually help us run closer to God. They make us pray more. They make us fast more. A lot of believers will not even pray if they did not have any problem. If there was no evil person hot tormenting them or caging them, they will not. They will pray to God like one minute a day. In fact, maybe once a week. They will even watch me. Some people watch me steadily because the attacks are too many. <laughs> Some people watch me every day because the attacks are just too many in their lives. So they cannot afford not to watch the videos. Some people just watch because they love God. But many people, they watch because the videos have been helping them get free. There's no problem. There will be no solution. That's what God told me. I had to write it down. I heard it clearly. Is a problem or two that made you want to do this fast with all your heart because you need solution in that area. So now it brings me to this part where I say sometimes the bad ones play the most important roles in our lives, which eventually takes us into our new dimension. Those ones that God is about to reveal. In fact, when God reveals we need to be happy that they did all this to us because it brought us closer to God. It made us stronger, it made us wiser. You understand? Maybe we would have still been in the club, but all the afflictions made us seek God. And now we love God so much. So why they thought they were trying to destroy us, they were actually pushing us closer to our destiny. Do you see? So when we have that mindset, it will be easy for us to forgive and see that it was part of the plan that God had for us. Hallelujah. It said, trust God and allow him to work everything and everyone into his plan. This is what I wrote. Some of you read it already on my post. Trust God and allow him to work everything and everyone into his plan. Everything and everyone both the bad and the good, right? Do not bear grudges, hatred, or live in fear of anyone. Do not bear grudges, hatred, or live in fear. Yesterday, which I'm going to show that clip again later. Yesterday, you guys saw how we brought up a case that could have gone really bad, that sounded like a hate message or preaching. But you see how reconciliation made it laughable. All the ladies were fine. At some point, you were even crying when one of them was crying. And then I even blessed them all with money. And before you know, we started to feel love. That was a problem that needed to happen. And because that problem happened, you see how God blended it into his plan. And some of you got to know about God's watchmen or Philomena, or Dr. Hedrin. Some of you did not even know that these people were there before. Some of you even be began to learn more about groups. Some of you, in fact, it seemed like a problem, but it was a needed problem. The way it turned around, everyone learned something from it. And some of you decided to forgive them too. And some of you actually saw yourself in that because some of you, God made me go back to read the comments from that thing. Some of you, your comments were so bad. It's like worse than the Philomena's preaching. Some of you now realize that you too, you are mafia, even in your comments. But if that was not a problem, that will not make it to my pro like my video for us to solve it. But it was necessary. So God allowed the problem. 
because God was going to bring something good out of it and he will get all the glory and he will teach us from it like we will learn so there are some things that happen in your life that seem bad that everybody is pointing finger but God allowed it because that's where you will get your announcement from that's where people will will get to hear of you that's even persecution it's like free publicity so all those who make video of you persecuting you in fact if anything sow a seed into their life because now they've made you popular without you paying facebook to promote your video your video is just all over the place for free yeah some people will curse you and that but there are some that the god who called you will touch their hearts to watch you and check you out for themselves before they make conclusion. You know how much it costs you to promote your videos. But now because of some of these evil people that plan to persecute you, your videos are everywhere for free. Now the same God will give you strength to be able to bear this while they are persecuting you, but he's drawing new people to you through this problem. And you are thinking these people are out there to destroy you. Yeah, that's what it looks like. But they're actually out there to promote you. <laughs> they are out there to, to present you to the world. And you know, people like persecution videos. So even groups that will not even want your video in their groups will allow the persecution video in their group so they can laugh or talk about it or mock. Thereby, people are getting to hear your name. I've gone through a lot of persecution, so I know what I'm saying. My videos have entered platform that normally if I share video there, they will not allow it. But because of persecution, it was free publicity. Every group wanted to show it. So why would I be so angry at the people that started it? I should be thanking them for helping my ministry. So we, God wants us to see, to see His hand in even, even the bad, evil people. To see His hand in there, see that He's going to turn it, like He's going to blend it into His plan for us and bring something good out of it for us. So even now that God wants to reveal things or people to us. It's not something that we should cry and kill ourselves. We should see that something good came out or will come out from it. And then it will be easy. Like it will be easy for us to bear whatever God shows us. All this, I'm just trying to, to teach you right. So you can see that God allowed it for a reason. God connected you for a reason. It was not your fault. You were not you were not stupid. Yeah, even your stupidity that you think is a stupidity or whatever, God blends it into his plan for your life. Because some people will say, hey, why did you not know? Why did you do that? Why did you connect to him? Why? They're pointing fingers at you, but God is saying, relax. I allowed it. It's all part of my plan. Because people would have pointed finger at Jesus. How come you are so anointed, you can see many things, but you do not see that your own disciple that holds money for you is going to betray you? Even those Pharisees, all those people, they will be mocking him saying, if he says he's anointed, how, how come he doesn't know that this is disciple is meeting with us to come and sell him out? That's what they will be saying. I thought this Jesus is so anointed, I thought he can see. But Judas is coming to us, having meetings with us on how to betray him. And he didn't see that. What kind of man of God is he? But he saw that. He knew that. But it was part of God's plan. You don't know. They'll be accusing him. I thought you said you are anointed, you're powerful. How come you didn't know this guy was planning this all along? He knew. But it was part of God's plan. But we, sometimes God may tell you to hire somebody and God will show you some things about that person. Tomorrow you go and fire the person. What if God said, don't fire her yet? Fire her in two years. 
but I have something she needs to do. And you'll be wondering, what can she possibly do? She, you just showed me how evil she is. And God will say, yeah, I know she's evil, but she has a very important role to play in your ministry, in your life. Only Jesus can handle that stuff. We can't. Because the way we look at the person will change. <laughs> Everything will change. The way we will even reduce their salary <laughs> or we won't pay them. <laughs> but it's all part of the plan. So that your witch auntie that has been afflicting you, that is causing the reason for you to need breakthrough, God blended it into his plan. God protected you all along while you were living with that witchcraft auntie. That witchcraft uncle. You've eaten their food every day. They couldn't initiate you to their witchcraft. They couldn't kill you. So when God reveals to you, why are you blaming yourself? Were you the one protecting yourself all along? Were you the one keeping yourself safe? Were you the one removing the poison from your system that they gave you to eat every day? Do you understand what I'm saying? They've done many things to you, but nothing happened to you. All the conspiracy of those wicked people, nothing affected you, nothing killed you. So the day God reveals doesn't mean you are stupid. No, God hid it from you, but he protected you through it all. So consider that when God reveals. Do you understand what I mean? There's just a time for revelation, time for exposure. But it doesn't mean you have been foolish or you are stupid or you are blind or it's your fault. No. We can't say God is your fault. No. But it's part of his plan, right? It's a trust God and allow him to work everything and everyone into his plan. Do not bear grudges, hatred, or live in fear of, any, of, for, of anyone. Do not bear grudges. Yeah. There are some people that God will reveal to you their heart. Maybe they will repent later and they will come. And maybe you will become friends with them again. Maybe they will marry you. We don't know. We don't know what any friendship or relationship will lead to in future. But God doesn't want us to bear grudges. He doesn't want us to have hatred. And he doesn't want us to live in fear. Just because God revealed that somebody is a witch and now you are seeing them, you're running. They've been a witch all along and you were living with them. You were talking to them. You were in the same house with them. So now that he revealed it to you, you don't need to live in fear. You don't need to be running from them. No, since 10 years, 20 years, they've been that witch. But you were hugging them, talking to them. So now that he revealed to you, do not be afraid of them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in them. Because some people, the moment God revealed, hey, that witch, oh, hey, sweetie, they were a witch last week. They were a witch two months ago when you hugged them on their birthday. They're still a witch now. So because God revealed does not mean that they are more powerful now. They've always been witch and wicked. You understand? I'm just telling you now because some of you, the moment you get this revelation, you see the person, you don't run. Now, nah. the same way he was protecting you that time, he will protect you again. In fact, now you should be more powerful than before when you did not know. They should see you and run now. Do you understand? Hallelujah. It says, um, do not live in fear of anyone. Forgive them. Forgive them. For us to be forgiven by God, we have to forgive. I always preach forgiveness. I'm a woman of God. If you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. That's how God works. If you say you won't forgive, you too will not be forgiven. So you pick one. Do you want God to forgive you? Yes, then I have to forgive. Now, forgiving doesn't mean I need to be your best friend. No. Forgiving means I don't carry anything in my heart. I don't have any ill feeling towards you. You understand? 
and forgiveness is for you so you can be free right i know you say you are forgiving them but it's really for you not them and just because you forgive doesn't mean they're not going to be punished by god they are still going to reap what they sow so your forgiveness does not change anything they're still going to go through whatever god wants them to go through do you understand say forgive them even when god reveals your enemies to you just stay calm and allow him to lead you on what to do he will always fight for you as long as your heart is pure if you don't stay calm you might kill somebody and land in jail because depending on what god shows you it might be so bad and if you're someone with a temper problem you might get up and if you have a gun you might shoot them or you might hit them with something hard and they may just die so you need to have self-control you need to stay calm because god is going to um God is really going to show you a lot. God is really going to show you a lot. But you, you're going to need to stay calm. And allow God to, to direct you. So you don't make any mistakes. So you don't mess up anything. He says stay calm and allow him to lead you on what to do. He will always fight for you as long as your heart is pure. Your heart being pure means you must not be wicked too. Meaning you yourself, you're not plotting evil for others. You, all you think of is good about this person or about people. Because we cannot be saying we want God to reveal things to us about people and we ourselves were witches. We, was, we ourselves were wicked. <laughs> what makes us different from that? So make sure your heart is pure so God can declare you innocent, vindicate you, fight for you, right? And then stop blaming yourself for being connected to that person who caused you so much pain or for being born into a wicked family or town. Sweetie, um, you didn't put yourself in that family. You did not create yourself. You didn't decide that you wanted to be from Nigeria or from Kenya or from Liberia. Like, man, you were innocent. You just found yourself in a woman's belly. <laughs> Some people will be like, man, I wish I was from America. Man, I wish I was from Canada. Man, I don't know why I came from Nigeria. I wish I was from... What? You mean the God who created you? And made you come out from that country made a mistake? No. There's a plan. There's a plan. Maybe you are the one. You are going to be the Moses of that generation. Yeah, maybe it's you. Maybe you are going to be the David that will kill the Goliath in that town that has trapped everybody. No. All of you, tell the truth. Is there sometimes you wish you were from a different family or different background or different country maybe your family is full of witches or maybe i don't know have you ever wished that you were not from the family that you currently are from like this is not even something you should be worried about because you didn't you didn't do that to yourself you just found yourself where you found yourself now if you were adopted that's different but you were not adopted ah somebody said she used to do, say that many times somebody said this message is for her yeah somebody said me a different family yeah you know people start to wish that when the suffering is just too much the suffering is part of God's plan for your life. I don't know how many times I have to preach this message. It's hard to accept, but it's the truth. Yeah. But God doesn't want you to wish that because then you would think God made a mistake and God never makes mistakes. God brought you from the right family. That's the right family. Yeah, that wicked family, that's the right family for you. Because there's something in you that will come out soon. 
Yeah. That will help the whole family, the whole town. That's why a lot of you were, were brought to school of power. So by the time God is done with you and he puts power in you, you're going back to that family that you wish you were not a part of. And you're going to be the light of that family. That's right. So it's not a mistake that you came from that country, from that broke family that people are making fun of, the poorest family. Hey, Jesus Christ did not come out from a rich family. <laughs> it was a poor family. In fact, when they even gave birth to Jesus, there was no room. Like, he didn't even have a good hotel, uh, a good hospital or anything. Like, a whole Jesus came from probably the poorest, the poorest family that couldn't even afford a nice place to give birth to a baby. Think about it. The way Jesus was was delivered when he when his mother gave birth to him, um, it didn't seem like this guy would be great or anything. <laughs> it didn't seem like this guy would be anything. Yeah. They didn't have the best hospital, the best nurses or anything. No. Just think about that. That's how God works. Great people, great things come in disguise. But heaven is celebrating. But the world don't see it. <laughs> yeah. So you, you are supposed to be great or you are great, but you came in disguise from a very poor family, from a wicked family, from the smallest village, the smallest community. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes you guys even have food to eat for some days. Yeah. But there's greatness in that house and nobody knows. That's the life of Jesus. Nobody suspected that this, this boy... This one, something great will come out of him. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Like, not, no, this one, no, nah, not. Nah. When their mind was not even there, they were thinking the Messiah will come from maybe a palace or something. That's how God works. They will look down on you and the family you came from. <laughs> but God will shock all of them. That's how God works. So that family you came out from is the perfect family for God's plan in your life. It's a disguise. Yeah. Look at me. Where I came from. A, a small town called Bakana. Some people are from some people live in Portacot, but they still don't even know where Bakana is. <laughs> My parents. We're not rich. In fact, our families are just poor. That's right. God did it that my father came to America. He had no one. God brought him here miraculously. Yeah. God took all the credit for everything. Nobody can take credit for anything. Look at me now. God is using me to bless people. Thousand dollars. This is that. But where me I came from. Even our house in the village. My mother's family. The house. My father's family. The house was like. Mud house. Where I stayed with my grandmother. When I went to high school. Um, in the village. It was mud house. Mud. Mud. Yeah. It was mud house. It was just recently my father went to build. And it was me that even helped him. Would you believe that this woman of God was staying in a mud house with her grandmother going to school back home in the village? I'm, it's not brick. It was mud. I don't know. If, somebody send me a picture of a mud house. Please, please, please. 
It was a mud house. <laughs> Who's gonna know that she's gonna be so great and she'll be helping people, giving them, even paying rent, buying car for them. The one that her father's house in the village is a mud house. You can't suspect that. Mod. The kind you see in Nigerian movies. Mm. <laughs> this message is for somebody. You see some rich people, maybe like rich Donald Trump kind of people, and you are like, um... Maybe I should have been from this family because uh -huh, somebody found something like this for me. Good, good job, guys. That's some real mud house right there. Although our own was not this bad, but mud is mud, man. All right, ladies, thank you. I got it. Jesus, some of these mud houses now, wow. Uh huh. Uh huh. Thanks, ladies. Love you all. That was the mud house right there. And now this woman of God is here. Blessing people, anyhow. 2,000, 1,000, 10,000. Hey? What? Are you kidding me? How come? Belema? From where? The Belema that we know? No. That cannot be. Yeah. Mod house. Mod. It was recently my father went to build and had brick. But where I stayed with my grandmother, telling you guys that I went to school back home in the village, it was a mud house, guys. I don't know if I have a picture where I, I took in that place. I'm going to show you guys. It's to encourage somebody now. Somebody that thought God made a mistake about their life, where they are from. That's a mud house. This one even looks nice. So, You guys, if you watch African movies, you've seen these houses before. This is a mud house. This one is typical. This is this looks more like it. <laughs> yeah, that looks more like where I, I, I grew up. That's right. Although our windows were not like that. But that's pretty much where I stayed to go to high school. That's where I stayed to go to high school, guys. Your woman of God. Uh-huh. All these are even better ones. These are good mud houses. You see it? And now I'm in America. I have new car. Big ministry. Helping people. I lived in that house for three years, going to class SSM, Junior JSS 1 to 3, class 1, 2, 3. And we didn't have electricity in that house. I never saw electricity in our house while I was in that village for three years. We use lantern. Somebody send me a picture of lantern. Or sometimes I go and buy candle. I have suffered though. Yeah. But look at me now. This is going to encourage somebody that thinks their life is the worst. It's not where they brought us from. It's where God is taking us to that matters. It's not where you are now. It's where God is taking you. Yeah. Mud house. I used to study using lantern. Lantern. Yeah. Oh, I wish my father had a picture of the house before he built this one. I used to have a lantern. When they are sleeping, I will turn on the lantern, the lamp, and I will be reading. 
Yeah, that's what I use. Uh -huh. Thank you. Nobody sent lamp again. I already got one. Thank you, ladies. I already got one. This is perfect. This video will soon end anyway. God is up to something. This is the lamp we had in our house. Sometimes we'll have to go and find kerosene. That's how I studied while I was in high school in the village. That's what we use in the mud house. And guess where I used to sleep? Do you want to hear? And you know, I'm not lying. Ask my mom and dad. I slept on the floor on a mat with my cousins. I would sleep on the mat. Mat is like sleeping on the floor. <laughs> Our grandmother slept on the bed. It was one small skinny bed for only her. We slept on the floor. Mat. Somebody show me a picture of a mat. <laughs> Someone has been through it all. Yeah. My mommy is watching. I insisted that I want to go to school in the village. I use a mat to sleep. Sometimes rats will be biting our feet and our fingers. We had some demonic witchcraft rat. I don't know where these rats were coming from. Yeah. Witchcraft rats were biting us. We used to wear socks and gloves to sleep. <laughs> I know you were laughing. I told you guys did, but we they wear socks and hand gloves. <laughs> You know how they dress up people in the in the coffin that are dead. I will wear socks and hang gloves because rats will be biting us there on the floor while we are sleeping. Some of you, have anyone had that experience where rats bite them? Uh -huh, thank you. I got a picture of a mat. God bless you, my darling. This message is for you. Thinking that sleeping mat is what I'm talking about. Thinking that God made a mistake. This is exactly the sleeping mat we used to sleep on. Man, this is, this thing is bringing memories to me right now. For all the years that I stayed in the village going to school, I slept on the floor with this mat. And we'll be two or three that will sleep on that mat. So we didn't have a lot of space. Do you see? That thing is directly on the floor. And look at me now. I'm in America, comfortable. And nobody wants to remember where I'm coming from. When Jesus started doing the work of God, powerful, anointed, nobody remembered the way he suffered when he was growing up. All they know is they see a powerful man of God now. When God takes you to that place, <laughs> your beginning, or where you used to be, the family you're from, it won't matter. It is who you are now that will matter. Hey, somebody shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to end here for now. And I'm going to start a new video. Because this video is about to end at 8 hours. So when I come, I will complete the message. So you guys can have enough videos to watch for day one. All right, so see you in a few minutes. I won't be on YouTube, just Facebook. All right, bye bye.